Bonjour. Hello, good morning and welcome cricket lovers around the world, wherever you are. And welcome to day five here in France. We're at the beautiful Drua Cricket Ground. And day five, well, we're bringing you five matches. And here on day five, it means it's Friday, which also means it's Peacock Friday. So I'm excited for today, Peacock Friday. I'm also excited because we're going to see the 2023 European Cricket League champions on three occasions here today. Yes, Drua are coming to the party. I'm Rico Full. You're watching the European Cricket Series here in France and the action starts right here, right now. This European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. That's right, five more exciting matches on the European Cricket Network. And I certainly have been very excited by what we've seen out here so far in Drew. I think these facilities are absolutely outstanding. They're some of the best that you can get. And I'm loving this pitch as well. The pitch has played so well. I think we've seen over the last few days a bit of rain here. We've even seen a little bit of hailstones and we've seen some sunshine as well. And through all of those conditions, it's played perfectly well. There's something in this deck for everyone. One thing that I've noticed from it is that when we've seen the fast bowlers bang it in, the ball is coming through, it's not holding up. It's also taken some good spin as well. And I reckon today we're going to see a good battle between the bowlers and the batters. First up is going to be Paris Zalmi, who were unable to get any points on the board the first time we saw them. They're up against Babylons. Let's see what happens at the coin toss. Balbinians to call. Head. Heads is the call. And it's a head. Babylon's winning the toss and deciding that they will have a bat first. That has sort of worked in their favour a few times, but I think Babylon are another team like we've seen already in this series that maybe feature strongly with one or two batters and then really they don't have the depth when the other guys are coming in. We saw that from Babylon's. They have won one, they've lost one, and they also had one match abandoned. But the last time we saw them is when they got totally beaten by the Greeny Vipers. So they're looking to come back strong. It's going to be difficult here for them in this first match. There's no uh, Jackson in the side. Jackson, who was the keeper and a very good batter as well, was the man that scored the 60 runs to beat the Super Kings last time. But apart from him, nobody else really scored any runs. So it's going to be interesting to see who can stand up. Maybe it's going to be Vitu, their captain, that's going to be standing firm this time around. Now their opponents, Paris Zalmi, the issues that they've had is they've just been chasing too many runs. They have got no points on the board as well. In fact, when they've played their matches on both occasions, teams that they've played, so the Paris University Club and also the President Eleven, have scored 170 runs against them. So you can see why they haven't been able to get any runs. That's quite surprising really because they do have the likes of Numan Amjad in their side, of course the national team captain, and Fahan Ahmed has been pretty good for them as well. But they've got to start to click with the ball. They're conceding too many runs. So this this is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how Zalmi perform in the field here. Babylons, if they get plenty of runs on the board, they'll feel that they're in control of this match. So I believe that we're going to get an exciting start, but I think with the availability the way it is, I think these two teams are even Stevens. We could get a close match first up this morning. Join me back in the commentary position and I'll tell you a little bit more about, first of all, what happened yesterday and what to look forward to today. Bonjour everybody and welcome to Match Day 5 and happy Peacock Friday. Uh, Zami taking on Babylon's first up. But first, let's take a look back at what we saw yesterday. Paris University Club had a very good day. They got two victories first up in, in the two matches they played. Taking on the Villeneuve Super Kings. They put 120 on the board. Super Kings did really well to contain them. But they fell short with the batting again. A 23-run win for PUC with, uh, well, it was uh, Zaka Ali. 31 of 10, who was the player of the match in that one. They would be on the park again, this time against Royal 94. And it was Paris University Club that once again proved too strong. This time, it was Zafar Iqbal scored a fantastic 70 of 22. And despite the efforts of Samuel Aka Uthikuma, 
who took four wickets, took four catches and scored 29 and got, at least he did get the Royal 94 a point. They went down by 47 runs. It was a good morning for Paris University Club. Played 2-1-2 two, two, and you'll see them right at the top of the standings. It was then time to welcome President Eleven that took on once again the Super Kings who were playing the second of their three matches. But once again, Super Kings, their batting really let them down. And the President Eleven, 135 for five. And once again, it was Kanasane who was good with the bat 50 of 21. But it was uh, Hamidullah Milkada who took four for 15, who was the player of the match. He wasn't the only one who took for a four for. Zahir, Zahiri took four for 13. Just watch out for that name, because you're going to hear it again a little bit later. And uh, he was just absolutely sensational. Going on to match number 19, well, what a match that was. It was just quite incredible also, because remember, it was almost like Royal had the match in the bag. And then that last over where they needed 10, they only got one. And that's where the hat-trick was taken by Zahiri. Fantastic from him. Last up, we saw the Super Kings once again against Raw 94. Both teams playing the third match in the day. And the Super Kings had got the runs on the board. And you thought they were going to go on and win the match because they got 130 on the board. They thought, OK, we finally got past 100 mark. It was uh, Thiraku Moran who made 40 of 18. But unfortunately, well, Royal 94, after the way they lost match number 19, did find a way to boost themselves and come back and win this one, winning with eight balls to go. And the player of the match was Konstantin, who made a quick fire 24 in that player of the match performance. In that six-wicket victory, that meant that the standings had uh, the likes of Paris University Club sitting right at the top. And, uh, well, they'll be watching eagerly to see what happens here today, especially with the likes of Drew that have three matches. More on what's coming up later. First, let's take a look at the two teams that we're going to see in action here. No Jackson action. I think that's going to be a big miss, really, for Balbinians. So somebody has to, somebody else has got to try and get those runs from them. I wonder if uh, Dachishan or Minas Sathan is going to be the ones to do it. Paris Army, their issues have simply been they've been conceding too many runs, giving away too many runs with teams scoring more than 170 against them. That's why they haven't been able to register any points on the board. Ali Hassan, um, maybe he's going to be the key for them. But I really do believe that an all-round performance from their captain, Numan Amjad, is going to be the key. As I suspected, I think it's going to be a close one. 57% to 43 in favour of uh, Belbinians. But Paris Army, they'll be pretty keen to get off the mark and get some points on the board. Very good morning to our umpires. Umpire Vignesh, we saw him here yesterday, but we got two new umpires with us here today as well. So welcome to umpire Shushir, who is the man there at Square. And uh, umpire Amagum is the third umpire with the Tottenham referee, Charles Croucher, who we saw at the coin toss. Uh, the, I can tell you that the pitch has had a trim. Uh, the workforce, and it was a workforce, was out there in arms earlier this morning, cutting the grass and redoing the lines, and it looking immaculate. And also no real dew this morning. So it's pretty dry out there. So I'm expecting the ball to be lightning quick as it goes across the outfield. All right, here we go. The first ball of this Peacock Friday. And almost plays it back onto his stumps. That's uh, Tabalingam. He's facing up the first. And Jat Usan is the non striker. Good morning to everybody that's tuning in. Namaste. Salam alaikum. Sasli Gal. I bought one. Avanakum. To everybody that's wa watching via fan code. Lovely to have you with us. And also hello to everybody that's uh, on the YouTube chat. Well, that one is, uh, I think, we'll be given a wide, can we get a wide on a number of accounts over the head and also down the leg side. Certainly put some, a lot into this. I mean, this is where the bowler almost bashes it into his own toe. I don't think we'll see this. And <laughs> only when it comes down. The baby come down with a bit of snow on it as well. A lot of people are uh, enjoying the fact that it is Peacock Friday, held to Rob Thompson, Kroom, uh, Terry Richmond, and uh, to Sivagam as well, who's saying hello to everyone. 
Well, that's wild. It's a full toss on the leg side. This will go all the way. Ball. 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 Ginna sona. Ball. Sigi Gandhi. But ke shot maria. Shukka. Like yeah. Not a good ball. Uh, just uh, a few early issues here for Avsal Gujar. You know, after bowling that wide, he gets this one complete wrong, Gujar. Slower delivery, but again, doesn't pitch it. Uh, hard chase, the batters want to. And they'll get there quite comfortably in the end. Nice applause from the Balbinians. Hello to Dave Bennett as well. And Dave is saying the pitch is looking great. It is. It looked quite fantastic. And Jules joining in. Hello, Jules. It's down the leg side again. He's <laughs> putting a lot of effort here, here Gujar, but he's just not getting the ball to pitch. Is another one that's over pitched. Just watch this. Full toss around about knee high. And you don't have to hit those too hard. And uh, Tabalingham just helps this away on the leg side. Four more. So these have been the issues for. Parazami, they haven't been able to contain, they haven't been able to put the squeeze on and teams have scored big runs against them. Uh, better delivery, gets this one to pitch. Puts the effort in, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, let's just have a look. So we saw them on day two in Zalmi. Uh, first up there had a tough one against Paris University Club and PUC put 177 on the board and Parazami 93 for 9, so they lost that one by 84 runs, no points, so didn't get that uh, bonus point. And then it got even worse for them against President 11, who put 182 on the board against them. They got to 111, and they're losing by 71 runs, so once again, no points. So they're just conceding too many runs. The over comes to an end. Uh, 14 without loss, past 4,500 runs now. Uh, the maximum rate stays stays good. It's over nine. That is good. And the average runs at the moment around about 124. Let's have a look at uh, the winning, whether you bat first or bat second. Here we go. This is always interesting. So wins batting first, 11 to 8. I think another reason why Bulbinians have opted to bat first certainly is a... a Crucial toss to win, I think, first thing in the morning. Maybe not on a day like today where we haven't got that heavy dew, but most mornings we've had a really heavy dew or maybe a bit of a wet start. And I think batting first and that means that the opposition had to struggle with the wet ball on the wet outfield. Shot. That sounds beautiful. Oh, the sound that this made around this wooded ground. It was absolutely epic. What a shot that is. And uh, Thevelingham is looking the business. Rocks back. And with minimum effort, smashes that for six runs. That's a cracking shot. As uh, Suleiman Khan gets hit for a big six of his first ball. Back to the drawing board for Suleiman. And we are in France, and uh, I know that the French, they're, uh, they're keen on the, on the onions. They're pretty keen on garlic as well. It is National Garlic Day today. So, <laughs> garlic on Peacock Friday. There you go. And uh, did you know that the Egyptians worshipped garlic as a god and even used it as currency? That's not all. Garlic supposedly gave strength to Greek athletes and warriors and warded off the evil eye. And, of course, not to mention vampires. So, National Garlic Day. So, enjoy your garlic, everybody. And uh, just don't plan any dates, I suppose. Gets the pull shot in. That's beautifully controlled. And it's going to be the first runs on the board for Jatusan as well. Nice shot. Nice pull. 
And a nice bit of ground fielding there from some s spectators that are making their way to the ground. Yeah, well, it is, I suppose, technically Friday, the start of the weekend. I'm expecting it to be uh, a cracking weekend here. Plenty of people coming to the ground and watching. I know that uh, it's a very popular uh, location, this ground. They get many uh, social events held here. And I think this weekend will probably be uh, a bit of a, let's just say, festive environment around this ground. This one is going to tease that wide line. The umpire calls it. I think it's a fair call. Let's have a look at it. It is moving a lot. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call for me. Oh, Zulman Khan trying to keep that ball just. You can see what is the plan is inside that wide line. I'm surprised that uh, Numan Amjad himself hasn't bowled as yet. You'd expect him to be your opening bowler, the captain. Just gets played out on the offside. It's a similar ball that uh, the man who gets on strike now, the Lingham, smashed away for a big six earlier. What a nice evening yesterday you got back it was a beautiful sunset here yesterday it really was quite immaculate quite amazing and it just seemed to go on for ages and hits that well and he's very strong in this area Diva Lingham, and that's exactly what I was saying that ball the last one from Dutt Usan who just plays it away for a single it's not a single when it comes to this guy because he smashes it out on the off there's another cracking shot yeah, and a nice walk around the the city centre of Drew. And lots of the the architecture is quite fascinating actually. Um it's very beautiful. It's sort of it's got a sort of a Austrian stroke Scandinavian feel to some of the architecture. And of course, plenty of coffee shops and plenty of places selling the delicious pastries and croissants. And had a little little bite to eat as well. And, uh, of course, it went down well with a, a glass of French red wine. So it was a very pleasant evening. Over comes to an end. Now, this is what we were looking at. So you can see, Parazalmi, nada, nada. Balbinians, they've got six points. They were a bit unlucky, I think. They probably, I mean, they got six points. I reckon they they were looking to get four points in the match against uh, Royal 94 when they had Royal in big trouble, about 70 with 10 balls to go. But then the, the heavens opened, and uh, they probably would have gone on and won that match, oh, you would imagine. So they're looking to put things right, and that is a tremendous hit. It's right in the arc. He's in the hit me arc and he gets hit. Crunched, actually. Huge hit. So, Thavalingham is going well. Just haven't found a way there. I think Gujar comes back. I'm quite surprised. Uh, you've got other bowlers. Numan Amjad, for example. And maybe if the... If the pace is not working, you, you perhaps could have gone for a bit of spin. Maybe that's an option in the third. But that was absolutely crunching. Gujar, the problem he's had is, A, sometimes he's not getting it to pitch at all. And secondly, when he does pitch it, it uh, it's right in the slot like that. Among worse, got to be outside the off, really. Here he comes again. Better. That's where you got to be. That's the line. That's the area. A good delivery. Well dug out as well. Nice bit of cricket. Good ball. Well played. Boundary's not on. You take the single. You rotate the strike. <laughs> Few people talking about garlic in the chat. And uh, Dave Bennett saying he loves garlic. And he mentioned, mentioned something there, which is my favourite. This is down the leg side, and keeper can't deal with it. It uh, will be a wide, and the batters rotate the strike as well, so they're dangerous 
Kumalan goes back on strike. Yeah, I mean, Dave Bennett was saying loves garlic, and garlic and thyme, mushrooms and toast, lovely crunch. Yeah, I, I, I love uh, my garlic, my creamy garlic mushrooms, I've got to admit. So plenty of garlic and butter, put the mushrooms in, and just as they start to sort of soften up, put the cream in and uh, mustard. Of course, we're in France. France is well known for its mustard as well. A bit of, bit of mustard in there gives it that yellowy colour. And uh, then, depending how you like it, I mean, I put a little bit of chilli in as well because I like a bit of spice. And there's going to be four more. Talking of spice, is a bit of spice out there at the moment as the Balmainians are in cruise control. There's another ball is too short from Gujar, and this one. Goes to the boundary as well. He's bowling runs at the moment, Gujar, isn't he? Yeah, so he put a bit chilli. Only if I'm making it at home because I'm not sort of I like the chilli, but the girls don't too much. I normally put some cheese in that. And you know, just right and so when it's hot, just add the cheese, stir it in. And then of course, a nice baguette. And of course the baguettes in France are pretty good. Talking of baguettes, just have a look at the the European Cricket Network social media. There'll be something there that'll excite you, I'm sure, is this one. We go all the way over. Manos. Riva, riva, riva. Bitro Portugues with seis as Well, we're talking about baguettes. We're talking about garlic mushrooms. Well, that gets toasted over the boundary. And that's going to be six more. Yeah, I'm getting hungry now, talking of all of that. 50 has come up inside the power plate. And this one gets worked away. There is a field about there now. It was pretty full. We'll take the single. And the over this time from Gujar goes magical. 21 from it. Three overs complete. 53 without loss. And a lovely bit of a ground. And looking immaculate, as everybody's saying. It's had a fresh cut. It's a shame, really, because the daisies have disappeared. But there's plenty of daisies around the outskirts of the the outfield with the teams and the players are and plenty of conkers as well that must be pretty annoying. i suppose you've got to have a proper industrial uh lawnmower because otherwise the conkers are going to be busting busting the blades laser conkers i must admit took me back to me youthful days play you know it's funny thing you know some things you just totally are out of your mind you totally you never talk about uh, because, you know, it was such a long time ago. Let's see, see this one. So uh, Numan Amjad does come into the attack. He starts with the wide. Let's have a look at this. Let's see what the umpire's feeling is here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a very good call. So if it doesn't catch any of that line at all, it's a wide. If it catches any bit of it, not a wide. So good call from the umpire. better. This is why, well, I've got to admit, I'm a little bit surprised that Numan Amjad, the captain, also national team captain, is decided to come on so late. He's only already 50 on the board. Yeah, and so going back to what I was talking about, you know, yeah, you're always talking about things, whether it's with family, whether it's with friends, and uh, sometimes you're reminiscing, but there's always things that are never there, you never talk about, because you need something to prompt you, and I was at this ground, of course, get here, and I'm walking around the other day when Vinny was commentating with Ivitika. Hello, Ivitika. I hope you're well, by the way. You did a fantastic job. Four more runs here. Good good footwork. What I like about this shot is, though he comes down the wicket, he's not going down on leg side. A lot of batters like to play this shot and take themselves away from the ball. He doesn't. He comes down dead straight, gets to the pitch of it, and plays a delightful shot uh, through the offside. So, Jatusan is pretty instrumental in this partnership. That's worth 58 at the moment. Slower. Might work for him. In the air. Wiki keeper calls it. Has to take it. Drops it. Makes a hash of it. And that's uh, not a good look at all there for Kamon Patel. And some of the players around the ground are, are on the ground. They can't believe that that's not being taken. It's 
Fielder gets out of the way. Wicket keeper calls it, and in the end, he makes a blop. Yep, a survey says blop. Zero out of ten. Doesn't even get gloves to it. That's a big drop. And the next one always goes to the boundary after a drop. Not quite where he wanted to go, and not from the same batter. That's uh, Jatusan did take the single, but you got to take those if you're the keeper. It should have been a wicket. It should have been one to Numan Amjad. It should have been the wicket that could have got Zami together and say, right, come on, we've got the breakthrough. We can, we can go forward from here. And instead, they're just going to be left with some hurt. So, yes, as I was walking around the ground, I'm thinking, hang on a minute. And just then, flashbacks, boom, boom, conkers all over the ground. And just then, it's like all those memories of, you know, being a young boy, collecting conkers, you know, getting old shoelaces to make them nice and strong. And hearing some stories of putting them in the oven, soaking them in vinegar, etc., etc. And even the memories of... Uh, some of the some of the players missing the conquer and smashing you on the knuckles came back to life. But yeah, good old days conquers. I wonder if does it exist at all now? I mean, I know I'm talking from in the UK. I don't know if it was conquers was in other countries as well. I mean, for example, now that I know they have these conquer trees in in France. I mean, do they play conquers in France? I don't know. Oh, maybe I should ask some of the French players, certainly the younger ones. As that over comes to an end, it's not a bad one, Amjad. 11 from it, he knows he should have had a wicket. It's not to be, 64 without loss. I mean, I know I'm, I'm speaking to uh, people that sort of around about the same generation as me in the chat and around here that will remember them. Uh, Sam Williams, our project manager, is having a day off today. So enjoy your day off, Sam. Uh, he remembered the con conkers because he was the first to say to me, he said, do you soak them in vinegar? But do kids still do it or is it just gone? Is it, is it one of many, many things that kids used to do that now has disappeared? I think I mentioned when I was talking about conkers before as Hassan comes to ball and he gets elevated over long on for a big six as well. So Thamalingam is going well. He just what I like about Thamalingam is there's no real. He's not th trying to thrash at the ball, is he? It's just good timing, good timing, and he's clearing these boundaries with ease. So Raza Hassan comes into the into the attack, and he's the one who gets attacked straight away. Better delivery, and he's done that a lot as well. As uh, Thibbalingham, so he's hit the bad ball, he's respected the good, and uh, it's not the first time that he's got a good delivery that's kind of Yorker length, and he says, nah, I'll just push it and take the single. They're, they're going well, the run rate is really good. They probably feel that Parazami have struggled with the bat, haven't really been able to post any more than sort of 111 is the most that they put on with the bat. So get to a 130, 140 score, and he'll be looking good. That's a delightful shot. That's a beautiful shot. And you don't mind taking a single when you know you've got a partner at the other end that can play a shot like this. Beautiful shot. Oh, that is just classy. In good position. And look at the way he gets the, the wrist involved as well. What a partnership this is turning out to be. It's electrifying. It really is. Bobby Leons certainly are looking the business at the moment, these two. Zami need a breakthrough. Okay, this is a teaser, but it will once again beat the fielder. I think this might be four. We'll check it again on the replay. I think the umpires don't want to take the fielder's word for it. Let's see. And... Yeah, I think that bounces before the rope. It's a four-run signal. Yeah, so, yeah, Conkers, is it still played? It's a bit like, I think, when I, what I was saying is when I was talking to people about it the other day, I mentioned that, uh, you know, the boys used to play Conkers and the girls. This one gets through the infielder, but they will take the second. And he's going to have to rush, but 
just make sure with a little dive there gets through the infield is Gujar who's not having the best of days and Numan Amjad has to back it up he's got a good arm Amjad so that's why uh, Jethu San had to rush to get back yeah and the girls they used to play jacks so again our uh, jack still played uh, a few days ago it was international marble day our marble still played let me know let me know if wherever you are if the, the kids still do play conkers or jacks or marbles Oh, down he goes, and well, he's not getting. I get a man. He on a mahun bag. Yeah, man, he was on a bus, mini bus hoggy. Down he goes. Sometimes I think there's a little bit of grass clippings maybe in the ground. So goes to pick it up. Oh, Megia, 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 Megia. Who knew me? Who saw that? Well, that was down he goes, and so a lot of talk here. Welcome to everybody around the world, and welcome to Peacock Friday. Well, we are in France. We're about an hour away from Paris, and of course, Paris. The city of loves, I thought, I don't know, a few roses today for my Peacock Friday number. Hope you're wearing yours, wherever you are. Uh, Peacock Friday, of course, is the start of the weekend. And we've got a cracking weekend ahead here on the European Cricket Network. And it's starting here today with five matches. We're going to see Drew as well on three occasions. Paris Army is a big day for them. They've got three matches as well. Can they get some points on the board? Not a good start at the moment. But I, they've got to believe... That if they can get a wicket or two here of the Balbinians, that they can get back into the game. Because we have seen a lot of that. that teams are got one or two very strong batters. But if you can get through them, then anything can happen. We saw a lot of that yesterday, didn't we? With Raw 94, that was a good example. We know that that's the issue that uh, the Super Kings have. And maybe to an extent, even the Paris University Club. So the depth isn't necessarily there with all the teams. And... Uh, you can add also the likes of President Eleven to that as well. Thank you for joining us and uh, stay with me for what promises to be a very exciting day on the European Cricket Network. Slight delay here at the moment, not 100% sure what it's about. 85 is on the board though, so you see that there is a big score possible. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we just have a look at uh, something that's going to be pretty exciting. There might be that the I wonder if they're checking if it was ex actually the end of the over. But while we're having a wait, why don't we look at the, the European Cricket Championship draw. Remember, this time around, this year, it's going to be slightly different. We have got the, the Challenger Division and the Premier Division. Thanks, guys. Thanks to Spring Media uh, for putting that up for us. So the Challenger Division, because I, I mean, we might have to go back to it. It looks like we're ready to start. So just stay with that thought for a moment. We'll go back to it. It's been played pretty nicely, but this time at least it doesn't go to the boundary as Numan Amjad is coming back into the attack. Yeah, so slightly different this time around. We've got the Challenger Division and Premier Division. So what we did, what we've done here is rather than put everybody into just one one pot, we accept the fact that there are teams that are perhaps more experienced and more advanced. All right, another opportunity, huge moment. Fielder getting underneath of it and takes a catch. Well held as Raza Hassan said they do get the wicket that they were searching for. And it's uh, Jatu San who will go for 35. Uh, and that's the end of a partnership that was worth 86. It's a good catch by Raza. But a good knock, a really good partnership. 35 of 13. And there's the catch there, so Hamjad has deserved a wicket, I have to say. He was unlucky not to get one in his first over. Opportunity for Sandil. Tambidor, who goes out. All right, now, could this be what I was talking about? So Zalmi, having broken the partnership. Can they get another, get themselves back in this contest? Well, gets worked away. Work done to be done here by the fielder. Oh, down he goes. But he makes a stop. He makes a stop. Oh, great effort from the fielder. He chases it hard. He does go down. Once again, I think this is the grass clippings where he's uh, going down on. Chasing hard. Does he make the stop here cleanly? Gets foot on ball. Uh, keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on the ball. The ball is going away from the rope. He goes down like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> oh, you get this under lucky. Well, it's a good job that he's got a bit of cushion down there. 
All right, this is trying to get it in the gap and well fielded again. So nice little phase here for Paris Zalmi. First time that they're just managing to contain. We've had now five deliveries where well, six deliveries now where there's been no boundary. So maybe they're starting to turn it around, but they've got to see the back of this guy, Thibelingham. Iron up a half century. And he gets beaten by this short delivery outside the off. He has been managed to put these ones away. He's played the the uppercut and the lofted shot over point very well. But that one gets past him. It'll be one for the over. And it just doesn't feel right there. I'll go back to what I was talking about by the European Greek Championship. So, so yeah, so with all teams being different, we've realised that there are probably a, a cluster of teams that probably aren't up to the same level as the teams that would normally be playing in sort of the Premier League. So those teams have all now been clustered together in the Challenger division, which will be very competitive. And they will play like a mini tournament of their own. There will be a winner. There will be a, a trophy for the winner. There will be prizes for the winners. A good over there by Numan Amjad. In fact, a very good spell from him. 89 for one at the end of six. And Numan, he's uh, one for 15. And uh, that's why I was surprised you don't open with him. Just imagine if you open with him. Puts a bit more pressure on the batters. And it takes uh, one or two wickets early and takes the wicket of Trevor Lingham and Jethu San, the man who he did get out, then could be a different game, couldn't it? Looks like the wicketkeeper wants a lid, so we will see possibly a bit of spin here now. So, yeah, so the Challenger division will play their own little tournament. But the key thing is, there's plenty to play for. Not just You're not just playing to win it, and obviously the silverware, but the two finalists will also be promoted to the next year's uh, European Cricket Championship, the Premier Division. So you got promotion, that also means you'll have relegation. So teams that are playing in the Premier League, this one's going to get in the gap, four runs to start. There's, looks like uh, Suleiman Khan just trying something different, trying to take the pace of the ball. Uh, that one gets mashed away. Uh, Sandil picks up his first boundary. So the team that finished, I think for the first year, for this year, the team, only one team, because of the numbers involved, the team that finishes the lowest, I suppose the ranked isn't the right word as, well, maybe rank is the word for the delivery from Suleiman because it's short, it's ugly, and that gets blasted away. So Sandil... Sambidor is out there and he's enjoying himself as well. He's come out with one thing in his mind and that's to go big. And he's done that so far. Four, now follows that up with six. Yeah, so the, the team that finishes with the least number of points in those four groups, A, B, C and D, will be the team that will go down into the challenger division next time round. And he now plays the uppercut as he drops back as uh, Suleiman Khan goes a little bit wider, plays that away as well. And really good hitting. And the 100 now comes up. This over has gone 4-6. And I think this probably goes all the way as well, does it? No, one bounce, 4-6-4. Four, four, four. Suleiman, he was expensive. In his second, and he's expensive in the start of this one as well. Floats it up in the air. Catching opportunity. Gujar holds on to it. No mistake from him. So after being hit for three boundaries, it does take the wicket. But Sandil does his job. Goes out there, swings the bat, scores a quick fire. 17 out on ball number six. And once again, big applause for him as he comes out because they know going out there and doing the job, not taking 
not putting too much value on their wicket, just putting value and getting runs on the board quite quickly. So time to see the captain now, KG Vithu, who will also be behind the stumps, the absence of uh, Hewitt Aladdin Jackson. Gets off the mark straight away and puts uh, Thibberlingham back on strike for the, the one ball to come. Yeah, so what would be interesting going back to the the European Cricket Championship is I get the feeling that there'll be a, a number of teams in that uh, Premier Premier Division to be a number of teams that will be finishing sort of bottom of the group all on the same number of points. The net run rate becomes so important, I think, when it comes to that. And, of course, the bonus point. You know, the bonus point equation will be so important. So you're going to have to try, even if you're a team, you're not winning any games, you've got to try and get points because otherwise, next year, you may find yourself not playing in the Premier Division but in the Challenger. So that's going to be very exciting. Certainly looking forward to that. That over comes to an end. And it was a mixed one, really. The first three were boundaries. The next three was a dot, which was the wicket of Sandil, and the two singles, 105 for two. Still 18 balls to come, though. The wind just picking up slightly. It's a bit of a chill to the ground yesterday because we did have sun for most of the day, even though temperatures were the same. Around about uh, 12, 13 degrees, the sun certainly made it feel a bit warmer. This one's called a wide by the umpires, Faisal comes on to bowl. Uh, umpire score, I think, for me, they're the harder ones, aren't they, when the ball's going across the battle like that, and I think sometimes the camera height and angle we have makes it look closer than it is, so that very much an umpire score for me, those ones. And that one, no doubt about that. Good start for Faisal. You may observe that Faisal is running back to his mark, and the reason for that is just have a look at the clock. So we've got five and a half minutes to try and get. I think he sneaks that one in as well. So five and a half minutes, you've got this over to get through. First ball actually was called a wide in the end. I must have missed that. Must have been a call that was called later. I thought he st thought he did sneak it in. Yeah, that's why they're rushing. Time is ticking by. Got to try and get shot. Well, that's the uppercut, and that will be the 50. Well batted indeed. Shaba, Shaba, Komalan, Thibalingam. 53 of 24 deliveries, and even a son comes out to congratulate him for getting to his half century. What a good knock that was. Well batted indeed. And that's the way he started with a shot just like that. As he clobbers another one for six. And they, they want him to stay there right till the end though. Plays this nicely. Field it should make the stop, does. We'll take the single. And the captain, KG Vithu, he's got a couple of balls here in the over. Faisal, I think he's running back to his mark faster than he's actually <laughs> running in to ball. There's Safi Faisal. On the up, work to be done by the fielder, and that's a really good catch. Delightful catch. And you know the importance of this catch? Every wicket brings you a minute as well. So I know this was a little bit of time for the batters to go out there, but so in a way, so the batters, don't forget, have 60 seconds from once the wicket falls to get out there. That's why you'll see, for example, here, Manoharan, Thayaparan, he's uh, making his way out there pretty quickly. So you get a minute, but in a way, you don't because the batters also take about a minute to get out there. So the captain tries to find the boundary. That's a really good catch, actually. Does really well to take that as the fielder. And that's a 
Raza again out there. That's his second. This one will be a wide. So that doesn't help. Raza takes his second catch. Also did uh, take the catch to remove Sendil. Manoharan. Well, has a look at the umpire. Umpire this time decides that one is okay. And over comes to an end. So 114 for three. Expected score around about the 143, but just with those wickets going, you've seen that the rate, well, the expected rate, starting to slow down here because they were at 85 at the halfway point. But uh, then we saw good over there from Numan Amjad. Suleiman Khan once again was expensive, but he did finish with three good balls as well, uh, even though the first three were boundary, so he came back fairly well. This one is going to go and go and go. Freshly cut. It's Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, that over from Suleiman went for 16. Faisal was that last one just going for nine. That included a couple of those, those wides. Four more to Thibalingham. He's the man. If they're getting to this 140, he's the guy who's going to take him there. This one is going to be a backseam mo that will go for four. This is going to go all the way to the boundary. But uh, backseam four. Cuatro mas. You can just see the look on the keeper there. Come on, Patel. I can't believe it. The thing of Lingham keeps on going. That's more reason why I've got to admit I was a little bit surprised that Numan Amjad doesn't open the bowling. Because. Again, it does look like that the Balbinians uh, were once again relying on two key batters to get them the, the bulk of the runs. That's on the legs. And they will take the single here. I'm quite surprised actually they take this. You get the feeling that you probably want Thibalingham to be on strike for majority of the balls. I mean, there's still three balls to go on this over. So if I'm Thibalingham, I'm not taking that leg by. Um, could be wrong because Manoharan could smash this one away for a big, for a boundary. And he does just that. So there you go. I was wrong. Manoharan says, there you go. Ulrico, eat your garlic. Eat your garlic mushrooms because I am going to smash it for a big six. So Manoharan gets off the mark with Sace. Powerful hit. Manoharan, I think, is a... Probably a, a key player. The key. He'll be pretty key with the ball as well. Full toss and he'll go. Catch gets taken. That's a really good catch from Suleiman Khan out there. So Manahara gets hits one for six. It's very much six and out. Suleiman Khan takes the catch. So Manahara six or three will go and Raza Hassan who's put in a good shift gets the gets the wicket also responsible for taking two catches as well short oh wow has this come has this got a bit of the lid here Let's have a look at this again. And it certainly sounded like he caught something. Does this get a bit of the helmet? Maybe not. I tell you what, he's got to be a little bit careful. I mean, you know, he's got some fancy headgear on under the, the lid. I think it maybe just brushes a bit of the shoulder. And he doesn't want any, anything to, to catch a bit of that fancy headgear, whatever he's got underneath the helmet, a bit of a butt or whatever it is. So, 
One, two, nine for four. Last over. 143. So still expected to get to that 140. The Willingham is the man to do it. And he doesn't quite get this out of the middle. He could be gone here. And he will go. So that's a big moment. Thiva Lingham doesn't quite get the timing right on this one. He'll depart for an excellent 62. But with five balls to go, that could be really important. Because now, that 140 score, hmm, maybe unlikely as a new batter has to go out there. Gets out there pretty quickly. Well batted though. There should be good applause here for Thingling. Really good knock. And here those now as the action continues. Oh, he's picked these up beautifully. What a pickup that is. And this is Sajivan Kumaran. Oh, what a delightful shot. Well, Sajivan. Certainly somebody who has been good with the ball and there he shows that he can be useful with the bat as well six straight away so 140 back on the cards he's going to miss this time they think about running decide against it and now a, the wicket keeper decides to hold on to it and not throw it away Barksai is the the other batter who's who's out there but I don't think you want it. You probably just want to, unless it's the last ball, you probably want Kumaran to try and stay there and smash him. He hits this pretty well. But, uh, when they push for two, they decide not to. Um, so, faith in Badakzai then from, from Kumaran. Faisal. Outside of Kumaran Amjad, he hasn't bowled bad, has he? Keeping it nice and tidy. He's got pretty decent figures. Bowling a good good length, and he's getting this ball to go right across. All right, up in the air. It will just drop before Kumaran Amjad gets a chance to catch it. And, well, that one could have been very easy, and couldn't it, as the ball hits the edge of the pitch, and deviates away. I get the feeling if the batters fancied it, they could have got there, you know. All right. A ball to go. 137. Yeah, batter's just not looking. Well, one was, one wasn't. Look at him. Ready to go. Ready to run hard is Berkzai. Come around. We'll get a wide one and this one might be too high. This might be a no ball. Let's have a look at this side on. Faisal gets this completely wrong. No ball. Free hit coming up. It's too high. Gets called straight away on the field of play by Ampar Vignesh. Not a good delivery. Ay, ay, ay. Well, you thought they might have saved them getting to the 140s. Now with that ball, with one no ball going on to it, 138 for five. Free hit. And he hits it well. Fielder coming across and does grab onto it. The batters turn around and come back for two. And that brings the 140 on the board. So slightly lower than where they were looking to be. I suppose a better second half from the Paris Zalmi side in the field. 85 came off the first. And that means in the, the second is just 55. Those are your splits. But still, there's a lot of runs to try and get from a team that have struggled with the bat. And with no final army in the side as well, you get the feeling that uh, there's a lot of pressure on Numan Amjad to go out there and perform. But it was a, a lively start to the day, it has to be said, in this very first match in day five. As the two openers, well, they went about their business in fine form with a partnership that was worth 86. And the likes of Gujar, Suleiman Khan in the first three overs just couldn't get the line right. And we saw uh, a beautiful display of shots, especially the timing from Kumalan uh, Thibalingam was absolutely beautiful. And Jachu San certainly didn't let his side down as well. The little man played some really nice shots. He would eventually go. It was Raza 
that would take the cash to get rid of Dithrusan. But what I liked from the players, especially those of the Bobinians, is whoever went out there didn't buckle down, did they? They just decided they were going to go for all their shots. That was what served them well. And if they did go, well, they didn't go without putting a contribution on the board. But some of the shots that uh, Timmy Lingham was playing were just absolutely beautiful. That brought up his half century. It was a, a joy to watch, really. Uh, this is the wicket of the captain. He was trying to get a, a boundary away. Another fine catch there uh, taken by Raza. And a little bit of luck came Timmy Lingham's way as well. That one. And there was one that uh, ended up a top edge that would go over the wicketkeeper as well. Uh, nice catch there taken by Suleiman to remove uh, Manaharan. Then this one here right at the end. It was another good catch. And that was the end of uh, Thibelingham. And with him gone, we thought that maybe the 140 may not be on. But then right at the end, unfortunately, Faisal bolts an overhaul, gives one away and the free hit goes for a couple. So the 140 does come up. So 141 will be the chase. It needs to go at 14s. Paris Army just have to say to themselves, it could have been worse. Remember at one point, they was looking to, at the halfway point to maybe putting around about 170 on the board. So I think they fought back pretty well. Question is, can their batting click here this morning? And 62 from Thiba Lingam. I think he played beautifully well. And Jatusan put a good partnership in with him as well. On the bowling front, Numan Amjad, I just think you've got to you've got to open up earlier. Maybe they make a change, perhaps open up with him and maybe Safi Faisal, who I think uh, picked up two wickets. And all right, there was a no ball there towards the end, which let him down slightly. So could have been three less on the figures from him. Uh, just I don't think that uh, Suleiman Khan and Gujar really uh, made it or gave their team a good start. So they've got to just play about with the bowling. But when you got someone like Numan Amjad in your side. He's a captain as well. He's got to back himself to bowl, I think, the first over, or at least be one of the openers. That's the mid-match summary for you. 140 on the board. 141 is going to be the chase in match number 21, the first of this day five. Peacock Friday. I'm looking forward to the reply. Join us back in 10 minutes' time.
This European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello, folks, and welcome back. The umpires, Vignes and Susha, make their way out, and they're followed out there by the Balbinians, who are looking bright and sparky in their red as the sunshine also greets us once more. And the Pominians, they'll be pretty pleased with their efforts. They've put 140 on the board. And that means that Parasami, they need 141. Or if they're to get anything out of this match and get their first point in this European Cricket Series in France, they will need to get to 99. So let's see how they fare. Numan Amjad is listed to be the opener. And he has Dawood Ahmadzai, who is going to be the non-striker. And this is not... The Mr. Universe, Dawood Ahmadzai. So two uh, Ahmadzais uh, with the same name in this series. And of course, we did see Dawood Ahmadzai yesterday leading his team well. Playing, of course, for President's Eleven. So let's see how Zalmi go about their business here. Remember, they... Had issues with the bat, and they fell flat, chasing 177 against PUC on uh, the start of day two, mat six. And it was a similar story, chasing 183 against President 11. And once again, they fell short. But Numan Amjad did score a 50, scored 51 of 27. But again, he was the only real highlight. And with no Farhan Ahmad in the side, he's got to go well here. And oh, he gets beaten outside the off. This one just nips back in from Sajivan Kumaran. Gets played out, but straight to the field. They're taking it out. Could be out. He will be out. He's going to be run out. Run out. Well, who's going to be run out? Do they cross? Let's have a look if they cross. I reckon they do. I reckon it's Armadzai, and he will go for a diamond duck. Because they do cross at this point. We're just making sure you look. So it will be a diamond duck for Dawood Armadzai. There's no run here. It's straight to the fielder. Picks it up, throws it in nice and easy. Thank you very much. Diamond duck on Peacock Friday for Dawood Amadzai. How unlucky can you get? Well, there's Diamond Derek. That's the worst possible way to go. I don't think there's a run here. And if we see it again, maybe we can see just whether it is Numan Amjad that goes and he draws uh, Dawood Zai into the run. Maybe we can have a quick look at it here. Let's just look at it one more time as the new batter gets set. So, yeah, he does. Look, he just takes that initial couple of runs. So I reckon he's barbecued him here. Amazai gets barbecued. Diamond duck. Disastrous start. What a way to go. No balls faced. And you're back in the dugout already. Cricket can be a cruel game, can't it? It can be a cruel game. Okay. Hello to Emmanuel who joins us. Hello to Rob Thompson and Jules on the chat. And oh, quite close to another. Well, that would have been absolutely disaster as Amjad, after running out Amadzai, then almost runs himself out. This is pretty close. Let's see this again. So there's the swing there. Taking on the fielder and oh, would have been out. Would have been out. Kamal Patel is the number three batter. Well, you might as well say he's an opener because he's out there pretty quick. Oh, they're up and about here. Balbinions up and about, making lots of noise. They're loving life at the moment. Up in the air, chance. Somebody's got to call it. And does he hold on to this? Well, from the reactions, no. Two fielders getting in each other's way. Well, this is Thea Gagarjan 
He's running straight into the fielder. And I don't know who the fielder is here. Maybe we'll get a chance to have a look at it here. And he's in his way. There you go. There's the evidence. Doesn't take the catch. Two men getting in each other's way. Well, nobody's going to get in the way of this one, as this one will get blasted for a big six. So that's the end of the first over. Oh, what an entertaining one it's been. Eight will come from it with that big hit. So, But there was that chance. There was that chance. Eight for one. And uh, that inquiry is still going on. I, I think when I'm looking at it again, and the uh, Pritav Theogarjan does keep running. I mean, he doesn't help the fielder who's coming in. But whether it's enough to put him off, I think it was it was Barak Zai that in the end doesn't take the catch. So it's a big drop though, isn't it? It's a big drop. And that's hit nicely down the ground. This one's coming into me, I think. Thank you very much. Oh, there we go. Little bit of action. Who wants it? And anybody? Nice shot. There we go. It's a lovely shot, actually. Numan Amjad, straight down the ground, and it says, Hello, Rico, wake up. Knock, knock. Anybody home? Yep, I'm here. Okay. I'm going to sing it. Oh, now, this time he tucks up the batter. Likes to run unnecessarily, doesn't he, Amjad? Remember, it was dropped. Dropped on one. Could have been run out on zero. On the single. Short, up in the air, chance. Keeper's got to call it, calls it. Big moment. Holds on to the catch. So, Amjad, lucky twice. Third time lucky though for Balbinians. Amjad will go for five. Catch is held. No mistakes from the captain, KG Vithu. So at the moment, there's no signs of missing action. Jackson from the side, is there? Nice and easy, nice and calm. And the Balbinians, they come from all over to congratulate the captain for holding on to it. And uh, Munasinge gets the important wicket of Numan Amjad, the captain of Paris Zalmi. It's going to be an uphill struggle from here, for sure. Especially with Numan Amjad back already. It was that heavy delivery for Munasinge that does the job. And here he is again, and he's got a bit of zip about him as well. One for four so far. 12 for two. Parazami, a team that have not picked up any points so far. Hello to Mr. J. Grant. He's saying good morning all. Uh, Pico Friday is not only Pico Friday. It's uh, Kwasa with my coffee. And, uh, well, he has a pong of chocolate as well well you're naughty man but be naughty but be nice you can do it on peacock friday it's friday go for it go for it yeah so you say it's not just a croissant you have on the chocolate as well i tell you what that's uh we have all of those sweet pastries. that's the that's the problem here at breakfast because we are in france there's so many of those lovely pastries and of course i just came from portugal as well which is very much known for its pastries there as well like the old custard tarts and uh, they all have weird names for their pastries there the nun's belly and uh, angel's double chin but all very tasty and here at breakfast we have all of them well there's the predicament for Zalmi no points, two matches can they get something out of match number three third time lucky, doesn't look like at the moment Balbinians looks like they 
they could take themselves right up their level with uh, a raw 94 on 10 points because they surely will be looking to restrict the likes of Zalmi to under the 99 here. 13 for two after two. That's been crunched. Not a good delivery. It's been absolutely mullered. Manos arriba, 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 Pedro, porque eso es una grande. So, come on, Patel. Remember, he did smash one big six already. So, is he the man? Is he the man who can go big here for his team? Get some support for someone like Karim Shazad, who's well, faced three balls but hasn't done anything just yet. But he's still there. Kumaran. That's been hit powerfully as well. Fielder gets behind it. Makes a good stop. Nicely done. And a little backward roll to finish as well. From Awana Kula Suraya. Oh, that's well bowled. Gets that ball to swing in. And almost gets through the bat of Patel. Well, Shazad, beg your pardon. Shazad who gets off the mark, facing his first ball. Shazad gets Patel back on strike. Just going to watch the swing here from El Presidente Kumaran. Oh, great delivery. Slightly shorter this time. Slightly shorter, but he still gets the swing. Sometimes when you put the ball in shorter, the swing tends to go. So you bowl it full, you get the swing. Bowl it short, it goes, but not with Kumaran. He still gets that ball to, to come back in pretty sharply. High in the air, catching opportunity. Oh! Goes down. Has one, two, three bites at the cherry. Can't take it. Gets the applause from Kumaran. That's nice, isn't it? Supporting the fielder. Uh, but the opportunity was there, but it doesn't get taken. We'll have a look at it here again. So it goes a long way up in the air from Patel. And in, out, and just the last moment, he couldn't keep it in his hands as well. That's Munasinghe that drops it. Mm. Well, they're taking it on. In comes the throw. It's wild. Well, I don't know what he's throwing at here, but that is a wild throw. Oh, it's all happening out there at the moment. But Patel being dropped. I think that's, a, that's the key, really. Patel's the man who's still there. All right, just have a look at this. 22 for two, as opposed to 53 without loss. And a long way from getting the win. They need to get 17s to get the win. But remember, just to get to 100 could be an issue as well. That's what they're going to try and get to. To try and get something out of the game. They, they don't want to have three matches and no points. Zalmi. So, Monoharan is to bowl over number four. Was the pick of the bowlers when we saw them for the first time? Look at the way he gets this to swing. Corner wide by umpire Suchet. Let's just have a look at this again. Does he catch any of that line going through? Yeah, I'm not convinced about that one, I have to say. And he does get a lot of movement away, but I think it still catches some of the line. That's it, well. I don't think this one is coming back. He gets it clean out of the middle. So six runs, good hit. So Karim Shazad, he opens his boundary account. A yeah, good, positive, hard hit. So, Monoharan, Thaya Paran. Just a little bit too short there. But yeah, I, I like these bowling. When we saw them on their first day. Sliced up in the air, and gets a little bit luck here. And get the feeling that this one will almost get away from the field. There's a nice little back heel there from Sandil. Temi Bidua, who chases it. Here we go, just a delicate little touch. Saves the boundary. 
Shazad gets a couple, but he's swinging hard, isn't he? All or nothing, I think he's decided, Shazad. And, well, that's all. That will go all the way. Bully, bully, bully. Kinna sona. Shaka lagia. Well, let's play cricket. Yes, please. Let's play and have some fun. And Kurum Shazad. Took him a while to get going. And uh, three deliveries for Nada. But he's starting now. And good, firm, positive hit. He likes to go in that area. We see what he can do if he's fuller. And that's what he goes fuller. Oh, he does well to get bat onto that. That's a good delivery. Started on around about leg stump and starts to come back into him. But he gets back down onto it. And he needed to as well. Okay, these two. Bit of a start. Patel, remember, was dropped by Munasinga. How expensive could that drop prove to be? And a discussion here about something not sure what's what's going on and the batter I'm not sure this might be an issue here it seems could be a bit of an injury here this is Krum Shazad obviously got a bit of an issue he's taken the shoes come off he might want I don't know if he wants I mean, does he want a bit of free spray there? Is he? You can see that the other batter seems to be ready to go out if need be, and it might be that there could be a little bit of an injury here. And he has put the shoe back on, so obviously struggling with something. Krum Shazad. Well, if uh, if Wahid Abdul was here, the shoe phone specialist we'll see him in the next match i'm guessing he'll be able to go out there and sort it out all right looks like he's okay to continue but it does, does seem a bit does seem uncomfortable so something's not quite right and uh, monohara will continue he's gone for 16 or four balls here uh, Thadaparan. let's see if he can tidy up his line Okay, could be a catching opportunity. It will be a catching opportunity. He does tidy up his line, and it's a good catch this time taken by Badakzai. He wasn't able to take Nuan Amjad when he was offered the opportunity, but no mistakes. As, uh, come on, Patel. He goes for maybe one too many in that area. He's going to depart. Badakzai, who we'll probably see with the ball later as well. Holds on to the catch, so Kamala will go. And uh, Manaharan, all of a sudden, the over looks a lot better. As it's 16 for one with the ball to go in it. New bat is Safi Faisal, who was up there as one of the big of the bowlers for his side. Picking up. Two for 20. Let's see what he can do with the bat here. Paris Zalmi, 38 for three balls to go in this, the fourth over. Hello to Ivan B, who's saying hi, guys. <laughs> and Emmanuel saying, needs the magic spray. Yeah, he needs something. Well, Paris Zalmi just needs need a little bit of magic, full stop. And Paul, I think Paul's absolutely right. Uh, Paul is touching on what I was saying, that uh, the captain's got to open the ball. He's got to try and ball, blow away the opposition in the power play. That's what Paul is saying. I agree with you. If you're the captain, and for what I'm seeing here, I think very few teams from what we've seen so far is... Oh, high. Oh, well, this will be a catch and a half if this is taken. Barak Zai takes it. Great catch. That is coming down with snow. I'm telling you, this ball is coming down with snow on it. It has gone so high. And Monoharan will finish the over with another wicket. So two in two for him. Well, Safi Faisal has crunched this. It has gone so high. I think it's put a hole in the ozone layer as it's come back down. But Barak Zai has taken the catch. And it's a really good catch. Monoharan, well, I said he was hoping things go better for him. They do. 
It's going to be a golden duck there for Safi Faisal. So he'll go for a golden. We remember we did see a diamond duck already. Haven't seen a peacock Friday duck yet. I'm sure at some point we will see one. And just remember that, folks, that uh, Mono Haran, uh, Taya Paran, he will be in a hat trick when he comes back. Speaking of hat tricks, remember we did see one yesterday. 38 for four. And of course, it was Nahir, no, Zahir, Zahiri who took it. Back to back four wickets for him. Remember, he took four for 13 uh, against the President 11. And we'll just take the single here. It seems to be running okay now. That's Kurum Shazad. The new batter, by the way, that's gone out is Suleiman Khan. Yeah, so he took four for 13 against Predent 11 and then well he was he was exceptional uh, against uh, for the President 11 sorry taking on the Villain Super Kings so 4 for 13 but he wasn't the only one uh, that's a nice looking shot but there's a fielder out there he wasn't the only one to take 4 in that innings because also his teammate Amadullah uh, Milikzada took 4 for 15 as well he would get the play of the match but then match number 19, President 11 won 15 for 7. And Raw 94 were cruising to victory. In fact, they needed just 16 off the last uh, two overs. They had, oh, they were only, I think at that time, three wickets down. And then that last over, that uh, ninth over was bowled by Hussein. Only conceded six, took a wicket. So 10 was needed of the last. Nice shot. Could get four. We'll get four. That's a lovely shot. Beautiful on drive from Suleiman Khan. Delightful shot. And it's a good job, really, that Barak Zai, after taking an incredible catch, doesn't put his foot near that or he doesn't catch his foot because I don't think we would have seen him on the field of play anymore. That was crunched. Absolutely crunched. Taking it on, pick up and throw, and asking the question, we might go upstairs here. Suleiman Khan, well, remember he was having a issues with his left foot. He had to be quick here. Does he make it? I mean, it's a good pick up, good throw. It's over the stump, the wicket keeper takes the bowls off pretty quickly. So let's have a look at this side on. So in comes the throw. And is the bat down? Is the bat down? Oh! I don't see the bat down. I don't see the bat down. The question is, though, we don't know about the foot. The bat is not down. The bells are off. The question is, what about the foot? Well, looks like looks like we're saying that's okay. And go with the umpire score, I think, because you don't get a good look at it. with the camera you just couldn't see if that foot had gone down or not could you all right end of the over 47 for four at the the end of five let's have a look at the calendar for the 2024 Season, it's going to be a big season. So, from here, uh, we'll go to Italy, then Estonia for first time for me. It's been the first time in a while for the ECN, England for the very first time in Wimbledon. Then we have the Cyprus, Czechia, Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, Italy, Austria, Croatia, and then ECC Challenger and ECC uh, Premier which, uh, of course, we talked a little bit about earlier. That's one of our, that's our next stellar event. Swing and a miss from Krum Shazad, who only just survived the run out there. Yeah, we just couldn't see the foot was down, so I had to go with the, the, the umpire. All right, goes for it, but I don't think he gets enough of this. Is another catching opportunity, and it's been taken. And no mistakes at all. So another one bites the dust. Catch is taken. And that's the end now. Krum Shazad, he gets to 20. 
20 of 14 deliveries. And Manoharan picking up the wicket. And remember, that first ball was the hat-trick ball. So no hat-trick. I was in the process of telling you about the hat-trick. So where did I get to? Yeah, so uh, Royal 94 needed 10 of the last. And then, well, Zahir Zahiri bowled that fantastic over. Only gave away the one run. And he picked up four wickets, including a hat-trick. So, Zahir Zahiri is the, the hat-trick hero here in France. And he has his name in the Hall of Fame. That's the beauty about the European Cricket Network. Makes players' dreams come true. Well, Manoharan, he's taken three. Three could become four. It will become four. So, he's done it again. Two in two again. Well, he only just missed out on a hat-trick with the start of this over, which was a dot. Two in two. Well, I mentioned the hat-trick was taken yesterday by Zahir Zahiri. Well, maybe you can have a look at that graphic. Uh, we'll have it up for you in a moment, but that's another one that bites the dust. So Raza Hassan is another golden duck. So it's another. And this is the graphic. So there he is. Hat trick number 12 was Zahir Zahiri yesterday. That uh, fantastic over. Four wickets for just one run it went for. Are we going to see another? Or are we going to see a five wicket haul? Manoharan. On the hat trick. Oh, so close. So close. Gujar gets beaten. So close, Manoharan. Just watches again. Gets it. Oh, it's just too good. It's just too good. That's too much. Oh, that's just. Well, let's have a look at this. I reckon it's. It's probably one that looks like it's a filthy full toss. That's too high. But I reckon it I reckon it comes down if we look at this side on. I reckon there's nothing on this. Let's see. It's yeah, it's dropping down. It's like it's like uh, all the years just come out of the ball. You're all right. Manaharan. Last ball to see if he can pick up a FIFA. And not this time. Gets played away. I was talking about four wickets. For four wicket hauls yesterday. We actually had three of them yesterday. Because uh, Uthia Kuma uh, from, well, from Royal 94. He took four for 23. What a match he had that match 17. I know he ends up on the losing side. But he was a bit of a hero. Eight wickets fell from Farris University Club. He took four catches and four wickets. So he played a part in all eight. And then with the bat, he makes 29 not out, hitting the last ball off the innings for four, which meant they got to 111, which is exactly what they needed to get a point. So he took four wickets. We saw four taken by uh, Amadullah uh, Milakazada. He was the player of the match in that win for his club, the present 11 against the Super Kings. And of course, we saw four for 13 also there from Zahiri. And then Zahiri would do it again when he took that hat-trick, so on four occasions. Well, this one is coming maybe into the queue. No, just just to the right of me. And uh, there's no equipment to protect because, of course, Vinny's hand is not here. So I've got a nice bit of open space here, actually. So that's fine. That would have been OK. Speaking of Vinny, well, let's just say that maybe you might hear from Vinny a little bit later. Uh, Vinny, of course, is... Uh, Yet uh, HQ, all right, up in the air. It's another sky, and the catching's been good. And this one's been taken as well. So another one bites the dust. It's going to be the end of uh, Suleiman Khan. He'll go for the unlucky 13. And it goes for it, but again, is more height than distance. So 13 of six deliveries. Nice catch taken there by Prithev. In general, fielding has been good, you've got to say. There was one that went down earlier. 
Remember, Badak Zai did put down Numan Amjad. And Patel was dropped by Munasinghe, which was quite a straightforward catch, actually. But in general, and on the whole, they have held on to them. And now it's the opportunity for Juana Kulasuriya to pick up his first. New bat, Javid. So Ishan Javid comes out. 55 for 7. Edge, that's going to race away pretty quickly. And that ends up being a great stop. Well, the man, Kumalan Thibalingam, who was <laughs> exceedingly good with the bat, ends up making a stop. Well, all smiles from the man who's wearing the darkest shades that I've seen on a cricket field. And he was using them to bat as well. Uh, that's a really good stop. Well done. Very well done. Saves the boundary. We've got the equation there for the win. I want to see what the equation is for to just get a point. And what rate they're going to go at. That's what we should be looking here. Slower delivery, but he waits for it well. He'll put this away. Well, that certainly helped their cause. They want to be getting to 99. That will get them a point. So the win here looks pretty unlikely because they, they got to go, what, what? What's that, for a ball? But let's have a look at the equation just to get a point. Should be stopped. And, well, it rebounds it back to the, to the bowler who then gets the throw in. So, let's have a look what they need here. Well, that's the equation for a win, for a point. I'm making it, they're needing 37. So 37 of 19. Edge, gone. Great take, really good take. That's excellent sharp work by the captain, KG Vithu, who takes the catch. He's going one way, so he's actually going down the leg side and the, because the batter's moving that way and the ball's following him. Then he gets a bit of the, the edge, goes the other way, and that's really good, quick reflexes. Good job. Well, his disappointing day continues. Just the one. What a sharp catch that is from KG. Sharp catch. It's the second wicket. Then for Suruya as well. So, Juana Colosoria picks up two. This is what's coming up next. Uh, Balbinions. Well, they've got all the ones at the moment. 1-1. One, one, had one abandoned, unluckily for them. And then were beaten quite easily by the Grini Viper. So, they're going to come back here with a win. Looks like they're going to get that win. So, it will be 2-1-1 one, one for them. But Drew haven't lost yet and one thing about Drew, what they did really well when we saw them is that they contained teams they didn't let teams score big and that was their key for example they restricted Paris University Club to a score of 110 that's a spicy delivery and uh, guess works away to the boundary though it's going to be four runs that's a, that's going right at the head of uh, Ishan Javid, and he oh, deals with that pretty well. He just sort of steers it away. Oh, they excited to get four runs. I'm going to sing it. Bowling the heavy ball. Shot and four. What a cracking shot this is. That's an outstanding hit from Javid. I tell you what. Javid does not look like a number eight batter. Not at all. That is a good shot. That's a quality shot. That's a shot of a guy that can bat. So we've seen him play leg side. Now he cuts this. So Javid takes him to 70. Wanting to get past, or oh, wanting to get to 99 for a point here, Zalmi. Munasinghe. 
It's another, gives him another wide one. This time it's a swing and a miss. Need to be really looking to hit this one over into that extra cover area. Yeah, I was talking about uh, Drew and how they fare the first two matches. Just drops the bat on this and will take the single, Will Javid. So now we're going to see Hassan for the first time. Uh, hasn't faced yet, so Ali Hassan. So, yeah, they restricted Paris University Club to 110 and Drew knocked them off, winning by seven wickets. Hamza Niaz once again in fantastic form. This guy has just been incredible. We'll take another single. And then they play the present 11. So this one is going to be an easy one for them as well. But once again, they restricted. The bowling was good. They kept them to 101 for eight. And Drew winning that one by five wickets. This time it was Nabi that came good. And Niaz made 22 as well. And uh, with the ball, Wahid Abdul has been in good form. As well as Shabez, Mohamed Shabez, picked up some wickets there as well. Well, they're right where they need to be to get a point at the moment. Right. 72 on the board, wanting to get to the 99 for a point. Barak Zai gets the ball again. First table wasn't bad, just nine from it. Dot ball to start. Hassan needs to get bad onto ball. He needs to get bad onto ball. He needs to try and get Javid on strike. Javid has to just go over there, peg it over there and say, hey, come on, get something on it. Get something on it. Get me on strike. We're running out of, running out of balls here. Ten balls to go. Oh, it's another swing and a miss. He's just a little bit late on it. He's a little bit late on it. He's playing, he's playing the shot but not moving the feet. He's not getting in line. He's got to get that foot to come right across. Barak Zai gets another dot in. 27 of nine for a point. This time it's in the air. Chipped up. Fielder comes across. They'll take just the one. They're not going to take two here. Javid has to crunch these next two deliveries to give him any chance. 26 of 8. Fighting for a point here. Azami, Parazami have got no points on the board so far. They're sitting at the foot of the table. Play two, lost two. Uh, just slides it up in the air. Catch taken. Shaba, Shaba. Barakzai. Great athletic catch. Well, that one there just could be your HTL play of the day. Exciting catch, Barak Zai. And it could be the one that means that they get all the points. He has to adjust, and there he is. He leaps into the air to take the catch. Delightfully done. And uh, Balbi Neons now really will have their eyes firmly fixed on all four points here against Zalmi. In fact, that is the end of the innings. It's done. It's dusted as news comes in that uh, the next batter, number 11, picked up an injury in the field, so will not be going out there. So that is the match. It's done. It's dusted. Babylon Leons will be victorious here. Paris Zalmi will be all out for 73. So Balmain Leons are picking up all the points in this contest. Congratulations to them. So that's a great bit of fielding. That caught and bowled from Barakzai would be the last action that we see. Uh, Zalmi, with seven balls to go, will be bowled out. So victory for the Balmanians. And, uh, well, they need to be in good form going into the next contest when they do take on Drua. A lot of talk about Drua. Hamza Niaz has been in sensational form. Mohamed Nisar is looking to come good at any point. And Ahmed Nabi, even he finds his form again. And don't forget, you've got the abilities and the pace of the likes of Wahid Abdul and also Tabish Bharti as well. This is how it started. It was a disastrous start 
with a diamond duck for Dawood Amadzai when there was a real mix-up between the two batters. And really, you have to say, it was Numan Amjad that really sold him down the river. He himself could have gone without scoring. Then he should have gone with just one on the board when that one was put down by Barakzai of all people. But they would make amends and they would put those troubles behind them as they started to hold on to the catches. He started with this one with KG behind the stumps. KG Vithu, the keeper, making no mistakes to get that the very first wicket. That was the, the end of Numan. The good bit of fielding there. I must admit that after those initial early woes in the field, the catching became good, didn't they? No issues there for Balakzai. Well, he would take that one. Then he would take one that went all the way up to the moon and back. This one went a long way. Balakzai made it look easy. And some of the fielding was outstanding. There was a, a nice little period there when Karim Shazad hit a few good balls and you just thought maybe he was going to make a difference. Even Salman Khan, while he was out there for a moment, I thought perhaps he could be the man to get them going. And really, one thing that really surprised me right towards the end is uh, Ishan Javid. He played some sensational shots, but he would be the last to go as he was caught and bowled by Badak Zai. And well, there is the player of the match. That's uh, Thibalingam, not for his fielding, though that was some excellent work, and not for his good looks and his shades that he's wearing, but for his fine knock with the bat. He scored a fine 62 not out of 29 deliveries. And there you go, the last bit of action, and maybe the HTO action of the day as well from Baddock's Eye. Well, it's an early call because it's only the first match. Still four more to come, so plenty of excitement still to come here as we have a look at this wonderful setting of the location of this beautiful Drua Cricket Ground. Looks absolutely stunning. That scorecard, though, from Parasami not looking so good. So once again, Zalmi, not only do they lose, but they're not able to get any points. So that's three matches played, and on three occasions, they have not picked up anything for their efforts. 20 from Kurum Shazad. He sort of... Uh, Looked like he could keep them going, get them to something. 15 from come on Patel. I think with Patel, Shazad, and maybe with someone Khan, made starts but didn't really go on to score big runs. And Ishan Javid, well, I have to say, from some of the shots that he played, he's not, <laughs> he's not somebody that should be coming in and batting at number eight. And unfortunately for Parazami, injury picked up uh, in the field for one of the batters. So number 11 not coming out. And that means that that's it. He's done and dusted four wickets from Mara Haran. So another French bowler that picks up a four. For, that's five fourfers that we've had already. Two also there from Waron Kulasuria. And we saw a good spell of bowling from Kumaran and Munasinga as well. So a, a good morning's work from Balbinians. But they know that even though they do get the victory in that match, that they will be sternly tested in the next match coming up in 20 minutes time so set your watch you've got time to get yourself a cup of coffee and maybe get yourself a quasa why not or something even more naughtier it is the start of the weekend and join me back here and the european cricket network crew in around about 20 minutes time for the start of the match where balmions after victory in this one will be taking on drew at the pronto mi familia
This European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Match number 22 is match number two on match day five on this Peacock Friday. And I'm looking forward to this match. Baby Leons, they're a team that uh, play some very exciting cricket. They are taking on Drew. We know all about Drew, the 2023 ECL champions. They have three matches here today and they know if things go well, they could finish at the top of the standings. Let's join the two captains and the tournament referee, Charles Croucher, for the all-important coin toss. Okay. Drew to call. Heads is the call, and it's a head. So yeah, I reckon this is going to be an exciting one, and you can see there that uh, Drew winning the toss and deciding they will bat first. Of course they will. They bat really deep. Mohamed Niaz has been in sensational form, and last time round we saw that their captain, Ahmad Nabi, finding his form as well. They're a very exciting team, and with the ball, of course, they've got the, the abilities and the firepower of uh, Wahid Abdul. And don't forget, they've got the, the, the little Bombay mix guy that I like to call him, Tabish Barty as well, who always finds a way to pick up wickets. But it will be an exciting match, because look, the Babylonians have shown that they've got a bit of firepower of their own. I love that innings there from Thimalingam, a half century against Parazami. And he was supported really well by Jachu San as well. Well, excitement all around. It is Peacock Friday. I know somebody else is wearing their Peacock Friday shirt, Vinny Sandu. And guess what? We're going to go to HQ because Vinny Sandu will talk you through the first innings. Thank you very much, Rico Full. And yes, bonjour. Good morning, everyone, wherever you're watching from around the world. I'm really looking forward to this as I'm watching from ECN HQ here, just in preparation for the weekend to give Rico a well-deserved break. But Balbignon, well, they had a, a good start to their day, didn't they? But they're running into the 2023 European Champions Dre Cricket Club. And well, they started their tournament pretty well. And we saw them on day two with two decent wins over the... Uh, PUC team, uh, their arch rivals, and also the President's Eleven. And let's have a look at the two teams. Well, had a good start, didn't they, with uh, Tavalingham and Jethusen putting on 86 for the first wicket in the last game, setting up a decent total of 140. That was more than enough in the end. Led by Vitu, who also have the gloves, but they have Nabi up the top. They have Hamza Niaz, of course, and Nisa, probably one of the best top threes going around in Europe if not the best, as uh, you know, got kind of quality all the way down. Could see Abdul Rahman Ahmadzai come back into the side. Now, we didn't see him in the ECL this year, and uh, he's a very, very handy left armer and uh, a guy that we kind of miss during the ECL this year. So, getting ready for the start. You see Drew, fairly comfortable favourites on the win predictor there. I suppose you'd expect that, but Balbignon, no, aside, they've impressed me. They had a bit of an off game on Monday night when they failed to get a point against the Grimi Vipers. But it's always exciting when you see the openers walking to the crease. Shake, rattle, and roll. And it starts with Nias. Muscle one down the ground. He's not able to make great contact. And this is such even... Kumaran opening the bowling for Balbion. Yeah, happy Peacock Friday, everyone. Great to have you with us. I'm in my brightest that I can manage here. One thing I really liked about Kumaran is the way he moves the ball off the straight. And I think if you're going to trouble good batters, you want to be able to move things off the straight. Hello to Dave B. Hopefully you're well. Hello to Steve Bush as well. Rob Thompson's in there. Said my hello's in the chat a little while ago. Another in-swinger, but this time kind of holds up knee as pumps it out of the ground. Maximo! The first of this innings, and something tells me it won't be the last. I suppose that time Niaz was able to kind of settle on it. And the thing about Hamza Niaz, he's very good both sides of the wicket. He's got these kind of magical wrists, and he can can manoeuvre things inside out very well, kind of opens up that offside, but that time decides to go with the swing, which is smart. All right, so he's going to do again. This is holding up in the air. Could be a chance. He's dropped it. Well, that's 
And a costly one, really. It's Munasinger out there. I hope he's all right. Looks like it just kind of burst through his hands. It might have got a little bit of the chin on the way through. Comes and he has, isn't a guy you want to drop. He scored the only century of ECL 23, actually, against Hornchurch in a night game. Now, that means that Nabi gets it. And he's going to pump the first ball out of the ground. Maximo. You wouldn't expect anything less from Nabi. He's had a bit of a torrid time form-wise. Just a fraction too short. Allowed Nabi to kind of settle in the crease. And again, going with the movement. One thing about Kumaran, you can kind of bet your bottom dollar it's going to be curving left to right. So the right hand is and hitting it in the direction of that movement. Some thinking to do for the president. Still to work out whether that's significant to Sajivan or whether it's just a, a shirt that he's picked up. I think it's pretty significant. Last ball, the first over. Pitched up, and you see it's clipped away, not in control, total control of the shot. Here's Muna Singer, who will do the fielding cleanly this time into the first over. Drew uh, 14 without loss. Looking at the ECC groups, of course, France. We're seeing a fair bit of the national team during this ECS as well. I know that for Balbignon, Sham Warner Corsaria is in there. And Fatora, potentially Usman Khan, getting a gig. Group A, it's going to be challenging though. Ireland 11, Scotland 11, as well as Portugal and Guernsey. Of course, we have the Challenger division and the Premier division now. And two teams will be promoted from the Challenger. It looks like at this stage, just one will be relegated for 2025. But join us for the Euros of Cricket starting on September 23. Right, Nabi faces up. And Muna Singer catching the first over right now. This is absolutely belted. And that's what you love to see from Nabi when he goes the other way and he goes offside. Maximo. This is very Nabi shot. He's in form. He's not looking to kind of drag those to the leg. Nabi. He's got this aura about him, doesn't he? Not many players have in European cricket, if any. <laughs> noise there. I don't know whether it's the bat hitting the ground or something like that. It seemed like a deflection, I think the replay says. Good movement. You can see that Munasinga is kind of swinging it the other way to Kumaran in the first over. Good, really good rock. Really good rock from Muna Singer. Can't believe that he hasn't knocked the stump out of the ground here. Just bounces straight over. Let's have a look. This one comes in and then leaves Nabi. It's a very, very good piece of bowling. No reward for Anaruta Muna Singer. Time. Similar kind of situation a couple of balls ago this is where Nabi I think he's just playing the wrong shot here this is one if he holds his shape he can hit that over mid off and hit it for six he gets away with that that's the thing lately he hasn't gotten away with too many false shots I'm in Nabi not quite doing enough I think to come back and hit the stumps Hello to Ashmi Ramdut, who is uh, from the USA. Ian Lofthouse has popped in as well. Hello, Ian. Let us know what part of South Africa you're watching from, Ian. I've played there a little bit. Last ball, the second. Drag straight still. Don't think it's quite trying to hit that in the right spot, but he will retain the strike. A fairly decent start, this, from Balbignon. They just hanging in there after two overs, Drew. Uh, 21 without loss. Quick look at the table. Do I have games in hand? 
They've only played the two, but as Rico mentioned, it's a big day for them today. They'll play three times. Yeah, three big wins could put them right up the top of the ladder. Pelvignon, though, mentioned that kind of off game they had in match five. They had also a washout against Royal 94, but they were kind of in control of that game. So maybe they were a bit unlucky there. They're certainly in the mix. Five teams will make the finals of the ECS France in exactly one week time. So we have seen some teams kind of battling the clock a little bit. Now he's walking off, but I very much doubt this is a, a retired out situation. Maybe he just wants to change the bat. And then he does. That's Alexandre Akik, who is the 12th for today. He's a very good fielder. But just uh, waiting for the third over to begin. And Kumaran, he's going to bowl out here. Probably get a bit of a time allowance for that. The clock is managed all the way through, so you can pretty much trust what it says when we get to that ninth over. He can swing it, swings all the way down the leg side, pretty well knocked down there by the captain Vitu behind the stumps. And Dave B said he's got a bit of a cold. That's no good, Dave. Hoping you get you get better soon. Yeah, it was a tough couple of days out there. It's uh, out there at the, the Jordan Cricket Ground with the weather. Very fickle. All right, this is high, really high. Now, who wants it? It's a steepler coming down and caught. Really good catch there. That's Shane Warner, Kula Saria, who's a very good pair of hands. And that's an important moment in this game. You see Nabi once again trying to hit a cross one. Warner, Kula Saria. Well, he's a guy we've seen play a lot of cricket for France. In fact, I remember against Malta in the... The T20Is last year. He took a great catch to win the game. You see, kind of pulls rank on this one. Says, don't you worry. I've got this one covered. And he did. So, Nabi, a couple of blows in anger, but has to go for 14. First wicket falls. It's 22 for one. He's watching from Cape Town. Yeah, I did play the, the Indoor Cricket World Cup in Cape Town in 2019 at Montague. And I had the pleasure there of cruising up to the top of Cape, I was going to say Cable Mountain, Table Mountain in the cable car. The president breaks through with a pretty big fish, but here's Mohammed Nisa coming out at number three. You know how good a player he is. She has a bit of respect first up. Now Nisa went on a dream run, even though Dreux, they made it through their group, they made it to the championship week, didn't quite Reached the four in the end. Missed out by a fine margin, but Nisa was incredible in firstly getting them through 350s on their group finals day. Nice shot though. Nisa misses out and actually keeps his foot back in the crease. He actually went on a run, including the start of championship week, of 750s out of eight matches. Ashfia is watching from Durban, the home of Bunny Chow. We talked about that before. Walkie-talkie malfunction there. <laughs> from the square leg umpire going back after fixing up the stumps. Big innie again. Swings it consistently, doesn't he, Kumaran? Trying to close out this over. It's been a very good one from Kumar. And he says after him, though, just gets over the infield. The infielder there is going to handle it. That's a shame. Coming into the action again. That's a great shot by Niaz. And it's going to clear everything. Maximo! 
time he kind of goes inside out, lets it kind of swing onto what's now like a straight drive. He's just hitting directly into the swing. So it's the other way he can play it. He's got plenty of options, doesn't he? So when they do finally change the strike and give it to Niaz, Niaz handles himself. It's 29 for one after three. You know, a few people in the chat just mentioning the former Nabi and these things. All I'll just say is underestimate him at your peril. And the thing is, his team's still been winning games. So that's the thing with, with Nabi at the top. They don't need him to score runs. It's great, obviously, if he does. But if you can't they're not worried about losing wickets. They've got a long batting lineup. Here we go with over number four. Paran is going to get deflected away. Let's have a shot, but this outfield is not really going to travel as, as far as it would on the Cardam Roval. Oh, now, check this one out. Oh, we've got the one from the reverse camera. It hits the batter, but he's not. It hits Niaz, and he says, well, if you're going to throw it, I'm part of the field, I'm going to run. Check this out. And it wasn't it didn't deliberately hit him. He just kind of got shocked and said, fine. Hmm. Some people have different opinions about that. Oh, next one hits him again, this time straight from the bowler. Dave Parham, though, wasn't he good in that last game? Four for 18 off his two overs. So a really good player to be able to bring in in this situation. Balbignon, that's that. The term given to people that live in Bobigny, which is a it's kind of a suburb just north of Paris. Anyway, there's those magic hands from Niaz. And this time, he doesn't get hit. He carves it. They release those wrists just the right time. Maximo. Six runs and jerk. Like I said, even when they don't have a perfect start, they seem to find a way to get to very, very decent totals. Mr. Jay Grant asking all the games coming from this end. Yes, in a two-week series, we'll typically roll them all from the one end. This one is pulled away. Outfielder does pretty well there. That's Wunakul Saria. You can see what a good fielder he is. Throws a bit offline, but there's always going to be two. Yeah, he took it. A dramatic catch to remove Wazim Abbas of Malta to win a T20 match for France last year. He's a player I imagine would be featuring in the ECIs, which are next weekend, in just over a week's time. All right, leading edge this time, kind of popped up, uncontrolled fielder comes around and he's gone. And Niaz goes for 21. And once again, Manaharan Thayaparan is in the wickets, his fifth of the day. And he has another big fish falls. Underwhelming start this from the 2023 European champions. The score is 40 for two. Nicely taken as well. See, he's all smiles there, got the shades on him. I'm not so sure it's particularly sunny at the moment. But Tavalingham, who takes the catch, he's had a very good day as well. I really liked his innings earlier. 62 off just 29 balls. He'll have an important role to play in the second half as well. Now, this is it up in the air. This could be a first baller here. Oh, he's dropped it. I had several goes at it. Satan Jathusen, who had a few goes, didn't he, really? Eventually, it goes to ground. And so, it's Rafa. He gets a life first up. Look at this. One off the chest. Three, four. Grass. Rafa drops before he scores. He'll retain the strike. 41 for two. But Palpignon, yeah, very much in the mix at the moment. If 
you can hold Jordan around 100, you're thrilled. Okay, yes, they've got some some good bowling options. I mentioned Abdurrahman Ahmed Sai comes into the side for the first time in a while on ECN at least. Just adds a bit of variety to their bowling with his left arm. As okay, Rafa, this misses. This is Mohamed Barakzai bowling over number five. Mr. Jay Grant saying that his over 40 Scotland versus Wales game was called off. So he has a friendly. That sounds nice. Hopefully the weather's good for you. All right, full toss. And Rafa is going to swap this into the gap and get four. His first boundary. Cuatro carreras. It's just not in the right spot. You saw Barracks. I had success first up. Struggling a little bit, but still heavy favourites in the game. Now, this is fast hands from Rafa. And that one's out of the ground by Mile. Maximo! Rabi, a few fumbles over there, but just have a look. Rafa's known for this kind of, not a lot of footwork, but kind of take ball style, real fast wrist snap through the ball. Again, he's kind of helicoptered this. That's going to go out of the ground as well. Maximo, extraordinary shot really from Rafa. That's all about the speed of the bat. Just have a look at it. Kind of go. Bang. It's, a, it's an amazing amount of distance to get a shot like that. Thought off the bat that might be holding up. And it sailed over the long off's head. down the ground and will be handled. You have a look at the expected score. You can see you know, they were tracking at about 10 and over until pretty recently. Still predicted kind of high 130s. It's very true to be able to bat themselves out of a tight spot. Now it gets lucky and that's going to be four. So Misa, not the most elegant shot we've ever seen from him, but it'll do. Barakzai is over, goes magical after a solid start. Just kind of goes off the rails. That one's not really his fault. But at the end of five overs, Dura are 62 for two. Well, time for some analysis. And yeah, I'd probably say at the moment, Dura mentioned the fact that they can bat themselves out of a tight spot. But also, if they do get it, <laughs> a good start, then they're even more destructive. We've seen them put some big scores on the board before. 189 without loss, for example, against Hornchurch back in 2023. So it's just a team that are very, very difficult to put away. And I think that's due to their depth. Tight bar run to bowl out. That one is hit and hit very well by Rafa. There's six more, is it? Well, threatened to come back from the beyond. I know, that was always sailing across the line. Maximo Rafa. Yeah, good observation by Mr. J. Grant saying he's a very small backlift, but he's got pure whipping bat, bat speed. It is a whip. Now goes walking, but he's going to get the result. There's nobody back here. Quattro Mas. Rafa, a bit of a cameo. Yeah, bit fortunate to get away with that, trying to hit across the ball. More or less on middle stump. Oh, ball this time from Thayer Power and well knocked down the infield. <laughs> Nisar, though, he's been a bit quiet compared to what we'd expect from him. 
Still has four and a half overs to potentially do some damage. A few discussions, but they seem ahead of the clock at the moment. Good to see teams having to hustle a little bit to get get the friendly side of the clock. It seems to be working. And this one is onto the legs of Nisa. And that's money for old rope, really. Maximo. Nisa. Yeah, if he clicks, could be big, big trouble for Balbignon. Six more to the total. Yeah, they're looking at 150 potentially here, Drew. You can see how they win a lot of ball games. Now it wants to get funky. He does play this well. He'll do it when the fine leg's up in the circle. And he's going to get four. So we saw him do that a lot at the ECL this year. He's kind of brave enough to try it any time. And the thing is, he's, he's hoping to get a field chain, so he wants to see that, that field to push back on the boundary to open up a gap somewhere else in the field. Back-to-back -back magicals here in overs five and six. Now that one's hit with power. And Nisha will go maximal. And that's a huge six, really. So he was a bit of a sleeping giant, but he's woken up now. He moves to 23 and six overs in. Drew it out, 89 for two. Thayer Parran comes back to earth with a thud, does take a wicket, but finishes one for 38. 27 came off that over. In fact, we had four boundaries in the fifth. We had five boundaries in the sixth. And now Drew, not in really any trouble at all with Five genuine batters still to come. I mean, Bhatti at nine is, is a bit ridiculous. In my head, Abdul, Abdul can, can smash it around. Shazab, I mean, he's a guy, he can bat in the middle order as well. So, Mitra, we're a confident team. Winning's a habit and they tend to win. Especially here at the domestic level. Tia Garajan to bowl for the first time here in the seventh. First one is on length, and Rafa is going to just tennis it out of the ground like a two-handed forehand. Maximo! Not what he would, would have wanted there. Just a fraction short, and at that pace, Rafa had time to kind of see it and size it up. No over swings, doesn't he, Mohamed Rafa? Mr. Jay Grant saying these are definitely the man for, for Drew this year. Very consistent. I mean, seven half centuries out of eight. In, you know, the highest levels of kind of what we do. Some of the best clubs in Europe. Right away, though, this time, Thea Garaja kind of slowing it up, but pitching it up. I don't, I think he was slowing it up a little bit at the start of the over. It was kind of a, a hittable length. But trying to draw Rafa into a, to being forward. See, no issues as far as the, the back stumping is concerned. That's, that's what you got to do. That was better bowling. Again, let's see. Take the right jump. Really taking the pace off. I was a little bit surprised. We didn't see him get a bowl earlier. They did the job fairly easily Get Selmy. All right, this one is hit away to the leg side. Now he watches it, and it watches, watches it go straight into the hands of the fielder. So again, the kind of lack of pace ends up kind of doing, doing Rafa. And Kumara, and he's been in the game. El Presidente takes the catch. He's seen you straight away, Rafa, who's in a bit of trouble. That's still a good impact innings from him. He'll go for 35 of just 14 balls. And through a third wicket, they're 95 for three. 
And that partnership was 55 in three overs between Mohamed Rafa and Mohamed Nisa. Edged and dropped. Oh, Cameron Amensai swings for the fences. I'm going to come back for a slightly dodgy two. Better throw would have been trouble for Cameron. He's lucky on a couple of accounts there. Oh, well. Captain will be disappointed because this kind of loops to him. Okay, it's not an easy catch. Slightly wrong footed. Gets kind of fingers to it. You can never kind of get a second bite at it. Didn't get enough of a glove on it to slow it down. Into the over there, 97 for three. Really excited for the ECIs next weekend, of course, before we head to Brescia. With 15 teams doing battle over two weeks there. It'll also finish in some internationals, both men's and women's there. Medina Cup back on this ground, actually, in the three-way series featuring the French national team as well as Malta and Belgium. So that'll be a pretty spicy one. Estonia after that. That'll be most of those places. For more information, just keep an eye on the website, europeancricket.com. Okay. Here's Sham Wanakul Soria to bowl the eighth. Starts with a big full toss. It's going to be worked away to the boundary. So Manisa has improved the longer he's batted in this innings. start Wanna Call Saria was hoping for. Wanna Call Saria often he's kind of the spare seamer in the French national team, but he doesn't do much wrong when he's given a chance in the eleven. Good battle this. Now you can see the pace he's got. Wanna call Saria, I should say. But uh this just works this one away for a single. Cameron, Zion. Cameron Ahmed Zion strike. Big heave. All right. Mishandled. That would have been out anyway. Nisa wanting the strike back. You can see they're willing to take risks. Because they have confidence in their long batting right lineup. And they just thought, well, Nisa, I think the risk to, to steal the strike back would have been gone by like a meter. Yeah, meter plus. He does get the strike back as Vitu had to rush the throw from behind the stumps. Now, that's why you want to get back on strike, Nisa. With a stylish square drive, elevated Maximo. He'll step away, but he times the socks off that one. Past 100 and motoring towards the big finish here. A lot of people I saw in the chat think that 140 was pretty unlikely. That was earlier. This is now. This one kind of jams down, but it's going down the leg side. Computer saying 149. Might come down a little bit after that ball. Pretty clearly missing. See if Warnakula Surya can finish well here. All right, Nisa plays his old favourite and he gets it. Just fine with the man there. So he takes something out of nothing. Shame he's going to go for 15 in his over. And drew it 113 for three after eight. Beautiful cricket ground. We know the weather's a little bit hit and miss, to say the least. See the players on the park and draw at the moment. Well, 113. Probably would feel that they're capable of that. But Galbignon, a team that obviously saw them put 140 on the board this morning. Only how the full innings they scored 95. That was against the Vipers. Not too much gone in this series as far as the bats are concerned. Here Garajan is going to bowl slow ball. It's going to get hit down the ground for four first up. What 
cuatro carreras. Quatre. Let's say here. Again, just a fraction short there. I like the idea. Take the pace off, yeah. Draw them forward. Don't let them kind of settle in the crease and, and get a good look at the bounce of the ball. You say it all happens in the ninth. Let's see. Oh, well, that one is hit, and it's hit very, very well by Cameron Amadzai. And the catching off the field has been very, very good in this series as well. And Cameron was involved in a quite interesting incident a few days ago. There was a catch and collision over there that he was involved in. Yeah, that's the catching bush there, isn't it? Again, slow all pitches up, hit hard, hit into the gap, hit for four more. There was more fielding being done off the field at the moment. That's concerning for Balbignon. Jeff has a question about the T20 internationals. And yeah, look, those T20 internationals, Jeff, they are played under kind of the ICC conditions. So it's not quite the same as you see here in the European Cricket Series. It's a case for all the T20s that you'll see on the network. Well, that one is hit really, really well in the slot. Adios, Pelota, and another catch. Well, how often do you see two catches off the field in one over? Now you see it. Maximo. Cameron Amadzai. Well, he's a proper finisher, isn't he? There you go. Well, some of the catching on the field hasn't been that good, to be honest. That's well, been a decent standard here. We've seen some brilliant ones in France. Oh, wow. He's going to fetch that one, but he's put it just as far. Could be a hat trick. Well, <laughs> it'll bounce first, though. I don't think I ever will have seen three catches in one over from a person off the field. Cameron's made such a big difference here, 20 out of seven. So, you know, we could have wrap up, not really yielding much of a slowdown for Balbinho. Nice ball the ninth. Whipped away, straight at the field though this time. Cameron doesn't seem too bothered about retaining the strike. He'll be on strike for the 10th at the end of nine. 140 for three. I'm just in for this innings. You might hear me a little bit later in the day as well, giving Rico a bit of a breather. Rico will be back to take you through the second half of this one. Bowling options. I'm going to sing is the obvious one to bring back. Hi, Paran. This second over was pretty expensive. Let's look at how many runs on the board. In fact, you've got Muna Singer still to the ball. Of course, Rhea still to bowl one. So, looks like they're pretty much ready to go. Going off 150 plus. Yeah, I've played less games than anyone in the series so far, but they'll make it up. They've gone for another bowling option here. Sendil Tempidore is going to bowl the 10th. So, yeah, I just think they want to, want to force Drew to look at something a bit different. Here's over number 10. Yeah, least I want it. Could be gone. Well, I think it will be gone, actually. Might as well keep on running. Nisa was the one I've been tempted to go for. We'll put a new batter on strike. But I suppose the keeper had to hit the stumps if he went to his own end. Check this one out. I think if he throws there, he would have been gone. But he says, I'm going to play the percentages. I'm going to get to the bowler. And Tampi Dore actually did pretty well to, to get in good position behind the stumps. He'd be a good keeping option, judging by that. Gloveless bit of work. Anyway, Amadzai had his chance. In that 10th over, Nisa said, well, if you miss, and you get on your bike and I'll have a go. Cameron run out for 29 off just nine balls. 140 for four. Yeah, Mr. Jay Grant saying Rico's off on a pastries run. Yeah, you've got to watch Rico. 
A bit worried about him in France. There's a few temptations around. Now he loves his red wine. And Nisa faces up. And he just gives it everything he's got. And he's going to slam it. Well, Rico, I hope you're not in the cube. Luckily, the cube looks unattended while oh, Rico's on the pastries run. Maximo! Now, rule number one, protect the equipment. And I think there was no one there to protect the equipment. I didn't hear the sound of any laptops getting smashed, so I think Rico's all right. Another one that... Midore says, make your pace, Nisa, and he does. In fact, that takes him to 50. Half century for Mohamed Nisa, coming up of 17 balls. Didn't fire too much early. The longer he stayed in, the better he's gotten here. And with him potentially having two more innings today, that could be trouble. And he's in form, he's really in form. 150's up for Jerome, make that 153 now. Comment here saying, even without Nabi, everyone's a good hitter. That's what makes Jerome so dangerous. Can't get out of this. And it's the experience there of Nisa to say, no, no, don't you worry. We won't take that single. Give me another crack at him. Even though Abdurrahman Amadzai is a good hitter in his own right. I saw him often batting around about five in the ACL last year. That could be a no ball, you know. You shouldn't see where this bounces. See, the umpires called a no ball now. I feel it probably was off the pitch. Do we get a look at this? Yeah, that's off the pitch. A free hit. And Nisa will just pump it over cover. Maximo! No ball, plus six. It's just a drawn out seven up. And Drew, never mind the 140 or the 150, though. Looking at 160 here, potentially. Now, hit down the ground. Actually, wonder they might have accidentally scored that wrong. So I actually think we're looking at. Let me just do some quick adding up. So I think we're looking at 161, I think is what we're going to end up with. I think that the scorers might have thought they took a single down the ground, but they didn't. So Nisa, for me, he'll end up on 57 and 161 for four. Well, they're chasing a bunch. I probably need, just the top of my head, something like 13 to even keep their point here. So. Dubinho getting a real test here. Well, they did score 140 in the first game. They'll have to score even more to be competitive in this one. Let's go back and have a look. And we thought that might be costly as Munasinger put down Hamza Niaz early. And it was Nabi time, baby. But Nabi time was over a bit too soon. Warner Kula Saria with a really good catch there. Kind of calling off his teammate, yeah, Garajan, to say, I've got this. And he did. Was able to get Nabi. Just 14. And he has said, all right, I'll help you out. Nisa, I'll get you another run there, bouncing off his body. But Nisa, slow to get going, but then kind of settled into his innings. Hamza Niaz, well, he eventually would fall for 21. I've just eight balls, so not wasting too many at all. So, an opportunity to get Rafa first up, and that would actually come back to bite them. Because then Rafa... Actually whack 35 or 14. Have a look at some of these shots though. <laughs> the kind of the helicopter one there. Just very fast wrists from Mohamed Rafa. He's very talented. Nisa then kind of settled into his innings as well. Those two able to put on 55 in just three overs. And that was kind of the, the engine room of the innings for me. Even though Rafa would go for 35, well caught by Kumaran in the deep. Brought out Cameron Amazai, and then he would have a live first ball, and he would also be able to get them to a decent score. 29 off 9. You see them taking some calculated risks at the end. Most of them paid off. And then Nisa, that was probably the shot of the innings right up there. Maybe with the little chopper. Cameron Amazai, late casualty run out, but Nisa just said, Look, I'll take it from here. Thanks for coming. And he would end up striking another three sixes in the over. Just a couple of extras in a one. So they do get 21 after that run out of Amadzai. So that's a pretty good rate of return. 161 for four off the 10 overs. 
Typical Drew scorecard, really, because nobody's wasting balls whatsoever. Niaz and Nabi get starts but can't go on with it. Nisart does go on with it. 57 off 21 for him. 35 for Rafa in an entertaining cameo. Likewise, Cameron Amadzai. But both those players were dropped first ball. Abdurrahman Amadzai, well, good to see him back. But he just did more looking than batting at the end as he didn't have to face the ball. We're likely to see him, I imagine, with the ball in the second innings of this game. Well, maybe some mismanagement of the bowlers when you've got a bowler like Manu Singer that only went for seven, never got brought back. And we had some magical figures in there, didn't we? With Barak Zai going magical. Thayer Parans, second went magical. Tambi Dore started well in the last, but he ended up going magical as well. Kumaran, though, he's impressed me with his ability to swing the ball. He took a wicket first up. Thayer Paran with one. And Thea Garajan had some good moments, but also some rough moments in his one for 35. So... We'll take a break. Rico Fool will be back with you after the break to have a look at the chase. Belbignon will need 162 for the win. They'll need 113 for a point. Should be an interesting one. I'll be watching intently. I'll be back from the studio a little bit later in the day. But for now, Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo for ECN. Enjoy a few minutes off, then back to Dreux. Because Dreux in the field, the hosts in the second half of Match 22 in this European Cricket Series.
this European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello folks and welcome back and a very big thank you to Vinny Sandu in, in HQ and you know what I think he did such a nice job we might even give him another chance a bit later on well let's wait and see as uh, we return to this fixture 161 for four now Babineans we know that they can score big runs we have seen it from them but chasing and up against this uh, Drew attack they're gonna have to be at their best. Uh, good knock there from Mohammed Nisar. I did say that uh, Nisar probably will come good as well. He does. Half century from him. Love the hitting from Rafa as well. And Cameron Amadzai coming in there with 29 quick runs as well. So this uh, Wahid Abdul and the headband bandit or the shoe phone specialist coming on to bowl the first over to try and make life a little bit difficult for the opponents openers here Thibalingam after a fine half century and he'll just work this one or try to work it away he'd be disappointed doesn't get anything on this one so no runs there yeah, Thibalingam remember he himself was in good form He's got to find 62 of uh, 29 deliveries. And he's got good support from the man who's out there with him at the non-strikers then. Jeff Jetsusan as well. So these two, they did put a good partnership together around 89 runs. Can they do the same again? Oh, this one might be a wide, actually. It gets really banged in. Let's just have a look side on. I think it's too high. And I think the umpires have called it a wide here now. And this will just confirm it. Yeah, too high. Abdul, though, just showing that he has got the power to bang the ball in. No, well, a little bit of early movement here from Thivalingam, I think, just uh, helps to put off uh, Mohid Abdul. I'll tell you what, though, Mohid Abdul, he's... Uh, Certainly uh, got our crew talking, him and especially him and Amar Zahir. Both of them have a nice little establishment in the centre of Drew. Well, maybe in the area with his ball is going as it smashes into the France Creek banner. The banner has been destroyed. Well, he is a destroyer and Thiva Lingham has destroyed the banner. He is the banner destroyer. Well, the... Uh, Headband Bandit now meets the banner destroyer, Thiva Lingham. <laughs> and, uh, well, new banners, please. All right, he won't like that, Abdul. Let's see the reply. He goes full. That's going to go up in the air. So this will go all the way as well. Bolle, bolle, bolle. Ginna zona. Shaka lagia. Well, what I was about to tell you is that the bowler, Abdul, and the keeper... Zahir, we've got a fine establishment downtown in Drew. Cheesy us, and uh, we've certainly been going there and having all sorts of things. Crepes, to wraps, to pizzas, to burgers. And, uh, yeah, I wish them well on a new venture. They've only just been open for a month, I was told. And they do some really good food. So if you're in the area, Cheesy us is the place to go. 
Want to go moving around again. This time we'll just take the single, Abdul. Uh, don't go there now because it'll be closed. Uh, when they're playing cricket, we're not open, he says. And uh, Abdul looking a little rigid, isn't he? Looking a little rigid. It's almost like he's got too many layers on. <laughs> he can't move freely. He, lo he lo looks like a, looks like a mummy. That's a nice looking shot. That's going to be four runs as well. So Jatusan also gets the boundary away. That's going to be the end of the first over, and it's not a bad start. It's going to be no 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 nineteen without loss. And nicely played. Uh, Twenty-one matches since the Golden Ball. It was great to hear from Vinny as well. Uh, Vinny, I hope you well. Now, we might give it. What do you reckon, folks? Well, maybe we should ask the computer to put a little poll on. Should we give Vinny another innings in the day or not from HQ? And uh, But, yeah, Vinny enjoying his time off. But uh, he'll be on and off the airways as well from HQ. He might be... Uh, I might allow him to do that. If he can, then he might even give me a day off. That'd be nice. I can have a venture around. Maybe I'll get on the train. You've got the Drew Station right close to where we're staying. It's about, a been told, it's under two hours to get into, into Paris. To Paris. So, if I get a day off, maybe that'll be my venture. All right. 19 off the first. Both batters showing what they can do. He's got a rush, and he gets home. Getting plenty of support as well, has to be said, from the Babylonians bench. In comes Amatai. Smashed! Absolutely smashed. Well, this one may even go to where you don't have to go. Look at the signs over there. You don't want to venture in there. Can he get there without going into the that no-go area? Uh, he's having a look. Yeah, a lot of signs around this, uh, this wooded forest. Do not enter danger. I still want to know what's there. I keep asking the locals and they say, we can't tell you. It's a... Uh, it's a secret, it's a national secret here in Drew. We can't tell you what's lurking in there because you might just give it away. Bears, wolves, what do you reckon? Anyway, what I reckon is that is a blast of a shot when Jatsusan hits his first bound, hits his first uh, four. He said, uh, smashes the ball all over the place. Four and six so far, and that's going to be another. Oh, that is nice. It is naughty, but it's nice. That's six more. Beautiful hitting. So he said a, a four and a six. And now he'll get another six to his name as well. So runs coming quickly here. And the Balbalions are giving Drew a bit of a fight. Maybe you're all enjoying it on the chat as well. Plenty of great action. All right, now he punches his over the ground. It should be one bounce, and how many? It will go to the boundary. There's the fielder. I'm a Nabi, the captain, chases it, but not able to get it back. So what a good shot this is. Gives himself a little bit of room. Uh, goes inside out and gets four more. Nabi can't get there. Quattro Mass. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Hungry for a lot more here. Jatu San. Another tie. In danger of going magical. This is down the ground. He gets enough of it. Good hitting, good batting in the power play. The fielder does get a foot on it. The batters will take a comfortable two. 19 of this one as well. Remember that target. 162 is the target. One thirteen for the point, but they're not thinking about a point here. Babians, remember, got a good win against Zalmi earlier. 
And this one gets played away. Slightly drags it, but still means that this over will go magical. It's a great start here for Balbians. And uh, they move now to 39 without loss. Ahmed Zai does go magical. And just get the feeling here that uh, watching these two batches early as well, I like to see how they deal with a bit of spin. Dre two out of two so far for them. Uh, got a lot of cricket still to play. They're in seventh, but look at Balbinians. As I said, they would go and did go fourth with that win and four points. They're looking to challenge now at the top. Balbinians, it's there. Only got this match here today, so what a great good feel factor it would be for them if they get a win here against Dre. And that's certainly what they're looking to do. Right, uh, looks like the ball is going to be thrown to Kamran Ahmadzai. Now this guy does bowl a heavy ball. Bowls with a bit of pace, likes to bang the ball in, likes to attack the batter. But Thivalingam has dealt with that already. He likes the heavy ball outside the off. Let's see how Yatusan goes about it. Well, he... Attacks it, goes charging at it. Oh, well, the fielder's almost knocking each other over. Oh, no, error. Can he get back? I don't know here. Ooh, from where I am. He wanted to go for the second in the Thibalingam, but Jatu Sans just stays planted. Let's see, he has to turn back and come back. The throws, not a good, I can't take it. And that's the error there. That's the error, is not the best of throws. And Amar Zahir, just not able to take it. But look, that could have been dangerous as they almost knock each other out there. A little bit of a life gets a chance there, doesn't he? And maybe that's a chance maybe to run out Thibalingam. Just remember, he was on four, 14 at the time. Well, that's that heavy length that uh, Amadzai likes the ball. I suppose there's no surprising that the fielder couldn't get the ball in properly. He was, well, he was still shaking like a leaf after nearly getting knocked over. This one might be... Well, hang on a minute. He's liking it and he gets it. He gets the wicket. He's chasing a wide one, Thibalingam. So he's checking that little edge of his bat now. I think this is the bottom of the bat. So Zivalingen will go, and you can see the delight from Amadzai. Yeah, he chases. I mean, it, it's not going to be called a wide, but definitely no footwork from Zivalingen. Look where his body is. And not, I mean, he's, pretty, he's been very good playing these shots, going into the ball, but just reaching for it, gets the edge, a little feather. Catch has been taken there, and nicely done by the cheesy-ass maestro, Amar Zahir. Good work, that's a good catch. And disappointment, I mean, he survives that run out, doesn't he, Thibalingam? But unfortunately, he's not able to add to the 14. And it is Kamran Ahmadzai that gets the breakthrough. And they needed that breakthrough. 44-1. New better, that comes out in Sandil. And he could be gone first ball. He will go first ball. Two in two. As a Sandil Tibidor hits it straight to the fielder. No mistakes there. There's an easy catch. And Usman Khan is certainly not going to drop that. So. Two down now. Still they've got a good start here. But Drew coming back into this golden duck there for Sandil. Now he's running away from Goldie, but Goldie's not going to let you get away from him. Goldie will catch up with you. Two and two, hat-trick chance. Now we have seen a hat-trick, saw one yesterday. Bowler certainly been faring well in the last uh, couple of days. We've seen four wicket hauls now on five occasions, four times yesterday, once today. We saw Zahir uh, that's not that's not the updated one. We have got 12 hat tricks now because remember, Zahir Zahiri took one yesterday, so that's the older hat trick graphic. We have got a newer one. 
because of course he was the hero yesterday taking taking a hat-trick finished with four for 18 there you go just like that we have it updated are we going to see another here two and two for Kamran Amadzai and Manaharan here's the new batter yeah, that's a good delivery I like the way the field is brought in for that hat-trick ball as well just to apply a little bit of pressure on Manaharan they'll all go back now Come around. Back to his mark. Starts wide, doesn't he? Starts wide, then comes in, and that's a good flick. That's a really good flick. Nicely timed. It's a lovely shot. I know that a few other people were enjoying the shot that uh, were played by, I think, Jatusan when he was flicking off the pads and just going and straight down the leg side, and that just helped on the way. So Manaharan, he gets off the mark with six. Uh, end of the over, 46 for two. Very good over from Armadzai. Just that last six lets him down slightly, but only seven from it. Two for seven. Look at the power plays here. Well in front at the moment, but then look what happened. Those four magical overs, four magical overs out of the last six overs helped Drew get to that big score. So we will see... The change up, and here he is, the man I call the Bombay Mix Maestro. It's up in the air, field again across, can he stop it? No. Four runs, Cuatro Mas, Datusan just helping this away, not trying to hit the ball too hard as Barty comes on to bowl. Devish Barty has got a fantastic record on the European cricket. Uh, Networks, the number of wickets and scalps that he's taken. Drew are still big time favourites to win this, but hey, Babylonians are not not shying away from this. This is right. Ooh, that's a tough call for me. Remember, if it hits any of the line, it's not a wide. Let's see this again. I think this comes in, goes right over the line. Not a wide for me. Well, this one gets worked away as well. You don't want to be bowling there. This is the problem that I've seen. That party has a few. Well, they're doing a few stretching exercises there. I tell you what, he couldn't be saying, Ikador stretch, Ikador stretch, and the next ball could have hit him right the head. Well, that would have been a wake up call, wouldn't it? That's not the way to do it. Can you imagine just having a nice little massage, and when you wake up, you wake up in two days' time. What happened there? I don't know. It weren't me. Blame the Grizzly. Down the ground. Should be taken on the bounce. It will be taken on the bounce. Very hard throw, fired in from a man who's fired out, Cameron Armadzai. Yeah, going back to that about Tubbs Barty, he, because he likes to bowl from quite wide and angle the ball in, sometimes he goes, gets too much of an angle and he's on the pads and, and Jitushan has already shown anything on the pads, he's going to whip it away. Manaharan, how will he fare against Tubbs? Goes for the big shot. Misses out on it. This is where he's at his best. Uh, Tabish Barty, when he's angling that ball in, Manus is loving those little flicks off the pads. It's good to be back, Rob. Thank you. Oh, oh. Well, that's two. He's missed out in the off. Just not getting his feet moving. And I think a lot of that is to do with Zahir, who's standing right behind him, breathing down his neck. Into the ground. Once again, no run. So Barty doing what he does. Keeps it nice and tight. Hello to us, boy. We were saying it. good morning to everyone. And uh, saying that uh, his wife grew up in Balbi. They live about uh, five miles away now. Mm. And the over, 56. So just 10 off that one for two. And to join the dots up, didn't he? So it went four wide, four, and then one dot, dot, dot. Can't have dots because that now puts a lot of pressure on Jetsusan. Uh, 
as that rate is over 17 and a half. Can't have dot balls. Shot. Beautiful pick up. This guy, I tell you what, he's playing some great cricket. Uh, Jatusan smashes another one away. Not whacking it, just timing it. Usman Khan, new bowler. Remember, chasing 162 for victory. Okay, there was a fielder out there, but he was moved finer. So the square leg was moved behind square, the over before. So this time, Jatusan puts it in the authentic square position. A little bit of stretching going on there. I think that's Sarcel that have turned up, looking at their looking at the colours there, the the blacks and the yellows. All right, miscue, but a miscue that could go all the way. It will go all the way. Ball, 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 ball. It's over. Has gone six, six, six. It's Calypso style, and Jatusan has brought up his fifty in just thirteen deliveries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaka, shaka. Well, if you like the Caribbean, well, we're bringing you Caribbean-style cricket here. Jatusan leading the way, keeping his team in this contest. And he elects to lead this one and just sneaks it in, that's Usman. That slower delivery. So after all the excitement, to the next ball, ball number four, a dot. 18 off the over so far, though. I mean, if he can get another couple away here, he reduces that, the rate, he comes for it, misses it. So outside the off maybe is where to bowl it to him, slow and outside the off. That's two in that area, both have been missed. Doesn't want to miss this one. Has the opportunity to bring that rate back down to around about the 16 mark after it being about 17 and a half. Is Khan, can he get another dot in or will he go magical? He's probably gone too wide here. Like that though, like the plan, Usman realises where he needs to be, tries to get another dot in. But uh, goes wide, 19 off it, Paul still to go. To Toussaint, wants another on his legs, that's where his power is. He drags his away, he'll just take a single, he'll stay at that as well. So they take 20 off that over, 76 for two at the, the halfway point. And uh, welcome to everybody. It was great to have uh, Vinny talking you through the, the first innings. You know, Vinny, he does like a little bit of Drew. And uh, he didn't quite get the Nabi power, but it was uh, some good batting there. And uh, Mohamed Niaz, nice to see him going out there and scoring a half century. And what about Mohamed Rafa as well? That guy is exciting to watch. Remember, if you like Drew, well, you're going to see Drew on three occasions today. They're playing this and two others. So it's going to be a festival of Drew and a festival of uh, Paris Zalmi as well. Zalmi, of course, are a team that are looking to get their first point on the board as well. Zalmi are taking on Sarcel next. Of course, it was always nice to hear the Sarcel story. It was lovely speaking to their, their well, well, not their captain, but one of their, their key players and key members. And that was Amjad Sandu, who was telling us a lot about the nice things and the, the good things happening in Sarcel with the cricket there. OK, back to Barty. Goes for it and nails it. That's the area where you don't bowl to this guy, Jatusan. Not You don't bowl at the stumps, you don't bowl at his legs. You've got to keep him wide outside off. Keeping his side in this match. He did take the, the rate down a notch. It was 17 and a half, now 16 and a half. Well, that's going to be too wide, but they are taking it on as well. And that's going to be too wide here. It's a, there's the signal from the umpire. Yeah, always a wide, but you can see what Barty's trying to do there. I think he was hoping to get him out of the crease. 
All right, that's up in the air. Doesn't carry to the fielder. They'll take the one, take the single. So just to just gets a short break at the other end. Uh, hello to Dave. Uh, now this boy was saying that he's not far from Balboni. Oh, there's the area outside the off. And Dave just touched on the fact that a lot of players, and you know, even from Drew, are coming in from Paris. And that's one thing, you know, not just here in France where most of these players are travelling. And gone! Goes right across his lines. And that's going to be the end of Jatusan. He knows where his strengths are, but this time being too uh, excited about hitting the ball on the leg side, he gets his wicket or gives his wicket away, goes right across his stumps. And Tavish Barty keeps it nice, full and straight. And he takes his first wicket. And what an important one it is. Look, goes right across, shows all these stumps, and then we'll go. I think this is all about Judge Hussan saying, I know where you're going to try and bowl it. You're going to troll it, try to bowl it outside the off. Yeah, I'm not too powerful there. I'm still going to try and negotiate something uh, by playing on the leg side. Not able to do so. He loses his stumps. Timber. The stumps go over. And that's a huge wicket. Judge Hussan goes for 58 uh, hard work 58 of 19 played some extraordinary shots there but Barty is the man again that does the damage now is an opportunity for Drew really to put the squeeze on I think 85 for 3 I mean they should should get to the 113 but we know that Balbinians the other batters can come out they can give it a whack but is anybody able to stay there and get a good score, a big score on the board and help take him to the the finishing post of 162. Barty, too wide. Should be signalled as a wide. It will be. Uh, it's a new umpires on board. Today is the first time that we've seen Ar Mugum. Who's out there with Vignesh. There's Vignesh at square. And the man in black are doing a very good job. Well bowled and uh, well played as well. Nice bit of cricket. There's Abdul. Fires this one in. Goes for the big shot. Doesn't quite get it right. It'll just be just a single. What a great over this is. From Barty takes the key wicket of Jatusan and only goes just for the 11. So 88 for three, one for 22. Barty, but of course, taking the very big wicket of Jatusan. That's the important role. So remember, they got Kumalan Sivalingam early when he chased a wide one, and well, Amar Zahir took a really good catch. And uh, that was not the bowling of coming Ahmadzai now. They've still got key bowlers to come back. And you can see that they're just having a discussion about which bowler they're going to use here. Uh, looks like that somebody might need a, a little bit of the, the magic spray. You can see that being communicated by Nabi and... A, I think it might be Abdul on the boundary. Now, remember I said Abdul was, was walking around a bit gingerly. Abdul, well, there you go. Well, it's not deodorant. No issue in that area. But Abdul, yeah, he, when he bowled that first time, I said he, he looked like the Momia, didn't he? Didn't look like he was moving around too freely. Well, he's had a little bit of the magic spray now. And uh, maybe that's in preparation for getting him ready to bowl. The next over, he comes inside the 30-yard circle. Just the one man outside on the offside. That's a backward point. Come on, Amadzai will bowl. He's second. And, oh, well, that's a spicy delivery. And I think that's been called a wide. It goes over the head of the bat. Let's have a look at this again. I don't think it's by much. Let's see here again. It, yeah, I mean, he's, I actually think it's not a wide. I actually think that that's probably 
the one for the over without doubt i don't see it as a wide because he ducks underneath it and I remember you give this with a batter standing upright in his crease and i think if he's standing upright in the crease not a wide Hamadzai wants to make a change to the field let's see what he's doing here so he's putting it's like he's setting up uh, the batter for a short ball so the fine leg goes back on the 45 you've got a backward point back you've got third man back and a quick fast delivery 89 for three Amadzai with the ball it's got two for eight so far already remember was on a hat trick Manoharan and Kumaran are the batters that are out there Oh, well bowled, quick delivery, well, are they going to get there, he shies and oh, if he hits, he's gone, he's gone for all money. A big shy at the stumps. It's that heavy ball again from coming Ahmadzai, now he's got to be careful because remember, yes, there was a wide for a short one anyway, so that one is okay with the height and there comes the throw, they say, right, let's go. And then if he hit, if Amadai hits the target here, it's Adios, but he misses. Not by much, you can see. All right, they rotate the strike. Let's see how Sanjeevan Kumran deals with Amadai. Well, now this one, I think, oh, I'd like to see this side on. I'd like to see this side on because he banked it in short again. Is this one over the shoulder? If it's over the shoulder, this one should be a noe. Let's see. Keep it on that banner. That banner's a good sign, the top of the banner. He does go back. And, yeah, that, if for me, that's too high. That should be a no ball. That's the second one. That's the second in the over. This has to be called a no. No, it. It's too high. It's over the shoulder. It's got to be a no ball. Yeah, there you go. They get it right. That's good work. Good work from the umpires. And that's well done by Shishos, the third umpire who communicates that on field free hit then hits it well and that's going to be Saiz Guerreras as this time Gumman Amadzai is forced to go fuller but he goes too full and that's a delightful shot from Sajib and Kumran he doesn't get carried away because of the free hit doesn't try to hit it too hard doesn't move around all over the place just times it to perfection this one now is in the gap. That's going to be for six and four all together now. Hungry for more. Yeah, we are hungry for more on this Peacock Friday. There's the 100 comes up. 101 for three. And when he's not banging it in short, then the batters are having a bit of a field day. Ay, 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 what a shot. Bravo, bravo, ooh la la la. Liking this, six more. And uh, Sanjeev and Kumaran comes to life. That is the best of the lot. Is this your HCL shot of the day? Oh, that oozed class. Six runs and they liked it. I liked it. We all liked it. Drew, they didn't like it. Nah, they didn't like it. But if you like cricket, you love that shot. If you're a true supporter, you don't like it. All right, well, after that rate was taken up, after a great over there by Usman Bharti and Usman Khan, well, he's gone back to a round of realistic. And now he's going to just give his wicket away. And Nabi takes the catch. Oh, what an anti-climax. What a way to go. So Jeevan Kumaran after playing some lovely shots. He just tries to you see what he tries to do here. Just tries to clip it off his pad. But unfortunately, he doesn't go behind square. He goes to square. Nabi, who's, well, he's had a few woes with his catching. But he doesn't make a mistake there. So just as Sajeevan Kumaran gets them all excited after playing 6-4-6, six, six, he then goes and gives his wicket away right at the end. And right at the end of that over, so 107 for four. This is what's coming up next. Paris Army, they'll be hoping 
that they can, well, at least get something on the board. It's a 0-3 and three for them and no points to show for. They're up against CSPT. Sassel now, Sassel, well led by Akib Shamshad. I like what he's been doing. Wakas Bashir has got a half century to name. Uh, Amjad Sandu, the left-hander, a very senior, knowledgeable player. He played beautifully the other day as well when we saw them. So they've certainly got plenty of talent. And keep an eye out for something like uh, Zukumain Munawar as well. They're a team that have got a lot of depth in their batting. And I can see them going far in this series. Okay. Full toss, but gets him. Slower ball. That's a really clever delivery. As it comes out of the hand, well, he's tricked me, hasn't he? I'm thinking full toss coming up here. But this one dips beautifully. Usman Khan, and uh, I know that Vinny likes watching Usman bowl because he says he bowls that slow ball and he can't pick it. Well, I didn't pick it. The batter didn't pick it. And he's got the stump. So we've just seen two in two. Team Hadrick coming up here. Usman gets the wicket. Well bowled. Totally out foxes the batter. So Mohaharan, he will go as well. He never really got going. Just the 8 of 10 for him. Bowled beautifully by Usman. So Mohaharan will go. So that means now... You've got two new batters out there. Sanjeev Kumaran after playing a blistering few shots. And that one will go all the way. Great attempt. Well, we've already seen one banner being ripped apart. Well, that one, let's play cricket, is stronger. You know why? Because it's stronger put together. It's a well, good shot. Great effort out there from the fielder. I'm not sure who that's out there. I think that might be Amadzai. And that's uh, Abdurrahman. Amadzai, he can't get to it, it flies past him. Six runs. A nice shot there for Wanakula Suriya. Slower delivery, carves it away, that's going to be four more. Six and four, we keep on saying it, well, we're hungry for more. We're hungry for more, more, more. Oh yeah, give me more, more, more. I'll take some of that. The action here in France, absolutely breathtaking here at the moment. So, the point has been salvaged. Now, can they do what? Manny will feel it is still possible at going at 80 and over and get the victory against Drew. Wide, I think. Yeah, called. You got nothing to lose. That's that slow ball, though, from Usman. You got nothing to lose. You might as well have a go. You might as well have a go. You've already salvaged the point. Hits his pretty well, Fielder coming in, doesn't quite carry. So it'll just be a single. So Wanakul Surya now hands the strike to Barak Zai. Who hits it well and clears the Fielder, does he? Yeah, good effort. A really good effort there from Mohamed Nisar. He takes off, he gets a hand to it, but just can't get enough uh, power to get that ball back in the field of play. Let's watch this again. It's a brilliant effort. Really good effort, but yeah, just the power of the ball not allowing him to get it back in the field of play. Six runs for Badak Zai. And Fielder's got to make the stop, Das. Gets a good throw in. They'll take the single. And uh, action-packed match this between these two. Uh, the Belvinians certainly not giving this up yet. 126 for five. That's the end of the eight overs there. Needing to go at 18 there. 36 of 12. 36 of 12. Listen to the noise from Belvinians. They really are supporting these guys. And an exciting match. Very exciting match. All right. So they're saving Abdul. I wonder if Abdul will buy him. We know he's got a bit of an injury. He set a magic spray. So they will go to Abdul Ramadzai, who 
Gets worked away. I don't think this has got the legs to go to the boundary. They're going to have to run hard here. They decide not to take on the throw. It'll just be a single. Just a single. Amatai, remember, went magical when he bowled over number two. Thirty-five off eleven, and wide ball. So that's a result. Don't mind that though for Amadai. You can see that he's trying to keep the ball out of the the natural swing zone from Horan Kulasuriya, who seems to be moving around a fair bit. Look, he likes to take a jump across. There he goes. Uh, that one. Uh, he's he's hit wicket. He's hit wicket. He is hit wicket. We don't often see this, but he's gone too far back. And I reckon he's looking at the leg sti stick that's gone back. I reckon he's walked onto his own stumps here. Uh, that's disaster. Wanakul Turiya, just see so what's it. Yeah, look, he takes a step back and he knows straight away that he's done it because he feels it. That's really unfortunate. He goes all the way back, but too far back. And it's the... The left leg as he goes back that goes onto the stumps. So Wanakul Suriya is out in a what becoming not that rare these days on the European Cricket Network. We've seen it a few times. So Wanakul Suriya hit wicket for 11. And uh, well, Abdul Rumin Ahmadzai gets credited with that one. New batter comes in. And he plays a lovely shot for four. They're not giving this up. It's the captain, KG. KG Vitu plays this one away. Can they take it to the last and keep it realistic? At the moment, it's 30 in nine. 30 in nine. Up in the air and just a single. Shouts to catch it. Hamza Niaz just happy to stop the ball getting past him. Tension in the air here at the Drua Cricket Ground. Short, but scuffs it again. They'll take one, just the one. This becomes a very big delivery now. Very big delivery. The last one of this, the ninth over. It's been a good over from Ahmed Zai. Just seven from it. It's taken a wicket. That gets played away. They've got to try and push here. They go one. Think about two. And decide against it. It will only be one. So we're going to have, could be, a magical finish here. 26 needed. Then 26. No, make that 27. 27 needed off the last. 26 will give us a goal and a ball. We won't mind that either. 135 for six. Abdurum Amadzai balls a very good over there. Just losing wickets at the wrong time. Come on, Amadzai, three for 25. Yeah, just look at the way they've lost those wickets. I think the key one has to be that one that just uh, from Jetsu. Uh, yeah. Death of Sue, because he just flicked it right into the, the hands of the fielder. He'll be disappointed the way that he goes. Then, of course, don't forget the one where Kamran just uh, guided the ball into the hands of Nabi when he was looking good. Yeah, we'll take the wide. All right. 27 does become 26. And Nisar bowling, so they haven't gone back to Wahid Abdul. Goes for it and he will get it. Six runs. Ball. 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 Boom. 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 Shaka. Lagia. Eo. Eo. Ooh la la la. Listen to the noise. Babylonians. They still believe in. They got this. They believe they can do this. Twenty or five. Twenty or five. Uh. Well, I could tell you a six, but they just check it. Oh, this is a wide. Oh, it's been called. It's been called. Let's have a look at this again. Nisar is not happy about it. It gets called. Let's see. 
No, that's not a wide. Ay, ay, ay. Could that be important? Gets played. Will they try and take on the two? They take one. You've got to be brave a little bit here as well. 18 of four. 18 of four. Got to be looking for a boundary here, Exile. Goes for it. And he will nail it. Oh, he will nail it. It will go for six. Game on here. The noise levels around the ground are incredible. The locals don't want to look. Because, of course, this is the home of Drew. They don't want to look. Balmy Neons, they're having a party here. That one gets whacked out of the ground. 12 off three. 12 off three. Remember, they needed 27 of the last. 12 off three. 150 comes up with that big hit. Goes for it, and he gets it. Six more. Jabberdas batting. What a match. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Let's play cricket. The European Cricket Network sending, well, shivers around the globe. What are we seeing here? Six in two. Six in two. The over has gone for 21 already. One big hit will do it. The European Cricket Network here in France. Cricket ball gets played out. Do they run? They do. Would you have run? I don't know. Would I have run? Both batters are supposed to capable of hitting it. Can the captain? Can the captain be the hero? Can the captain be a hero? Five needed. Four takes us to a golden ball. Four would take us to a golden ball. Oh, would you run that one? Or would you have left Alexander strike? Nisar. Bolt it. It gets hit. They're going to do it. They do it. Incredible. We've seen the chase of 162. Just look at this. Oh, they've gone balmy. They've gone balmy. The balmy neons. Forget the balmy neons. They're the balmy neons. They can't believe it. You'd think they won the final, but they haven't. But they have beaten Drew. They've beaten Drew in their home ground. They've achieved an incredible chase. 163. They have won. There is shock around the ground. The locals can't believe it. Drew beaten in an incredible run chase. Balbinian's doing it, and it is their captain who hits the ball for six. Incredible. Well, folks, how about that? I told you all the time, the European Cricket Network is a frenzy of entertainment, action, and drama. And what drama we've seen. Quite incredible. Needing 27 of the last. They get 28. Nisar was brought on to have a ball, and he gets smashed for 28. Well, you think they just won the final. You would think they were picking up the trophy. They weren't. But Mohamed Nissar, oh dear. He, well, let's just say he's made 57. And, well, make that, uh, I suppose he's in credit, but he gave 28 away. Quite an exceptional match. Quite incredible. What's coming up next is Parizami taking on Sarcells. Well, Parizami will be hoping that they have something to celebrate as well. But that is just quite an extraordinary match. A chase of 161. What a chase. And Balbi Neons are the team that do it. Uh, just incredible. Incredible. They're hitting. They just never gave up. Don't forget that at one point, I mean, on average, that uh, the required rate stayed about 17. At one point, it got to around 20. But they did it, and they did it in style. And the reason they did it is the badgers went out there, and they believed. Nobody chewed up any deliveries. It's an incredible, incredible win. Let's take a look at these incredible highlights. So they didn't, they didn't shy away from it, did they? I mean, Divalingam, we know that he's dangerous. He played some lovely shots early on. But uh, Jetsu San, he was just amazing. I mean, we know that he does like to dominantly play on the leg side. 
to square leg mid wicket is his go to areas. Now, this one, it could have been out. The throw comes in, and unfortunately, Zahir doesn't have the ball. So, even though he does take the barrels off, batter couldn't get in. <coughs> Beg your pardon, got a, a frog in my throat. Well, I am in France, I suppose, but also, well, after that excitement, it's a good job. I only did just half the match because I think I would have definitely lost my voice. That one gets played all the way to the boundary. They never gave up. And the other thing I liked about it is the support was always there. Now, that one was a key one when, uh, well, he just goes all the way across to Toussaint and gets bowled. But the next batters that came out just kept on firing. Now, that was cheeky, wasn't it? How important was that? All right. He could have got out, but he does get the run. It makes all the difference at the end. Every batter that came out there just went for their shots. And, the, all right, Senna Dilt, he was out very first ball. He wasn't able to go. Now, that one could have been the key moment, couldn't it? When Nabi takes the catch of Kumaran when he was looking good. That was an outstanding slow delivery from uh, Usama to get Mahaharan. And then he thought, well, OK, is that going to be it? Because that run rate had climbed up to over 20. It was at Magicals. But then we did see a magical over when the ball was smashed all over the place, took the rate back down to 17. But then that happened, hit wicket, and you thought, well, with uh, Juan Akulasaria giving his wicket away, it handed, well, we thought maybe the match back to Drew, but they did not give up. They kept on going, they kept on pumping, and the support from the Balbilians on the, the bench just kept and came. I gotta say, a couple of tight calls there on the wide, and maybe those ones gonna be pretty crucial. But one thing you will say is that they're very consistent with that, very consistent with it. So if they're consistent, they can't argue too much, and uh, Nissar probably will argue, because there's that extra ball right there at the end that had to be bowled, that got hit for six. And look at the celebrations there. It's almost like they've won the final. It was quite incredible. Absolutely fantastic. What a win. What a sight. And, uh, well, Balbians became absolutely barbaric as they win that, as the celebrations went wild. They certainly did. And uh, let's have a quick look at that scorecard. Dutusan, he gave them the start that they needed, even though uh, Thibalingam, he got the failure. And then there was the first water there for Cindy Deal. But look. If you're going to get out of the way, get out of the way quickly. That's what he did. Mahaharan did play a couple of good shots before he departed. Kumaran, it looked like he was going to be their hero before he chipped one to Nabi. But then Barakzai, don't forget some of the big hitting he did. And then right at the end there, when I thought maybe he'd turn away the single uh, because Vitu wasn't the one who was smashing the ball big. He then gets on strike and he hits the ball for six to get the win. Three wickets there for Kumaran Ahmadzai. And you saw a wicket apiece there. For Abdulwan Amadzai as well, he bowled very well. That uh, last over he bowled was good. Tabish Bharti is always going to be good. But then right at the end, Mohammed Nisar bowling that over because Abdul obviously has got an injury and couldn't bowl it. It didn't go to plan. It goes for 28. Victory for the Balminians. What a wonderful match that was. And it's going to be right up there as one of the top run chases. 27 was required of the last and they do it. They hit 28 to win the match, 163 to 161. Well, we've got a break coming up of just under 20 minutes, and it's going to be Zalmi that are going to be taking on Sarcel. The first time we're going to see them in action. I'm Rico Full. You're watching the European Cricket Network. Thank you to Vinny Sandu as well for doing the first innings of that one. And we'll be back, like I say, in around about 18 minutes' time to talk you through the next match, match number 23 coming up and uh, it's going to be Paris Army taking on Sarsales. Hasta pronto!
This European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello viewers and welcome back as we get set for match number 23 here in France at this beautiful cricket ground in Dreux. It's time for us to welcome back Sarcel. Now Sarcel from the Mayor of Sarcel, this is a huge area in France and it was nice to see the other day that the Sarcel guys here telling us a lot about the cricket that's happening in that area. A lot of junior activity, a lot of women's cricket. Remember we heard about so many junior camps, they do up to between 30 to 40 camps during the year, the summer camps as well, and also winter camps. So it's nice to see that in a lot of parts of France that cricket is a growing f sport. And Sarcel, they didn't let their region down, did they? They played some really good cricket. They have a two and one record, and they'll be looking themselves to get good victories here today and take them to the top of the standings as well. They're up against Paris Zalmi. Now we know all about... Hello viewers and welcome back as we get set. And they'll be looking themselves to get good victories here today and take them to the top of the standings as well. They're up against Paris Zalmi. Now we know all about Zalmi. They've played three, lost three, but not only have they lost, they've lost badly. They haven't managed to pick up a point yet. Can they really shine this time around? Well, their captain, Numan uh, Amjad, will be hoping that they can. But I think that Akib Samshad, the captain of Sarcel, will be hoping that his team can get the better of Zalmi as well. Let's join the two captains and the tournament referee for the all-important coin toss. Sarcel to call. Heads. Heads is the call. And it's a uh, tail. We're going to bear first. Hello and welcome back to the start of match number 23. What a great match that last one was when we saw a 162 chase. Quite incredible where the scenes around the ground are absolutely electrifying. Great win for Balbians there over the home side Drew. Next up though, Paris Zalmi. They're looking for their first win. They're hoping that they will have something to cheer up about as well. Well, we did see the coin toss and of course the news from the middle that Zalmi, this time their captain Numan Amjad decided they will have a bat first. Batting has been their issues, but I like the move from him. He's basically saying to his boys, look, when the teams have been out there batting, they've piled on the runs against us. It ain't working. Let's try something different. So he's going to have a bat first. I like to see a change. I like to see maybe someone like Jarvid, who batted really well late on in the innings last time for them, maybe go up the middle, uh, the top of the order there. Faisal batted well as well. But they know they're up against a good team. So I said, oh, last time we saw them, they were in great form. A two and one record from them so far. They're a team that have some depth in their batting. Some of the teams that we've seen so far, we've talked about them and said, but maybe the depth hasn't been there. Maybe the middle order doesn't click. Well, Sarcel showed that they can. A number of their batters played really well. I'm very excited to see their captain in action again, Akib Shamshad. He's a big, powerful hitter of the ball. But someone like Munawar can come out there and also Sandu to do a job for them. I think, once again, this could be an exciting match. And maybe Zalmi by batting first. Maybe their luck is about to change here as well. Well, we're all excited. There's a big buzz around the ground and maybe that excitement will continue into this match as well. Join me back in the queue for the first ball. Hello everyone and welcome back. Well, I've had my tablets. I'm okay. I've calmed down now. And how are you all after that match? That was quite incredible. What a match and uh, the atmosphere. I can tell you, I don't think I quite ever remember an atmosphere like what we just experienced we'll probably have to go to some of the scenes that we see in Kartama it was quite incredible what a good win that was for Balmilians getting the win over Drew and the first loss for Drew in this series okay team that certainly could do with a win are out there now that's Paris Army uh, taking on Sarcells and as I said there in that intro I do believe it's a good idea go out there have a bat first and see if that changes uh, the way things are going they're going to go with Darwood Amadai up first and uh, come up Patel who plays some nice shots is out there with him they're the two openers 75 percent to 25 percent uh Sarcel's, uh favorites to go on to win this and uh, he saw some good good victories and good matches from sarso remember they almost pulled off a great chase themselves when they were taking on mitri mitri scoring 152 and Sarcel was just falling some six runs short but they then went to winning ways with a, a chase of 128 against the Greeny Vipers, and then they defended 121, only just against the Paris Knight Riders to bring up their second victory. With the ball first up, it's going to be Jabarali who's bowling 
to Dawood Ahmadzai. Oh, starts off with a quite a wide delivery. It's definitely wide, but let's have a look at the height on this as well. I think that's why the umpires uh, are calling the wide now. Let's see the height on this. So, oh, I think that's too high. And I think that's too high. Let's just look at the side view of this one more time. I think this one, I think this one has to be, for me, a no ball. Let's look at the height on it. Yeah, that's definitely a no-y for me. And I am not seeing anything from the umpires. And it's coming through. I think it's coming through now. I think you'll see that the no ball should be called. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, good work once again. No ball called. And also the one for the over signal to the batter. So this is umpire Shushar, who's out there with Arugum. Free hit. Hits it pretty well. Fielder comes across and makes a stop. Will take, take the single. Plenty of bodies coming in to back up. Sarcells with the, the black and uh, the the yellow of course all of these kids is amjad sandu and his company done all the, the kits for all the teams it's nicely nicely playable there yes speak of the man makes a stop Amjad sandu liked what he what he bought with the bat as well last time we saw him scored a fine 38 of 17. so a good solid left-hander it's got Plenty of experience and knowledge. Euro King Sports. You can see his company and he sponsored all the kits for all the teams in this European cricket series. Oh, good delivery. That's so close. Look at the late movement on this as well. Yeah, well, you can see that uh, Bashir can't believe this hasn't taken the stumps. It's a very good delivery. And the movement on this is really late as well. Okay, Ali. Oh, same again, same delivery, and almost close to taking the stumps there. So, Ramadzai well, is playing and missing, and lucky still to have his stumps in place. But they're all dot balls. So Jabber Ali. Sometimes it's not just about the wickets; it's about the economy rate. Right? The economy is being good. Yeah, I was talking to to Amjad Sandu, of course, the other day, and uh, he said to me that his dream is to grow cricket in France in any way that he can help. He wants to. All right, well, that'll do. He gets a bit of battle, and I think this might go all the way. He's given us four. I'd like to see this again. I thought it may have flown over the rope. See it again. If it's a good, solid strike, this time it gets bad onto it. Let's see where this ends up. Yeah, one bounce for Cuatro Carreras. Very close to going all the way. Bonjour, Terry Richmond. How are you? I hope you're all well. And I hope you're enjoying the action here. Well, how can you not? It's been tremendous. Oh, well, that's been clobbered. And uh, Jabber Ali starts what probably would have been a four, but... Well, he's got to put a pound in the kitty because it's a drop catch. Yeah, it comes out to it at him pretty quickly. With the last bit of action to end the over. And seven without loss. This is uh, some of the places that we'll be going to in 2024. We've talked a lot about the lead up to the ECC, um, which is the European Cricket Championship, one of our stellar events. After that, We'll go to Malta. Normally we'd go to Malta uh, earlier on in, in the year, but uh, I know that the Malta, the ground there, is uh, having a bit of a revamp. A lot of work happening there at the Marsa International Cricket Ground. So looking forward to seeing that looking pretty splendid, I'm sure, by then. 
And then we also have some action happening in Spain as well before we go back to the Karma over for the European Cricket Championships for the women's. That will be bigger and better. And talking about big, well, that's pretty big as well. That will go all the way. Six runs. Shaba, Shaba, Manas, Riban. That young lady will help fetch the Grizzly for us. Thank you very much. It's a nice shot. And all right. Come on, Patel. He did play some nice shots in the earlier match. Scored 15 of 7 before Balagzai got him out. And that's caught, taken. Well, there he is in his trademark celebration. Amjad Sandu takes the catch. You see, some Sandus are still playing. And well, I'm not sure what the celebration there was. It was almost like he said, come on, sign the check. I don't know if we got all of that, but it's a good catch. Diving forward, they're the hardest ones to take. And there he goes, come on, give me some love, he says, give me some love. Well, they do give him some love. The only person who doesn't is Patel, because he goes. So, played one nice shot for six, and then he gets out the very next ball. Seven, Patel goes for seven or three, doesn't chew up too many deliveries. Sandu takes a good sharp catch diving forward of the bowling of Hussein. A new batter takes a good look around, and from the colour of the helmet, I can tell with Karim Shazad, another guy who batted well. I think he was uh, the high scorer in the earlier contest. He worked this one away. He had a few issues with his foot. Looks like he's recovered. Yeah, scored 20 or 14 deliveries. Let's have a look at uh, Sarcells, some of the top players, or Wakas Bashir, 62 and 26. And uh, Azukain Munawa, 38 of 17 in when they almost got to the 153 in that run chase. Edge, but flies away. It's going to be a lucky four runs for Ahmed Zai. Hasn't really hit one where he's wanted it to go at the moment, it has to be said, Ahmed Zai. And maybe he's just playing himself in. That's the second one that he slides in that area. And uh, so, yeah, they got close to a run chase again. Mitri then against the Greeny Vipers. They chased, chased 128, and it was Akib Shamshad, the captain, who smashed 33 of 12. And got some good support there from Amir Ashgar. He got uh, into the 20s, 22 not out of 6. And in the last match, it was uh, Amjad Sandu, the man who just took a really good catch. There we go again, same areas. They've got to think about protecting that area now, especially to, to Ahmad Zai. It's three shots he's played, and all of them he's managed to slice in that area. He's no idea what he's doing, by the way. He's not playing these shots. He's just getting a, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of luck. He's got a lot of swirt there. Yeah, Amjad Sandu, 38-17, and... Uh, he was the main contributor helping him get to 121, which proved to be enough to get a win against the Paris Night Riders. Okay, they still don't make a change in the field to keep it as it is. And they don't need to make a change in the field. That is a really good delivery. Really good. Too good for Amadzai. Amadzai, while he was out and while he was getting some width, he was swinging and getting lucky, but he's got no answer to this. This is quality. This is top draw from the bowler. What a great ball. Let's great delivery. <laughs> great delivery. I'd love to see that again, you know. Zahir Hussain. Let's see it again. And just see what this ball does. Maybe we can slow it down a little bit. Why don't we can slow this down? Yeah, so it's a slow-mo. Watch this one. It's an absolute jaffer. Yeah, absolute jaffer. I think that's... Has that broken the bail? Has it broken the bail? Let's see. I thought I saw the bail in two bits here. And, yeah, that's a, that bail is broken. That's a bail breaker. Well, we've seen a... A banner breaker. Now we've seen a, a bail breaker. Beautiful ball. 
It was also the end of the over. 22 for two. So two wickets in the over from Zahir. Also went for 15, though. It's worth pointing out. But two for 15. Yeah, you take that. A wicket every seven and a half runs. And they'll go back to Jabber Alley. Too full, full toss, but he has got protection out there. Remember Jabba, you did bowl one. He, I think it was his maybe his first or second delivery, which was a no ball too high. So he's he's on a warning already. If he bowls it again, he'll be on his final. All right, Newman Amjad, the captain, has joined Krum Shazad. He gets another high one. Beautifully timed, and he will get four. It's just a gentle punch down the ground. Trying to get the York again, I think, Jabber Ali. But just a little bit too full. And great effort there from Amjad Sandhu. Doesn't make the stop. And it's too much to do for the fielder coming across from long off to try and stop it that's Ashkar changing the field now two men straight and that's not a good delivery it's Gundy he's down the leg side and Numan Amjad the national team captain's not going to have too many problems putting that away it's not a good over so far this uh, the second one from Jabarali he's bowled literally two full tosses and now one Gundy ball down the leg side which just needs a little tickle on it and that's uh, all that's required to send that to the boundary. Catch field. Chase hard. Outfield's been freshly caught. And they do catch up with it. I'm trying to again. Chase it. Oh, there. Oh, that is so unlucky. Oh, cue the music. Cue the music for another ECN special. I'm done. Sandu chases it and throws the ball in. Oh, only on the European Cricket Network. This is the issue sometimes with these artificial pitches. It's slightly raised. It, they'll take an easy. Do ya, do ya. Or kuchni hona. Chal easy. Chal re. Oi, chal aja, aja, aja. Tenu hoge, tenu hoge. Boom, boom. All right, three, a lucky three. Now, well, it could be three and out. It could be the lucky three for the fielding side. Sandu, under it, takes the catch. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm dead. Sandu salutes the crowd. Oh, you couldn't write it. You could not write it, could you? Well, remember the ball before. The ball before was just two. It hits the edge of the pitch, so the batters take three. So Shazad, who should never have been on strike, goes on strike. And then the next ball is a wicket. And it has been taken, the catch, the second in the match by Amjad Sandhu. It's a funny old game, isn't it? It's a funny old game. Sandhu takes his second catch, and that's going to be the end of Shazad. And just watching the time here, new batter that's coming out. He waits until Shazad literally comes all the way off the field. Clock is ticking here. Oh, jaldi kar, jaldi kar. Oh, clock hega na clock. 60 seconds. Paja, paja, jaldi, jaldi, jaldi. Well, he doesn't want to give five penalty runs away. Now he takes guard. The clock is still ticking here. I like to know how we run the time here because he takes an age to get out there. Well, keep an eye on the umpire. Does he make it in time? I reckon only just, you know. All right, Jabber Ali. Yeah. We're taking him on. Should get there. Yeah, they will get there. Quick running. And that will be the end of the over. So power play score, 35-3. Numan Amjad, 11, not out the captain. He's joined out there by Faisal. I like the batting of Safi Faisal. I think he's a good player. He bowled well as well. It's uh, the breakdown of the overs, 7, 15 and 13. Just got to keep going here, Paris Army. And remember, they haven't batted well. They haven't been able to 
score good runs. The match earlier today, they were bowled out for 73, chasing 140 against the Balbinians. Balbinians went on to win by 67. What a morning they've had. Two wins out of two. 140 that they defended, and then they chased 162. What a match. Match number 22. Certainly will remember that for a long time. Just a look at the field setting here. All right, that's been lofted pretty well by Safi Faisal. Good shot. And it just ends up on the border of that fence, which we are not allowed to go past because there's danger signs all around. Danger, do not enter. Yusuf Sai, the bowler here. He's got the field that can, of course, now be spread. Five bodies can go out, and you can see they're wasting no time putting three of them on the leg side here. All right, Miss Q. And the bowler wants it himself, and he'll take it. Randy. Randy Mirakachua, Yusuf Zai says, and you can see that Amjad Sandu, he wanted it himself. I want it. I want to make sure. Look, he calls it early. So after being smashed with a big six, uh, Safi Faisal skies it in the air. Oh, and well, there you go. Leave it to me. And yay, 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 he says, as he gets a little fist bump for delight. So Yusuf Zai sends back another. And similarly to Kamal Patel, and Safi Faisal is seven of three as well. And caught and bowled. And Yusuf Zai picks up. He's first. That's well hit. And that's four runs. Interesting sound off the bat. It's a good looking shot. Well timed, well placed. And Suleiman Khan gets a little bit of width and fires it away. What I'm seeing here from Zalmi is the batters, all the batters so far, they have come out and they've played some shots. I suppose the only one is uh, Karim Shazad. Didn't quite get, get things away, but didn't chew up too many deliveries. As this is another one that's going to test the field, and it will go for four. So, two fours from Suleiman Khan. He also played some nice shots in the loss earlier. A good effort from the fielder, but uh, not able to keep it in the field of play. So, they're out there, they're playing shots. But somebody needs to stick around, somebody needs to go in and score. Score a big score. And this is going to be another four. So three in three. So Suleiman Khan pumping the boundaries and uh, keeping Zalmi on course for a good score. They're going to be looking here at the moment. I wonder if the expected score agrees for me. I think we've got to be looking about 130 here. It's saying 118 at the moment. This over's gone six wicket, four, four, four. 18 from it, with the ball to go. Unless there's an error, it should just be a single. So 19 off the over from Yusuf Zai. 50 also comes up, 54 for four. Right, two batters having a chat, Numan Amjad. He's probably saying to Suleiman Khan, all right, look, you've made a start. Now, keep going the way you're going, but no, you know, no silly shots. Nothing silly. Nothing silly. Give me company. Let's build a partnership. Let's try and get to this 125-plus score and put a little pressure on Sarcel, who we do know back deep. And I keep Shamshad making a change he wants to maybe go for a bit of spin so Usman Malik gets given the ball and he well if anybody can get there probably not I think he's going to drop well short yeah it does he got everybody back on the boundary 
on the leg side to to Malik. Square leg mid wicket and long on, so nobody's able to get there. I've also got somebody on the 45 inside the circle. Sweeper on the offside and long off his back as well. And yeah, the need to wicket keeper needs a lid if he's standing up. So I'll oh, be waiting for the lid to go out there. I've already told people that it is National Garlic Day today. And uh, also, it's uh, Sylvester the Cat's birthday. We first made an appearance on our screens in 1945. That's when Sylvester was introduced to the world. Spends most of his time chasing Tweety. Sylvester the Cat, a favourite for a lot of people. All right, keeper just getting the helmet adjusted. He's ready to go. I wonder if they weren't expecting a bit of spin here from Usman and Malik. That's why the lid wasn't ready. But anyway, he's got it on now. All right, that's a good shot straight down the ground. And oh, that will just another one that comes into the comedy box. That's the second one. In fact, the third one, I think one came in here when Vinny was doing the, the commentary. I wasn't around at the moment. I must admit, I got a bit worried because I wasn't here and I some of the, the equipment was still set up. And I thought, uh-oh. And that has been launched. Oh, that is huge. That is six on any ground. And what a good catch that is. Well, who's that out there? And somebody who's uh, has got all the thermals on and the big thick bomber jacket takes a really good catch I guess we'll never know that was absolutely crunch so no one I'm Judd remember we did score see him score a 50 when we saw him the last time and this one is just not quite as full yeah scored 51 of 27 when they were chasing that huge 183 and that present 11 set them they got to 111 he was the only batter to score any runs so while he's out there and he's got someone Khan who started with some boundaries as well someone swings and misses at this he doesn't use his feet does he he's got to get that foot to come across it's just a hoik a hoik in hope mm, take it by Wakaz Bashir behind the stumps who doesn't need to take the bells off, especially when the knee and the foot is planted behind the line by the batter. Flighted and in the same areas again, outside the off, swing and a miss. Not a wide. Behave yourself, it's not a wide. Uh, end of the over. Is it the end of the over? Or is there one to come? And I think that is the end of the over, just the system just a little bit behind. 68 for four. So five overs now completed as I use the opportunity to welcome you all to, well, a little grey, a little bit of chilly day here in France, especially here in Europe. But the main thing is no rain. That's good. And we enjoyed the cricket. And haven't we enjoyed the cricket? What a day we've had so far. What about that win? from Barry Lienz was absolutely fantastic. I think that's a match that a lot of people will be talking about for a very long time. And if for any reason you missed it, maybe you're late coming in on this Peacock Friday, go back and watch match number 22. Quite incredible. Drew, 161, thanks to Mohamed Nisar's 57 of 21. Mohamed Rafa scored 35 and Kamran Amadzai made 29 and 9. But... Well, thanks to Jithu San's half century. That's well hit, Fielder can't get there. And you're going to have to check this, whether this goes all the way or not. I suspect it might be four, but I'm not putting any money on it. Let's have a look. It's a good looking shot, though, once again. We'll never tell from that one. And I get the feeling that it's... Get the feeling that it's four. 
Yeah, what, I'm not sure what the fielder is thinking here. So, umpires are waiting for confirmation. So, I thought it was probably, probably was four. So, four has been called. All right, and when I'm Judd, 28 of eight. Oh, yeah. Muscles it over the square leg boundary. Well, that's a good hit. It's pumped. It goes for the short one. And that gets away as well. So, Mias got, like the bowlers before him, going for a few. Just hasn't got his line right. I'm Judd. Look in the business. Looking set. And, well, there you go. That expected score. Right now the, uh, the computer is agreeing with me with the 130. Uh oh, is it going to carry? No, it uh, doesn't quite carry. And now he could have thrown it away. And I just think he maybe picks it a little bit late. There's uh, Amjad Sandu who does the backing up. He's in the air a long time. And he almost goes flying here. Look at that. So Jabarali doesn't quite pick it. Big wild swing. Oh, that's pretty close to the lid, actually. We saw that yesterday, didn't we? The five penalty runs being applied. As it was the keeper, Ramanan, who was having a nightmare of a day. And uh, that one is not that, not that far from it. Yes, yes. Chal, 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 chal. What are you waiting for? Is what Numan Amjad is saying to Suleiman Khan. All right. He gets back on strike. I'm looking to... Get after this last ball from Ashkar, who loses his footing completely. We'll have to be bold again. Short in the air, catching opportunity. Will it be held? No, dropped. Oh dear, well that is, that is a huge opportunity. Numan Amjad is dropped on 35. How much will that hurt them? Has time, gets settled, but just doesn't get a solid base. And that's the difference there. Never gets a solid base. So down goes the catch. And that's going to be a big moment. I think that's Munua that puts it down. Amjad dropped on 35. Yeah, you just see when he's taking that catch, just the light, he never gets a stable base. He's still moving, even though he's where he needs to be. The left foot is still moving around. And as a result of that, no solid base, no catch taken. 81 for... Four. Hit hard. Should be blocked and stopped. It will be. Gets the body right behind that. That's uh, Sufyan Ali. We go back to Zahir Hussein. And this is going back to Hussein here. Took two for 16 in his first over to try and get this wicket. And he won't get it bowling there. That's not a good delivery. And Suleiman Khan, who's been, well, just went a little bit quiet, didn't he? Uh, and the reason he went quiet is that they bowled well to him. They kept the ball outside the off. And this one's back down the leg side. And Suleiman, he gets a good swivel on There's A little bit of the, oh, as that one goes all the way to the boundary. So nice shot from him. He moves into the 20s. Good partnership, this. Down the leg side, way down the leg side, never be out. Well, a run out could be out. Yeah, he's straying on the leg side here, is Hussein. He's got to get this ball outside the off. Yeah. 
Firmly hit. Will it carry? No, the fielder does well. A good decision from the fielder. I think if he commits to this, he could have found himself perhaps allowing the ball to go to the boundary. So he does well. Good judgment by Ashgar. The umpires are on the walkie-talkie about something here. I'm not sure what it is. Are they? Have they spotted maybe a field infringement? There's some discussion going on. Certainly, was nothing wrong with the the stop from Ashgar. Hussein. Oh, that's been lofted. That is big. And uh, someone Khan is almost like saying, "Here, here's me stumps." I dare you, I dare you to go for him. He draws Hussein to put the ball in the slot and it gets worked away. So nice, powerful strike. So that's six more, really good hit. Powerful hit as well. So 96 for four, that expected score in the 130s now. Paris Zalmi. Play three, lost three. No points on the board. Looking to get something. It wasn't the best of starts, was it? Remember, they lost Dawood Ahmadzai and also Kamal Patel and Akram Shazad pretty early. But Najam, Numan Amjad putting in a fight here with Suleiman Khan. It's uh, some of the upcoming events that we've got from here. We have Italy Brescia coming up. The European Cricket Series, ECI Women's and Men's Action. The Medina Cup will be happening here at this Drew Cricket Ground. So uh, plenty of action still to come from here. I will then go to Estonia. We're bringing you the cricket there. First time I'll be in Estonia. Looking forward to that. And also, I'll be going back to Wimbledon. And, uh, I say back to Wimbledon, or should say I'm going to Wimbledon. But back to England for the European Cricket Series there. And uh, enjoying... I will be enjoying the action from there, hopefully, and enjoying being with the Bombles again. It tucks up the the batter. Newman Amjad. Newman Amjad, I get the feeling, is the nervous runner. He's not the best man to be running with. He's uh, been involved in a few runouts, not just here. Seen it before. Look, he's getting a bit frustrated there, but I don't think there's a run there. There's no way. The bowler's already there. Newman Hamjad getting very sparked up unnecessarily, I think. Slices it, goes nowhere. It's going to be another dot. And what's happened here? Why is this? All right. What's going on here? Uh, why is that being called a dead ball? What's happened? What have I missed? Uh, Newman Amjad is talking. I'm not sure why he's talking. What is the why? I don't know why that's a dead ball. Something's going on here. Now fielders are running all over the place. What's happened? Not sure what's happened here. So dead ball was signalled. Not sure what the dead ball was signalled for. Just trying to see if there's anything coming through. So called a dead ball for something. I, it looked like that Newman Amjad was seen to be having some sort of conversation with the umpire as the ball was coming in. But, I mean, there's no reason that to call a dead ball. I certainly didn't see, see any other reason for it. And I think uh, we're just working this out here now, whether it was a dead ball or not. Um, keep you updated as that conversation continues and I think it is going to be the last thing that I'm seeing is that it will be just a dot ball the batter <laughs> probably getting a bit tired of waiting Newman Amjad is showing his displeasure but dot ball it will be so no dead ball firmly hit and a little kind bounce there for Ashgar. Keeps it to a single. Well, he's been very frustrated as Numan Amjad. He's been barking at his partner. He's been talking to himself. He's been having a bit of a bark to the umpire. Let's see if he can take out that frustration on the Grizzly. 
on the pad. Yusuf Zai likes it, asking the question. I get the feeling that's probably going down the leg side. It's pretty full, but I think it's drifting. Just be a leg by the signal there. We'll see it again here. So it doesn't shuffle across. And that ball, yeah, definitely going to, for me, go on a missed leg stick despite the uh, the appeal from Wakas Bashir. Okay, good. taking on the arm. Fielder picks it up. Good throw. Oh, if he hits, it would have been gone. If he hits, it would have been gone. Uh, they get to the 100 at the end of the eighth over. So it's things just slight, slightly slowed down a bit. Remember, they were... Uh, on course for the high end 130s but they can change that round very quickly one one big over and they're back to a, a sort of 130 sort of score that's not a bad over there at all from Yusuf Zai the, the question is who's going to bowl the next couple of overs so the ninth coming up all happens in the ninth you can see there they they steady incline and now they're just starting to descend slightly so they want a good over here and that means that they're going to have to try and go after Ashgar full hit well to the fielder just the one that's been the issue they've hit the ball well a couple of times in the that last over which only went for three in the end and three and one one leg by so that's why they certainly slowed Paris Zalmi down. Shot. Beautiful shot. And that's where he likes it. So Numan Amjad, he says, all right, I'm back. I'm back. I've been quiet for a while, but I'm back. I'm back hitting big. He doesn't use his feet much, does he? He just got a really good eye, good hand and eye coordination as he wallops another one. For a big six. Let's go. Needs to execute that perfect Yorker, doesn't he? Uh, out in the offside. Powerful hit. Well, that's another banger. That's six more. Yeah, just like that. Paris Army. They're back on the hunt for a 130 plus score. Back to back sixes. Just not getting the right line. And just standing and delivering at the moment. 44 of 15, eyeing up his second half century in this series. Numan Amjad. In fact, that is his 50. And then he gets beaten. Yeah, he was on 44, that six. Just a little bit slow catching up the graphics sometimes. But well batted to Numan Amjad. He does get his second 50 in the series. Will this time it be enough to get a win? Remember, first time they're batting first. All the other times they have been chasing and they've got nowhere near the score they're looking for. Never picked up a point. So the gamble may be paying off here to actually bat first. Ashkar has gone for 25. In the slot and it will go. He can't be bowling at the slot. So whatever it is that Amjad Sandhu said to him doesn't work. And he looked at uh, um. I'm jarred straight away, did Ashgar, and say, I told you I ain't going to work. You can't be putting it there. 119. All happens in the ninth. No, 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 no. 19 have come off the ninth with the ball still to go. What a good knot this has been from the captain. And uh, I suppose you, you can't say he's done it all by himself. He's got good support. Hamad Zai scored 12. He's had a good, so good partnership here, really, from him and Suleiman Khan. They came together with the score on 41. So 78 partnership. And this one is going to be another six. He's uh, thinking with the Numan Amdad, he's a tall guy. And he's got good leverage. And if he's hitting the ball and he's hitting it clean, he's, he's hitting it to the boundary. This one again, look, he just waits for it and puts it away. So 125 for four. So I say they're, they're a team that they won't shy away from a chase, remember. 
We saw them getting very close to a 153 chase, falling six runs short. They chased 128 against the Greeny Vipers. And uh, then they batting first. They got to 121. So maybe they're a team that do better when they're chasing. But how many are they chasing? That's what the question's going to be. The last over to be bowled here by Munua, who will start with the wide. Munua doesn't like it. Let's have a look at this. And let's see the delivery. Munua, yeah, I think, oh, yeah, I think the umpire's fair enough. Calling that a wide. Munua quite often doesn't get two overs, but he's not the worst. All right, here he goes again. Zukame Munua gets dragged, but he does the right thing. I think someone can't. Not that he's not batting well himself, but takes the single and gives the strike to his captain, who's been batting beautifully. 62 not out of just 19. Oh, caught! What a good catch this is. That's been smashed. It's been absolutely smashed. And Ishan Yusuf's eye holds on to it. I think if you see this again, he though he goes for it too handily, I think in the end the ball ends up being held in the left hand more than the right. Let's watch this again. It's almost trying to slide out. It's almost like the hands cross over, but he holds it in one. It's a good catch because he's been hit hard. So Yusuf Zai takes a catch, a catch that could maybe keep this, I don't know, one under the 135, 140 is worse what the expected score was looking like at the time of that wicket. Yeah, that might be a wide, it might be too, too high. Let's have a look at this side on. Let's see it side on. I reckon it's, it's going to be there or thereabout. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's all right. But don't forget. Now, I think, what about the ball? I'm wondering, yeah, I was going to say, the first ball that he bowled, was that given one for the over? Which was a wide, but was called a wide for width, but it was pretty high. So it was. So this would be a no ball now. So Munawa, you know, needs to pitch it up. Raza Hassan is the batter. Yeah, that's remember it was a free hit. It was a free hit. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. It's a free hit. And the catch has been taken. Celebration behind the stunts from Wakas Bashir. Watch this. And they're running. Bashir, he needs to be going to the stumps. He's celebrating that he's oh yeah, he got the stumps. Oh sorry, sorry, Yar. Well it's too late for that. That's harder. So now, Khan the set better gets on strike and he will mash it for six. Of course he will. Are oh, you going to ride some of the stuff that we've seen here? You're going to ride it. It was a brain fart from the wicketkeeper, Wakas Bashir, when he catches the ball of the free hit. He's celebrating the batter's run when really he could have walked under the stump and ran out. Shazad, he doesn't. Shazad gets on strike and he blasts the ball for six. Two balls to go. 135 for five. And this one will drop just short of the fielder. Gets the throw in early. They think about going for it. They are going for it. It's going to be a run out. And I get the feeling that probably, I don't know, we're going to have to check this. Do the balance cross or not? Uh, or is it Shaz who's out? Is it Shazad or is it Hassan? I get the feeling possibly Shazad. I don't think they cross. We'll have a look at it again anyway. Let's just see it again. So they go for the hit. So they take the one. Thing is, they um denied, didn't they? They thought about it, stopped. There's a hesitation, and just here, I don't think it's Shazad. I don't. Uh, let's have a look. Nah, side on. Yeah, I don't think they cross. So it will be Shazad. Shazad will go. They don't actually cross. All right, Shazad. Good knock from him, by the way. 37 of 20. Score on. 136 with the ball to go because they will get the single. So 136 with the ball to go. Just wait for the scorers to get that updated. I feel that there is this is the last ball. There we go. One. Okay. Were they 
they going for two there? Weren't they going for two? Maybe they weren't going for two. This one might be a wide. It will be a wide. I thought they were going for two. All right. Gonna, somebody's going to have to check that. Maybe my eyes are playing games with me. Because surely Shazad, Shazad was on strike. He hit it. So, all right. I'll have to check. It should be one, one and run out. But this one. Hit hard in the air. This is going to be just to the left of me. And it's going to be six runs to finish. So they do and will get to the 140. In fact, 142 it will be. Yeah, you see the scores do get updated correctly. So 142. So they've given themselves a huge opportunity here. Paris Zalmi for the win. 142 for six as that one gets smashed for a biggie and Paris Zalmi are they going to get their first well I mean first points first win maybe they've won play three so far they haven't had a win 142 it is and at the halfway they were at 68 so that's handy 68 and 74 was a split it didn't all go to plan I mean Java Ali was causing a few problems for them. Sometimes it was with the height, but uh, other times it was with some absolute corkers. He did bowl well. One thing they didn't do well for me, Sassel, is put that third man back. I mean, a lot of the shots that were played early on, particularly from uh, Amadzai, were going into that third man area. In fact, all three of his scoring shots were in that area. And uh, Kamal Patel came out and he played this humongous six. Unfortunately, though, for him, he then hit the next one to, to Amjad Sandu, who took a really nice catch diving forward. So that would be the end of him. That was the end, eventually, of Amadzai. A very good delivery from Hussein. That was a little bit too good for him to handle. And sees his stumps knocked over. Shazad came out. There he is. First thing he had to do was get out of the way of that one. That was hit beautifully by Newman Amjad. And uh, Amjad, he got going, he made the most of bad balls, but Shazad got a bit carried away, puts one right up in the air, and who takes a catch? Yeah, of course, Amjad Sandu. And he wanted his third, really. He said, may I get a no, no, no. Yusufzai says, no, nah, I'm not taking any chances. I want to take it myself. And Safi Faisal, similarly to one or two other batters, came out there, hit one ball for six, then got out. But you don't mind that. Um, it's much better to do that than to be sticking around and chewing up balls. But then we saw a very good partnership. Yes, uh, Suleiman Khan and uh, Numan Amjad, the two batters that came together with the score in the 40s. It was 41 for four, and they ended up putting, taking the score to 127. So a very good and productive partnership worth 86 from those two. And they put the team in a good position. Well, that was the brain freeze moment. Catch taken of a free hit. A wicket keeper, Wakas Bashir, is celebrating. Meanwhile, Shazad gets on strike. They take the one. And then Shazad smashes the next ball for a big six. And uh, when she gets out, there's also another six in that over. So big finish. The over went for 18 for Munawar in the end. And they do get to the 140 score, 143 for six. So, yeah, I was right. There was uh, one more that needed to be added on to that which, uh, from that run out. So they eventually get that right. 62 to Newman Amjad. Well done to him. Well supported there by Suleiman Khan in that partnership worth uh, a very fine 86. On the bowling front, I think uh, there was some good bowling. I like the bowling of Jabbar Ali. He bowled with a bit of pace. It uh, was a little bit unlucky sometimes as well with the ball that was hitting the edges. Two wickets from Zahir Hussain. His second over, though, was a little bit expensive. And uh, two overs were bowled by Yusuf Zai as well. Picked up one for 21. So we're going to leave you for around about 10 minutes' time. We're going to catch a breath and we'll be right back with a reply from Sarcel. Sarcel, a team that do like chasing, and they've given us some exciting chases already. Well, we've seen one great chase as uh, Balbinion's chased down the 162 required for victory in match number 
22. Are we going to see another good chase in this one? Join me, Rico Full, and the rest of the game when we come back in about 10 minutes' time.
European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello folks and welcome back to match number 23, a third of this match day five. I hope you're all well and I hope you're enjoying a Peacock Friday wherever you are. A little bit chilly here in France. We are in the central northern part of France where it's a little bit chilly but uh, though there's plenty of cloud cover the good news so far is is that no rain and also i suppose good news for all the zalmi supporters around the world is that power of zalmi they have put a competitive score on the board 143 six wickets down and uh, it was their captain once again numan amjad 62 20 Good partnership worth 86 between him and uh, Suleiman Khan. That means that they finally have got the opportunity of uh, getting some points under the belt. They'll be hoping that it will be uh, three points at least. And But maybe, maybe if they can really take some early wickets uh, for Sarcel, they can possibly take all the points. But more importantly... I suppose for them at the moment, any points will do. They've played three before this one and not got anything to show for it. Batters are making their way out. So I sell they're a team that they, they don't give up. They, I mentioned in my, my intro, they do seem to have a bit of depth. Uh, they've got guys that can sort of bat all the way down, but they will always be looking for a big start. And that's what their captain, Akib, Shamshad tends to do. He's just out there just to attack. That's Zahir Hussain, who's out there with him. He's going to be the non striker. And it will be the captain, Akib Shamshad, to face the first ball. And who's going to be bowling the first ball? One thing that a lot of people said last time that really. Numan Amjad needs to be thinking about taking the first ball and bowling the first over. Good job. Had a few issues in the first match against uh, Moby Neons. Let's see how he starts. Starts well because he starts outside the off. Against uh, Moby Neons, he had difficulty pitching the ball. He was too much on the leg side. But he gets this one right. Welcome back to everybody. Okay, goes up and he's staying into a pocket of space. And you get the feeling that probably will be one bounce, four runs. So, Cuatro Guerreras. So, Shamshad is off the mark in typical fashion with a boundary. And following the ball a little bit here, Zalmi, now, because that one lands and sort of just short of the extra cover boundary, and that's where a player now gets deployed. So they've got extra cover and a long on back. And now this could be out. If this is straight, that's gone. Yeah, I suspect that is gone. And Akeem Shamshad is going to go. Because this one doesn't really come up. Kujar goes straight. And I'm not sure what the what the issue there is with Shamshad. If you're giving out, you've got to go. Let's see what he what he's complaining about here. Okay, that's mm, I think he's saying about where it hits him. He's a long way forward, but I yeah, it's a question of whether that ball's going over the stumps. Also the impact. I mean, the new batter comes out. Just have a look at the impact here. So he goes a long way across. And now I, I think looking at it again, that ball, I don't think it's going to go over the stumps. I think umpire score. And so Akeem Samshad gets a boundary and gets out. So he's, they're going to have to do without the contribution that he normally gives. And normally gets them off to a, a good start. So he hits one boundary. What goes LBW? We haven't seen too many LBWs, it has to be said. So, good job. 
gets the breakthrough for Zalmi. It's been well hit. Powerful strike on the ball. That's six runs. And uh, Zahir Hussain gets his first runs in the form of a Maximo. Boom. Shaka Lagia. And it's a biggie. He's being joined out there by Wakas Bashir. Who has also scored a half century in this series. He was the, the man that kept him in the hunt. Chased in the 153. He scored 62. 26. Good comeback. Just takes a bit of the pace off this. Gujar gets it in good areas. End of the first over. And 11 from it. But more importantly, to get the wicket of Gib Shamshad. You know how dangerous he can be. And he's often given his teams really good starts. And hasn't scored a big score, but he's he's always managed to, to get them something. He scored, he scored 33 of 12, and scored, he'd say, scores quickly, and that's why he was the player of the match in the win against the Guinea Wipers. Safi Faisal now coming on to have a bowl. I liked his bowling. And I think he's a good player. I like what he can do with the bat as well. Let's see how he goes against Bashir. Short. Bashir gets tucked up. But he gets it over the fielder. He'll get two, will they? No, they just take the one. Only well, gets enough to get it over the fielder. Gets a little tucked up, doesn't he? Fielder has to take off from inside the circle. Catches up with it, keeps it. To just one. Feel no changes from one batter to another. You can feel them fighting really hard here for this win. Parazalmi. They've got a big day here today. Got one more match after this as well. It's well bowled. And a bit of bat on this. It's a good full length delivery. Well backed up as well. They'll just take a single. The, applying the pressure at the moment on Sarcel. Uh, it looks like a garden gnome, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there. I think, uh, I think that is Javid, who I did like his batting this morning as well. Oh, falls over, and is he going to do that again? Yeah, he is. Does he take this? I think he does take it. This is absolutely tremendous. Well, the bowler falls down and he takes his catch. Look at this. Well, the cloth has come off, but he holds on to the catch. Uh, there you go. As easy as you like. Oh, it's all happening here today. Well, that's the bowler going down as he bowls this. So the bowler goes down. He falls, but... The ball is down the leg side in the catch, taken second time around. So there's another wicket that goes down. Things have to go your way sometimes, don't they? And Wakas Bashir, he'll go for two. Caught by Ali Hassan, who has <laughs> taken a good catch. Well, he's trying to warm up his hands now. Well, at least his glasses are okay. Get the catch at the Palia. How do we punch get but Janga Hoya and Kanipadia? You can still see. Well, Safi Faisal gets the wicket. And the thing is, he probably doesn't see too much of it because he's on the deck. And at least the fielder sees some of it before he loses his glasses, but still ends up holding on to it. Okay. Wickets falling early. Amjad Sandhu now comes out the left-hander. So, so far, no batter clicked. Zahir Hussain is still there. The the opener is joined by number four, the left-hander, Sandu. Gets one down the leg side. Will be a wide, so 
If you can get this partnership going, it'd be a good one. The left and right combination always does seem to to work well and causes a few issues. Firmly hit, and that's his shot. That's his go-to shot. We saw him play two shots like this on his way to that uh, 33 score the other day. Plays the ball very well out on the offside. Looks like a, a player that's certainly got a wealth of knowledge and experience. There's Amjad Sandu. A few fires up. Back to him again. And oh, beats him. Beats him with a good full delivery that he angles back into him. Nice take there by Krum Shazad as well. And gets movement when he doesn't want it. Keeping the pressure on. Eighteen for two. Good shot. That's well worked. That really is a good shot. It's like a dancing shot from Amjad Sandu. It's a dandy footwork. He says, OK, I'm going to dance this to the boundary. There you go. He says, come dance with me to the Grizzly. And then he plays it away for a lovely shot. Six runs. The over comes to an end. 24 for two. That's the concern. Two wickets and important wickets as well. Two batters that uh, have been pretty dangerous. Two batters that have scored runs. Marcus Bashir, we know he scored a half century. The keep Shamshad normally gives him a good start. He's back in the shed as well. Zalmi searching for the first points. A win here has them level terms with the Super Kings. Win by win and get all the points. The, the leap from them. That's a good hit. It's going to be one bounce, four runs. Uh, still in the power play, remember. So want to make the most of it. Zahir Hussain takes on Gujar and just gets this over the mid on. Gujar has been a much better, much better performance from him. Up in the air, coming across. Can he take the catch? No, he puts it down. Oh, that could be huge. That could be huge. Could be huge as Hussein gets dropped on 11. Fielder coming across and doesn't get palms, doesn't get hit in the palm of his hands and looking at him. I think he catches it on the wrist. So Faisal putting down Hussein. Oh, big moment. Gujar now wants to come round the wicket to the left-hander. Sometimes we see things like this, you know, something goes not the way of the team. And then it's the batter who then goes on strike. Is on who gets out. We saw that crazy one with Kumran Shazad himself. When he goes on strike after taking the three, that was never there. On the pads, wanting it. A big appeal. But I just get the feeling here that it's uh, probably going to drift down the leg side, also maybe a little bit high. And he's coming down as well here. So look, he's coming to this. And yeah, probably on the up and maybe going to go on a miss leg stick. Gujar likes it though. And you can see here, the ball has got a lot to do when it's striking Sandu. And I think that is a good call from the umpire. Definitely going down the leg side. And that one is going to the boundaries. The slow ball that's attempting from Gujar comes a bit out of the back of the hands, but uh, Hussein smashes this away. Having survived that drop by Faisal on 11, Hussein now becomes pretty key. Thirty-six for two. Sarcel fighting, fighting to stay in this. They're keeping up. 
with the right more or less. That's the key. Down the leg side, and that will go all the way. Bolle, bolle, bolle. In the zona. Yep, you're watching cricket in France. This is the European Cricket Network, the European Cricket Series in France. We're in Drew. And, uh, well, Drew at the moment means plenty of action, excitement and entertainment. As that one gets clipped away. Why take a wide? This is uh, Zahir Hussain. We're not going to have six. And he gets six. Well, I know that uh, Amjad Sandhu does like to celebrate. And he's celebrating that shot really early on when you still need 102 runs. But he liked it. Okay. Good job. Maybe a little bit under pressure now with this, his last delivery. And that one gets muscle to the boundary as well. It's six more. Gujar is protesting. I don't know what he's protesting for. He can't have another man there because we're still in the power play. So the power play does come to an end. 48 for two. And when you have a look at the like for like, well, that young lady's been kept very busy. When you take a look at this, you'll see that they are ahead because at this stage, the Parazami had lost three wickets and they were only on 35 but it's the finish that uh, Zalmi had that was good the 25 and the 18 coming off the last two overs so there's still plenty of work to be done here by Sarcel but they are a team that do like to chase and even though they've lost those two wickets these two can put a good partnership together for Zahir Hussain he's certainly up and running and I'm just Sandu the left-hander is more than capable of staying there with him. He just checks the, the leg side boundary. They have got mid-wicket and long on back, a wide and long on. In fact, they've, they've sort of got, it's quite a strange setup. They've got a very, very straight long on to him. So that means you've got you know, almost like two long, on, long ons. A very straight one, a wide one. You've got mid-wicket, but square leg inside the circle. Set quite nicely, but just be a single. He's quite happy at the moment, maybe Sandu, in getting the single and giving the strike to Hussein. Drags this down to the leg side. Won't go to the boundary. Got the fielder out there. Just be a single. <laughs> Numan Amjad, the captain, the half centurion. 62 of 20. Looking to also make a a vital contribution with the ball. A wicket here now would once again put them probably firmly in front. Just have a look at the the win percentage there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice looking shot, but there is a fielder back there. And that's why he's there, just for that shot. No boundary thus far in this over. And that means that's a massive win halfway through this one for Paris Zalmi. That means here now that Hussein will feel the need to go big. Oh, and you saw that coming, didn't you? You saw it coming. Tension. Dot. Sandu goes over to have a chat with him. That doesn't miss the, the off peg by March. I wonder if no, Amjad here gets a slower ball in or may even just bang one in short just to try to tuck up Hussein short get a full shot in let's see what he goes for and it is slightly shorter and it's another dot game changing this over so far literally game changing Three runs from five balls. Mm. 
Umian Jad at the moment holding the key to victory for his side and that one's just been clipped away just strays ever so slightly onto the legs just allowing Hussein to clip this away he gets it over the man on the 45 goes to the boundary but still it's a quality over only the seven come from it you'll take that so he's not going to shouldn't be too disappointed with it Hamjad 55 for two at this point Parasami were 54 for four but they finished well look you can see they are right neck to neck at the moment plenty still to happen in this match plenty of developments could make it go either way Oh, that's wild. And that's going to be a no -y. No ball as this one. You can see from the bowler's reaction. That's uh, Kurashai Rajaula. As soon as he bowls this, he's uh, looking at his hands, uh, sweaty palms. So Rajaula, free hit coming up. It's yeah, just Sandu saying, just checking. Is this a free hit? Yeah, it is. And it's going to be well stopped. Will they come back for two? Should be thinking about it. There's two there. Got to go for the two. The two batters. You got to run the first one hard. Free hit. And uh, Kuroshai gets away with it. So Rija Ula gets away, gets out of the free hit. No, that's going to be ball. That's going to be a wide. It would have been okay to the to the right hand, and not to the left here. This is what this left and right combination. I do like it. I, I think I said the first time I saw Sarcel, I wouldn't mind even if I'm just Sandu because the guy he can bat, he can hit the ball well. He's not slow. It wouldn't even be a bad idea if you open with him or he came in at number three just to put off the bowlers a little bit. Now this is wide. He's in the air. Fielder comes in. The catch has been taken. He chases a wide one. He's going to be gone. That's a really soft dismissal for Amjad Sandu. It's another wild delivery from Rijula. But he will get the wicket. I mean, the height is pretty high as well. But it's coming down. And he is also on one knee. So he's out. Chasing a wide delivery. And losing the wicket at the worst possible time, really. Also, I have to say, should have been running two. Shouldn't have been on, for me, shouldn't even have been on strike. Should have gone for two there. So, Amjad Sandu gives uh, Rija Ula a, a gift, really. Well caught by Numan. You wouldn't expect him to put it down. All right. Umir Ashka. The new batter. We just take the single. So now, Zahir Hussein becomes vital in this run chase. Now, this is all about the depth now, isn't it? Especially with three wickets down. The depth of the other batters. It's just be a single. So you've got this field. and the, It's quite an intelligent field. It, it's got that Southern Cross field about it, hasn't it? So you, you've got a very straight long off. And you always got two long ons. And a... And a Mid wicket, all very close to each other. Sweeper out in the off. Speaking of off, that's in the air. Fielder 
He's interested but can't do anything about it. It's a matter of centimeters, really. But uh, Kamal Patel out there. He's on the line. He's trying to see if he can keep this in, but he just can't. It's just, like I say, a couple of centimeters out of his reach. So six more. There, yeah. Rijola. See if he can finish his over while he's set. Uh, I think for what he's bowled, he's, he's been a little bit fortunate so far. It's powerfully hit down the ground. It'll just be a single. If he covers well, and then that's Raza Hussain. That's straight down the ground. So the over comes to an end. And it's 68 for three. And what I can tell you is that at this moment, at the halfway point, the opposition were exactly on the same score, 68 to 68. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. So in that challenger division, Isle of Man, Estonia, Bulgaria, Croatia, Turkey, Slovenia, Greece, Czechia, Luxembourg, Cyprus and Serbia. All those teams in the challenger division will play each other. And the top two will go through to the 2025 Premier Division. And uh, that's a competition within itself, the Challenger Division. The winners will get uh, silverware as well. So that's something new this time round. And uh, bank this one in. I think this will be a wide as Suleiman Khan comes on to bowl. One one is the the bonus point score if you like. So if you're not winning this match, get to one one, you get something from it. Oh, that's well bowled. Good better delivery. And uh, beats Ashkar. Ashkar swings and misses Hussein at the other end. And just as a little word with him, probably saying to him, hey, we don't dot balls, we can't have dot balls, we don't want dot balls. Few people are expecting Zami to go on and win this match. And uh, Tanji was saying, yeah, Zami will win. And uh, he also agreeing, they're taking it on. And I think they just want the single, I think. Zahir Hussain is saying, no, that'll do. I think he knows that the dot balls, that one hardly comes up, actually. It's a, the, a rare one that we see that doesn't really bounce. Hussain needs a big over here. That's what he's thinking. That rate per over around the 15 mark. One great over from Amjad certainly hurts you. Uh, his wasn't the worst either. Just going for 13. Goes down the ground, but I don't think he gets enough of this. Oh, he does actually. Only just. I saw the fielder coming across, getting underneath it. But once again, you'll see a good look at this. Only just gets it. It wasn't clean out of the middle. And you see, only just gets it over the hand. Off the fielder. That's uh, Raza Hassan once again. All right, six runs. Hussein knows he's got to go big. And he will go big. Banging it in short probably is not the answer. That's why he needs to and wants to get on strike. He clobbers that one away. Too short. Hits it big. Hits it hard. Hits it long. And now it's Sulman Khan. That gets a bit of a talking to from Numan Amjad, the captain. Slow ball. Oh, that is so unlucky. This is so unlucky. I mean, that is buys. It, it's a slower ball, yet it acts like it's the fastest ball that we've seen bowled here. It hits the pitch. I reckon that's hit right on the line, the, the crease of the batter. And that's what's giving it the extra oomph. And it's like a, 
It's like a missile's been launched here. Watch where this hits. It's right on that line. It takes off and goes for four buys. That's cruel. Nothing going to be done about that. Khan feeding the pressure. There's a lot of shabba, 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 shabba around the ground. Zahir Hussain on 49. But he shouldn't be thinking about that landmark at the moment, the 50. Should be thinking about getting another 58 or 25. It's a slower delivery, but it's down the leg side and it gets played away to the boundary. So that's going to be 50 to Zahir Hussain, well batted. He holds the key for a win for his side here. As long as he's there, I can't see them losing Sarcel. It's going to be exactly 54 of 24 deliveries, 90 on the board. That over, game for 22. So it helps to bring the rate down. Remember I was talking, it was around about 15, 13 and a half now. But the thing is, now this is where I think Zalmi had to be clever a little bit. When you've got Ume Askar on strike, who's 8 of 5, is where you've got to put the pressure on. They're going to go back to Rijaula. I don't think his first over was the best he's bowled, but he got away with it. I reckon Hussein's got to get to the other end pretty quickly. Mind you, Ashgar smashes this one for big six. Well, we've seen these scenes already from the likes of uh, the Babylonians when they were supporting their team to incredible run chase. Are we going to see another one here? And I reckon that uh, amongst all of this, well, there's Mars Barzi, who has popped up with the shades on to take a catch. Oh, Gundy. And that's going to be... Oh, dear. Well, it's called wide. I'd like to see the height on it as well. Probably OK and height, but let's just have a look. Well, that's going to be a minimal. And just like that, that is like 13. Oh, dear. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, look. Let's see the height side on. I wonder if we can see this side on. I reckon that's too high. I, re I mean, I'm saying minimal. I reckon that's a no -y. That, for me, is too high. I think that's going to be a no ball. Uh, let's just keep an eye on the umpires, what the umpires think. Yeah. No, there you go to no ball. So once again, the umpires needing the assistance of the third umpire. And of course, the video technology, Vignesh, no ball free hit. So that was uh, this one now is, well, I suppose the good thing that he does do, he gives the strike back to the same, but he just needed to step inside this. Step inside it would have been another one and the free hit would have stayed in place. Don't try to get clever here now, Escar. Don't try to get clever. Play your normal game. So they've got a point now. Now they're looking for the win. 42 in 22. You've got to find a way to get Hussein out. I reckon that Hussein will take uh, a real, have a real go here at Rajula. Gone. Goes across the line. It gets bold. It picks the wrong one. He picks the wrong one, goes straight across the ground, and now this silent Sarcel, who were making a lot of noise, have gone quiet because Zahir Hussain, the key batter, goes, plays the wrong shot here. Plays the wrong shot, goes right across the line, sees the ball knocked over, and it's a wicket for Rijuula. He takes his, he takes the second wicket, and that is huge. That's a huge wicket. A new batter now will have to come out. But it's a great knock, you got to say, fantastic knock. But Hussein departs. And departs at an important point, 105. And we'll just get that updated. And so Hussein, he has departed, goes for 53. And taken by, well, the unlikely man, so Rijo Ula, who maybe he's not bowling consistently well, but he finds the odd ball to get the wicket. Two for 19. Lee better comes in, but he could be gone straight away. He, oh, this has been thrown over the line for six. I can't believe it. 
Sarsal-looking to get another incredible run chase here. And he leaves this. And that's a good leave. And that's exactly what I was saying. That should have maybe have been done when it was uh, Ashka on the, the free hit. He tries to get funky by doing... And that's uh, like a chopper shot. He should have just done exactly that. To step inside it and take the wide... And one wide becomes two. Well, yeah, you know what he's feeling after dropping the catch. Munawa dropped on zero. In the air, catchable, should be taken. Looks comfortable and it will be taken. No pressure at all. And uh, Dawu Ahmadzai takes the catch. And that's going to be the end now of Ashgar. So you literally got two relatively new batters out there. Ashgar will go for 14 of nine deliveries. And uh, Ruja Ula, fair play to him. He's had a few issues getting the ball in the right places. Much better second over from him. The first ball went for a big six. Then there was the 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 no ball plus five buys. And another buy after that, which really should have been a wide, but they rotated the strike, which then followed with a wicket. And little things like make a difference. So two two wickets in the over. There's still a ball to go. 108 for five and Asad Mohammed. Here's the new batter. It's just played out. It'll take just a single. So Assad will go back on strike. 109 for five. The rate is going to be around about the 12 and over mark here now, going into the last 18 deliveries. So they're needing 35 of 18. You still think that they would be favorites but you'd have to say you got two new batters out there this is the next match coming up Dre, who themselves experienced an incredible loss when after putting 161 on the board they saw the <laughs> Bilbanians come and win the match and they probably would have been hurting after that especially playing on their home ground and they're coming out and they will take on Sarcel in the next match. Shot. Big six. Thank you very much. As uh, Assad Mohammed finds this one just in the slot where he wants it. So Numan Amjad coming to bowl his second. Remember how good his first over was. It was only three from it until the last ball that was hit for four. Only went for seven. But that one, the first from him, gets crunched away. And he comes again, Amjad. Shorter, goes for it, catchable, should be out. Fielder, what has he done? What has he done? He's like a ballerina, but a ballerina that's fallen off the stage, running in for no reason at all. And, uh, well, that's Rujo Ula. He just needed to stand still, but he keeps on running, 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 and he runs past it. He gets over him. It will go for four. Rujo Ula. Oh, my word. Totally misreads it, runs inside, the ball goes over him, goes for four. Asad Mohammed, six and four. Well, he's hungry for more. He misses this one. Got to be thinking of running these. Got to be running these. This is where the non-striker, Munawa, has already got to be. Look, he's leaning on his... He's not backing up at all. He's got to be running. He's got to be halfway down the pitch and say, yeah, come on. Keeper hasn't got it. We'll take it. Amjad. Short, high in the air. 
Hamjad should be looking to take this himself. And he will take it himself. And that will be the end of Asad Mohammed. Once again, these little things, little things. Um, maybe he shouldn't even be in on strike. They should have run that last one. Munawa staying stuck in his feet. Just look at Munawa here. I mean, the ball has been bowled. He hasn't even moved, and that's the problem with Munawar. He's not backing up at all. He's just staying in his crease, not backing up. Got a little bit of right drizzle that's starting to fall here as well. Hopefully, it won't interrupt what is proving to be a superb game. Sufyan Ali, the new batter. Well, Hassan makes way. That's nicely played, but it's to the fielder. A little bit unlucky, actually. It's not a bad shot at all from Sufyan. So Munawar finally will get on strike. Aside made 11 or 5 before he was caught and bowled by Numan. Good figures at the moment. 1 for 18. Can he finish well? And he does finish well as he beats Munawar with a dot. So dot ball to finish, which means it's 24 required of 12, 120 for six. Again, you'd say the batting side favourites, but losing, I just think they're losing wickets at the wrong time. And they just, some of the basics they're not doing. I mean, once again, Munawar, if you have a look at Munawar, when the bowl is bowling. He's not backing up at all. Rain just starting to get a little bit heavier now. And Klaus moving pretty briskly. I can't say that there's any brighter weather that's coming. So we're just hoping that it doesn't get too bad. Here comes the bowler. And they have got to be running. See, this is where Munawar... When do we get a chance to look at this uh, ball once again? Just watch Munawar here in his crease. So, in comes the bowler. It's fine. Watch Munawar. Look at him. He doesn't move. He hasn't moved out of his crease until now. And really, if they're watching this, they've got to be talking to him afterwards and said, hey, you've got to run. You've got to be ready to get there. So, if he fires all. Smashed. Big. That is a biggie. That's probably one of the biggest ones that we've seen straight down the ground. Six runs. Absolutely smashed. And once again, Sarcel, they're up and about, making a lot of noise as uh, Zukamain Munawa smashes this down the ground. 127. 17 of 10 balls. Are we going to see another run chase, back-to-back -back run chases? Slices it, but got to go. Decides not to. Sends back. Sends back. Sufi and Ali. I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think you take whatever runs available to you. So they turn down a run. I don't think that's a good call. You've got to take whatever comes your way. Now he misses this one, so that's going to be a dot ball, probably the one for the over. So that's two dots on the spin. 17 of eight. 17 of eight. That's nothing. We did see 28 scored on the last, over in the last match when 27 were required. All right, got to get something on this. Got to get something on it. And he won't. It'll be bold. And I go back to the run he turns down. He turns down a run. And then the next two balls after that have been dots. No runs. It's the end of the over. Off stump, out of the ground. Well done to Safi Faisal. who says, well, if you don't want to run, fine. Don't run. Stay there and I'll knock him over. So he hit a big six, he turned down the run on ball number three. And then it was a dot and now a wicket. 
Last ball of the over. New batter, Jabber Ali. On strike. Munawa loses his off stump for 10. And that's the other thing. 10 of 6. So it's not like he was, you know, the key batter that he had to stay on strike. And dot ball. What a great over this from Faisal. What a great over. He went for a bye first ball, hit for a six, and then after that, no runs. No runs of four balls. And, well, if you're going to lose matches, that's how you lose them. Sarcel, got to learn a lesson here. A couple of lessons is back up, take the runs. Munawa was not good at that. Sitting, in, sitting and sleeping in his crease, not taking the opportunities that were there. And then those four dot balls, three of them coming after Munawa, turns down a run. And now the man that he didn't want on strike... The man that you kept off strike, Sufian Ali, has to be on strike. This is the start of the last over, and they need 17. So 17 off six. Suleiman Khan to bowl it. 127 for seven. That last over, only game for seven. All right, now somebody tell me. Somebody tell me why Munawa did not want this guy on strike. Where is Munawa? I'll ask him myself. Why don't you want him on strike? Why don't you take the single when he's at the other end and you got four balls going the over? What is Munawa thinking? The guy can smash it. Munawa, if you don't win this match, if they don't win this match, Munawa, Munawa, I'm telling you that now. And this one will be a dot outside the off. So, 11 still required. 11 of 4. 11 of 4. Another boundary here would come in nicely. You can see that Suleiman Khan is thinking, I'm not going to pitch it up again. The rain, by the way, has eased off. That's good. Short hit into the ground. They've got to run hard. Will they try and get back for two? They might as well try. In the end, they try not to. You've got to go two here. You've got to go two here because they're only throwing to the bowler's end. That means that Sufyan gets back on strike. Got to go two. Little things like this. Little things like this can cost you matches. Ten or three. Jabarali now on strike. He's swung and missed at one. Sufyan's got to be ready to run. Got to get something here. Hits it hard. Purely chasing, can't get there. It'll be four. It'll be four. So we go to six off two. Six off two. Jabber Ali toe ends it over the covers. The fielder trying to stop it, can't get there. 138 for seven. Two balls to go. Six required. You just got to run here. You got to run here. Because if you run here, at least it means the last ball. Even if you get a four, you still get a chance. Even if you get a four, you get a chance. You got to take something here. Edge, gone, out. And that's the wicket of Zaman Khan. That'll be Jabba Ali that will go. Surely we're not going to have another incredible finish. Six required off the last ball then. Six required off the last. Great catch under pressure from the keeper. Krum Shazad takes it one-handedly in the glove. It's a one-handed delight to remove Jabber Ali. Jabber Ali will go. And one thing I'm going to say here before this ball is bowled. If they took every single single that was on offer to them, and if you have a look at, I know Munawa is going to think I've got it in for it, but if you have a look at the way he was standing in the non strikers creek, they, if they don't win this match, they lose it because you don't run your singles. It's as simple as that. All right, here we go. Getting ready for the last. He's got to get it right to the left-hander. Usman Malik. Can Usman Malik be the hero for Sarcel, or will it be Suleiman Khan? Okay, asking the question, is it a good ball or not? No, it's going to be called a wide. It will be called a wide. Wide is called. Let's have a look at this again. Is this a wide? Is it not? The umpire says yes. 
and I would not agree with it, but it works out in their favor. So now six would win it, but a four would take us to a golden ball. A four would take us to a golden ball. Field, well, no, the fielders are just, I don't know where to go. They're saying, get the jammer, man, either, get either. And now he falls over. Well, he might be waking, making his way to casualty. And nowhere else at this moment. What's going on? Here we go. Six would win it. Four for a golden ball. He hits it. It's in the air. It chases on. Will it get to it? No, it's not going to go to the boundary. It will be a victory for Zami. Oh, will it? The models will keep running. Will he get in there? What's going on here? Well, three won't win it. It's going to be a victory for Zami. Paris Zami will get their first victory. Victory for Zami, they get their first points. It's taken them three matches, but they hold their nerve and they win the match. They provide us with another absolute spectacular match. And Sarcel will fall short. Question is how many? And there, this one, he said, come on, let's just keep running. I don't think he makes it. I think it'll be two and out. Two and out, so it'll be, for me, my calculations, 141 for nine to 143 what a match how exciting how entertaining zalmi will get three points and sarcel will pick up just a point entertaining match but sarcel i have to say go back and watch it go back and watch the number of singles you turn down t10 is an explosive format yeah it's all about the big hitting Speaking of big hitting, Dre and Sarcel up next. That will be a big hitting one. Match number 24, match four or five. Yeah, it's about the big hitting, but it's about playing smart cricket. And Sarcel just didn't play the smart cricket. They didn't value taking the singles. The backing up wasn't good. And I think as a result of that, they lose this match. If you go back and look some of it. And, and that run that got turned down. When Munawa turns down a run, with four balls to go and then the next three balls are all dots including a wicket and then the man he doesn't want to go on strike faces the next ball five balls later and belts it for a six what is that about that's where you lose the match it is quite simple that is where you lose the match as we have a look at these highlights again but what an incredible match it was absolutely fantastic and uh, well done to both the teams again for providing us with a brilliant match and a brilliant advert for European cricket. They chased hard and when you watch these innings there's a number of things that you look at. I mean that one there, that catch, how brilliant was that? That was quite remarkable. The catch taken by Ali Hassan to remove Wakaz Bashir, a ball that probably should have been gained to the boundary but ends up in the hands of a man who took the catch without even wearing his glasses and removing the danger of Bash here for just two. It was entertainment all along. That one only just clearing the fielder. That then, how unlucky was that? The slower ball that hits the, the batter's crease and takes off and goes over the head. And then that was a big wicket, wasn't it? That was the one that they needed. And after a fine half century, and that was Hussein who went for 53. And then that, of course, don't forget that. Faisal pushing the ball over the boundary, but Faisal probably was the man who in the end held his nerve and gets the win for his side because he bowls a quality top over. And that was the, the over number nine, which only went for just seven runs. It was quite incredible, really. But yeah, that's what we were talking about there. Uh, the action that happened there, that was Munawa who lost each wicket. Then a great catch from Shazad. There we go, one-handed Jalebi catch. And then right at the end, when a four would have taken us to a golden ball and a tie, six would have won it. And uh, it ends up being two and a run-out game for three. Uh, a wonderful advert for European cricket. Excellent match. Well done to Sarcells for playing their part in it. But they fall two runs short. That means that Paris Zalmi will win their first match and get their first points. And that means that they now will be on the same points as the Super Kings. Let's have a look 
at the scorecard. 53 from Zahir Hussain, and he just chose the wrong one to go across the line to. Ruja Ula, by the way, he picks up three wickets, three for 26, and uh, well, it didn't look likely when he first came on, but he got his line right, and he bowled a pretty decent second over. And you can see the rest of the scorecard there. Batters coming in, getting in, coming in, getting in. But uh, Zucre, Zucranein Munawa, I have to say, you've got to take responsibility for a couple of decisions there that you don't take. And Sufyan, well, Sufyan is probably saying, well, I don't know why he didn't want me to go and strike. Sufyan gets run out right at the end there. But by that time, the match was already done and dusted. So three wickets for Arujaula, three for 26. Two also there from Safi Faisal, who bowled really, really well. If I had to be really choosy, I know that Numan Amjad played a big part in there as well. But uh, it's a toss between Safi Faisal and Numan Amjad. But Amjad, I think, takes it for me because of his knock and the half century that he scored, 62-20, and then a fine bowling spell from him as well, which gives his team a victory in a very exciting and entertaining match. Well, if you want excitement and you want entertainment, well, the next match is going to be just as exciting. I'm just going to have a quick check to see if the match is still going to be running on time. I haven't seen anything to suggest, to suggest otherwise. So the next match coming up very quickly in about seven minutes' time. And I've got to say, I'm absolutely whacked. I've, I need a break. The throat is going. I need a hot drink. So I'm going to take a break and maybe we're going to call HQ and see if Vinny Sandu is going to step in for me and do the next one. Hang on, I'm going to give him a ring now. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, Vinny, you there? You up for the next match? What'd you say? Yeah? All right, you're on. All right, folks, there you go. Done and dusted. Vinny Sandu will talk you through the next match that we have coming up here when Sarsal will be taking on Drew. So Vinny Sandu will tell you what happens in the coin toss and then talk you through the first innings. I might be okay to come back and finish it off for you. Hasta pronto, mi familia.
This European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello, cricket lovers, and welcome back. Mr. Maximo here, Vinny Sandu, from the studio. And to be honest, I'm just toweling myself off after a pretty great last half an hour there. Paris Dummy, what a way to get their first ever win in ECN cricket with a two-run thriller over CSPT Sassel. Well, speaking of Sassel, they're back in action right now against Dreux, who also had a bit of a shot loss earlier today, a little while ago. We had the coin toss. Let's see what happened here in match 24. Club drew to call. Heads is the call. And it's a head. Well, Nabi winning the toss for Dreux. I don't think he will be playing shots quite like that, but he will be playing some shots pretty soon because he's so lucky with the tosses. They'll be batting first once again. Now, they had a toe record going into today, but earlier on, he got a little bit rocked and shot by Albignon who chased 162 off the very last ball. It was a crazy game, really. So Drew, despite making 161, that did not hold up for them. But they'll get a chance to put another big score on the board and no surprises for guessing the openers. It'll be Hamza Niaz and Ahmed Nabi to go out there. Well, CSPT, Sassel, well, they know all about uh, a thriller today already. They needed to get, I think it was five to, to tie off the last ball. They ran kind of 2.8. And there's a go. So, yeah, five minutes later, this one, just because of that last game running a little bit over time. See those two teams. Zahir Hussain, well, he was brilliant with the bat in the last game. Shamshan missed out, but I'm sure you're hoping to hit back here. Dreux with a 72% win likelihood, according to the supercomputer. I want to say uh, hello to everyone in the chat. And how have you liked the action today? Haven't we had some thrillers? But, uh, these are two teams that I'm sure want to get their day back on track. and. Well, Dreux, if you thought that they were kind of invincible, you can think again after they were sent, sent swept aside. Not often you see 160 chases on the network. They have kind of become a little bit more commonplace over the last one to two years. Right now, it's windy, it's cold, there's a little bit of light drizzle at the moment. I think going to delay us any further. As Jabber Ali will get us going to Hamza Niaz. Starts with it's like a big wide. Welcome back to everyone in the chat. And I know there's a lot, a lot of people that are enjoying some of these, some of these thrillers. Yeah, Paris Salmi really needed that. In, in a word, I would call the table congested. Probably see it in a moment. Well, that one ain't coming back. Maximo Niaz just loves them here. It's on that kind of comfortable length. He can get his hands through it. Knacks over several fences. See, he's Carreras. Welcome to match 24. Hello to Manus. Nice to see you. And hello to Waza as well. Waza watching from down under. Niaz tends to take the first ball. First legal ball he faces. He puts over the rope. Come back ball then for Jabbar. Now he's going to go over the offside in very Hamzaniya's fashion. That'll be four. But just have a look at how he released the wrists here. Just holds back. And at that very last moment, he opens that blade. I've seen him score a lot of runs like that on the network. Drawing board for Sup. I'm having a bit of a rough, rough, rough trot here on day five. Yes, we'll just kind of hold up on this one and get a single. It means Ahmed Nabi will be on strike for the first time. And we know the way he likes to play. Obviously, draw. Very successful domestically. In fact, they're the only team to ever come to the ECL, with the exception of Paris University Club, who qualified on account of Dre automatically qualifying after winning in 2023. 
Might just holds his shot up here. Probably a wise option. Just came back a little bit off the pitch and cramped him for room. That's probably one thing. I know it's, it's kind of goes against his DNA, but it is probably worth him being a little bit more selective. And he can definitely kind of catch up down the track. Once he gets on a roll, he's pretty much unstoppable. Niaz goes up and over the top. That's going to be six more. Says Carreras, another Maximo. For Hamza Niaz. Hamza's just got his own style. That's kind of unique. I think if you kind of, if you, if you blurt out his face and, and all distinguishing features, you can still pick him because he's just got a certain way that he hits the ball. It's over, on the verge of going magical. Last ball to come. And it will go magical. Knocked into the infield, but not cleanly handled. So it's an even 20 off the first. And the score is 20 without loss. Having a look at some of the stats here. I mean, that 162, that was a brilliant game early on. Babignon. The highest successful chase now on the other side of that. But we've also seen 94 de defended, so we've seen quite a range of kind of types of games here. Average score batting first, 130. That kind of seems par for the course. And actually, more teams have been winning batting first than batting second, so 13 to 9. Interesting. We've had one washout. That was in match four on opening day. Yeah, but it's quite an interesting differential between the highest successful chase and the lowest score defended. In fact, not often that you see double digits, double digits defending these days on the network. Now, Zaheer Hussain comes in. Zaheer Hussain goes out of the ground. Maximo. He has, looks on an absolute terror here early. This incidentally was PUC that defended 94. That was in match 10 against the President 11. I don't know about the round the wicket tactics, although it's hard to come up with tactics at all that are going to trouble Hamza Niaz if he hits his stride. But this one's slightly slower ball, dragged and partially knocked down the infield. Just take the single. It's the thing about these openers, so dangerous, but because of the depth in the draw batting line, they don't really have to fire for them to win ball games. That's something we've seen again and again. Occasionally it'll completely blow up and they'll get rolled, like all teams do in this format. But they have such confidence in their teammates that they take risks. Nabi swings across this one. Just trying to go back from where it came around the wicket, kind of going leg side. Just loses his head there. He's been a bit out of Nick. He's probably sick of everyone mentioning it, but it's pretty obvious if you saw how he was hitting them last year. He just seemed invincible. He seems like a humanoid at the moment. Now that is absolutely murdered. And that's over the path as well. And that's a long hit. That is a very, very big hit. Maybe a slight slower ball from Hussain. But yeah, I mean, when he hits him, it looks like that is the right shot. We have seen him do that many, many times. Maximo Banabi. If these two both click, they are going to be chasing a mountain of runs here. Sassel. Lifts his head again on this one. It's been an interesting one. Maybe it's worth a look. I think he gets his foot down. But he doesn't ground the bat. We know that Nabi occasionally will get the basics wrong. I think they want to have a look at this. Yeah, main camera will, will kind of tell the story here. But does he get his foot down? And camera one will be the story here. Let's just try and freeze when this... Yeah, he seems to have the foot down, but the main camera will probably tell us whether that foot's in or not. Let's have a look. About here... Yeah, I think you can see the foot is down. Great shots by our team at Spring Productions here, Spring Media. As we suspected, although kids at home, slide your bat. 
Back to Hamzania then. Gundy ball down the leg side. That's going to be trouble. It's an unhit five. And you can see the keeper, Rakas Bashir, not too impressed with that from Hussein. It just hasn't really been working for him around the wicket. He took a bounce, second bounce in front of the keeper. He's pretty quick to give some feedback to the bowler that he wasn't too impressed with that delivery. Last ball, the overtake two. Yeah. I suppose that's what he's trying to do. Run straight in front of the umpire, so the umpire probably didn't see it. But I can tell you, it's the end of the over. It doesn't quite go magical, but not far off. 19 off at 39 without loss after two. I mentioned the table. Pretty congested at the moment. Dutra find themselves in seventh. They do have games to make up, to be fair. And even Sarcel, they do as well. Harris Knight Riders just played the, the one slate of matches as well. Mitri, like a pretty good team. They went one and one first day, but could have easily won both. A couple of other things went their way. Yusuf Zayat gets a bowl and what's Gennabi trying to go for that leg side? Sound like a broken record, I know, but we actually saw him whack a six over long off earlier. And, yeah, that one motored out of the ground. Leg side's been a bit hit and miss, literally speaking. He doesn't quite get the, the shot right here. Nissan Yusuf side, though, good start for him. A couple of dot balls, and yes, Arcel will certainly believe that they've got what it takes to, to knock over Dura and give them back-to-back -back losses. Uh-oh, that one has swung a long way. I don't think this gets anything either. Wait and see, but ends up at the boundary. Check out the replay. It just starts swinging, keeps swinging. And that really did go. Again, keep has no chance of stopping that whatsoever. By the time it reached him, it was even wider. So he kind of started outside the off stump. And that's been given off the bat. Okay. <laughs> you know, Stets the ball will be happy with that, although this one is going to be four more then. I can't say I saw it myself, but there's no doubt about the next one. Four to the total. Right down towards the end of the bat. So back to back fours for Nabi. That's been a tiny edge down the leg side. How about on that one, though? And another one to the total. Something teams are going to have to start watching again, not bowling too many extra deliveries. And the clock now, kind of four minutes and over allocated, means that you need to bowl nine overs in 36 minutes. You do get allowances, obviously, for unavoidable stoppages. You get a minute per wicket as well. And now he's bowled. So, Nabi swings at some. Hit some, misses some. Credit to Yusuf Zai, who's been just kind of using that angle in. Nabi gets his middle stump, tipped back again. Can't really go on to a big score. Ahmed Nabi goes for 16. And in the third over, it's 48 for one. Well bowled to Yusuf Zai when it's all said and done. Nabi can kind of feel the frustration, it's palpable. Brings Mohamed Nisar to the crease. Or I suppose he, he turned from hero to villain early on, didn't he? In that previous game, it was back to 22. Nisar put on 57 in 21 balls, but he also he conceded 28 off the last over of the game. 
And they only had 27 to, to defend. Dura had their first loss of the series. Right now, it says, but picks out the fielder. That'll take us to the end of the power play. So, at the end of three, Dura are 48 for one. Adash has a question. Hello, Adash. Nice to see you in the chat. When was the when and where was the first ECS? And which country was it? Well, exactly where it was. And Rico knows very well because he was commentating in that one as well. Just quickly though, look at the power play. What's well, on the screen? 2019 and 9. So a much better third over from Yusuf. So I expect him to come straight back. But yeah, it was actually in March 2020. It was at the Sporting Alphaz ground, just near Alicante. The first match was on the 2nd of March, 2020. Madrid United actually won the first ever ECS. And also, they won the first ever Golden Ball, which happened on their second day of play. It was in match seven against Levante. But, as you probably know, that was the first week of March, 2020, and the world was about to change. Change of pace here as well. Usman Malik comes in. And the first one's right on the line. So, I mean, this is something that we still see. Maybe we can see this again. But the new regulations on the line is actually okay. And, and doesn't really get much more on the line than that. Umpires, though, still pinging the bowlers because they want to. I suppose that's their prerogative. As long as they're consistent, that's what you're really hoping for. Now, this is hit, and it's hit pretty sweetly by Niaz. And that's comfortably out of here. Well, an attempt from off the field. Oh, well, can't say he didn't try, but Maximo. The result is six runs. Yeah, so uh, after the first ever European Cricket Series, we were on hiatus for about two and a half months before we'd get cracking again in June with cricket on ECN. It might have been very late in May. He has weights on this, calms it out straight at the fielder. Just a single. It looks like he might have been in jeopardy, but I think he saw the throw was going to be wide of the stumps. Yeah, if you ever can track down a broadcast, go and check it out. We'll get to, yeah, you get to see Rico making his Coventry J debut in, in the European Cricket Series. It actually shows you how far we've come. I mean, I even think there was a whole game that just didn't make the stream on that first day ever. Tossed up, and Nisa goes after him, and he gets off the mark with six. Maximo, Mohamed Nisa. Despite Nabi still being a little bit off the boil, still seem to consistently put up big scores. Anyway, Adash, hopefully you enjoy that little trip down memory lane. Thanks for your question in the chat. You can always throw in some questions. ECN European Cricket Network, we love it. Waits on this one. Nisa goes with his pin, gets it just away from the fielder. Cuatro Cabreras this time. Six and four. His man's always hungry for runs. He's hungry for more right here. Love the way he waited on that. Punched it in front of the fielder. Usman in danger of going magical. Nice well ball, bit of extra bounce, but again, this is going to get away from the fielder. It's going to be another four runs. So it was kind of a moral victory for the bowler, but he won't like that. He does go into the 20s. Just hurried on, bounced a bit more. Nisa got enough bat on it to get it over that fielder. It's probably a wide, you know. Yeah, it is. It's missed the leg stump. I know it might seem very harsh, but these fixed wides are just kind of makes the umpire's job a lot easier. It's a pretty good bit of keeping as well, just to kind of stand your ground there. Now, last one, Nisa goes up and over and out of the ground. Maximal 
We're fielding near the scoreboard. And that will take us to the end of the fourth over. It's walking sticks, 77 for one. It's just like a model of consistency. I said, if someone had to bat for my life in the European Cricket Network, kind of stable of players, it'd be a pretty good choice. The fact that he does it under pressure as well. I mean, he was under some immense pressure, for example, on that Group D finals day back in the ECL. He kept pumping out the scores. Hello to Dave B. Hopefully you're well. Hopefully you're... Enjoying your journey? Nice that you can pop in. Right, Yusuf side comes back. No surprises there. Only bowler to really keep things quiet so far. And overs of 20, 19, 9, and then 29. So the introduction of spin turns out to be a bit of a disaster for Sassel. See so what Drew like to do win the toss, bat, go big. This time he does get a little bit of bat on it and he'll toy with you, Mohamed Nisa. I mean, that's one that if he misses it, it's pretty much lights out, stumps everywhere. But just look at this one. It's a little bit of a toe on it. And when he plays this shot, he really commits to it. Actually, don't mind the bowler going at the stumps there. If you went fuller, then maybe you do get it past the bat. Because it's on a left, Nisa's able to kind of read the bounce of the ball, gets a better look at it. He's at 24 off six. Took a little bit of time to get going earlier. Not this time. He does it again. He will. You've got to get the length right. And I think this is four. Signal four. But if you just keep running in bowling length, he's got such a good eye. I and mean, the field is there, but he knows it's not a difficult one to hit it over him with the pace of the ball. It's looking large, isn't it, at the moment? 191 pace. Computer says 182. But yeah, I suppose the issue Yusuf Sai's got here just keeps bowling that length that is pick upable. Kind of does again here, but this time Nisa stands his ground. will take a single hoodie. You and Butterfield. Nice to have you in the chat with us. How's everyone enjoying their Peacock Friday? Hope you're feeling bright. I know it's a little bit kind of murky the conditions today, but hopefully you're, you're feeling bright and breezy. All right, well, that one is sliced and that'll be an awkward stop. He does well. Just took a little bit of a, a little bit of slice off the ground there. Last ball, the fifth coming up. All right, this time, Lisa tries it again, but he misses out. But he keeps his stumps intact, and that's the main thing. Use of sight, well, pretty good spell from him. It's the one breakthrough, 11 off that. Not too bad at all. He's held up, held up his end of the bargain. After five overs, Drew winning the toss. Batting in match 24 to 88 for one. After five. And so, of course, in France at the moment, we have plenty more locations. Brescia is one we're really looking forward to as well. At the Gina Brescia ground this time. And uh, oh, analysis here. Drew are the epitome of a team that have confidence in each other. So we get back to the action. And the first one is hit up in the air. And it's going to escape the field. Again, I think they want to probably check this one, whether it's four or six. Might be able to catch this one. That happened very quickly. Uh, because the teams have been, have been getting through the overs super quick at the moment. They don't quite have this one. Maybe to go to umpire's call, but let's see if there's if there's a look at this one. I 
And yeah, four is signalled in the end. That's what I thought initially. Now, lift it up and over the top. And Hamza Diaz is going to go into the 40s in style. Maximo. Now, this is looking like trouble for Southsell now. He's so good at kind of getting pace. Ewan saying, can't wait to see me in Wimbledon. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Well, not just you, Ewan. You know what I'm saying. Lift it up. Uh-oh. This is trouble for Sassel because Niaz has reached 50. And to be honest, it looks like he's just getting started. Niaz brings up his 50 in just 15 balls. It's lightning stuff and the hundreds up for Drew as well. Just the timing, the pure timing of Hamza Niaz. You gotta love it. Unless you're bowling to him. Hello to Steve Bush as well. Yeah, talking about ramping too much. That's a thing. I mean, it's a, it's a way to create a, a boundary out of nothing, but it also does kind of close off some other options. Now, Niaz is going to go again, and why not? He's absolutely smashing him at the moment. Maximo. Seis carreras más. 56 off 16. You know what I'm thinking. Niaz is looking on for a massive score. He does have two centuries in ECN cricket. And they're both in the ECL. Scored 115 not out versus Hornchurch in 23. Scored 103 not out versus Ginebrescia during championship week this year as well. Now he's annoyed with himself. But he might still get the results. Good bit of fielding that prevents the boundary in the end. And uh, I think they only get one there. Not keen on the second. I like to do more hitting than running, I think, this Drew team. It's fair to say. So Niaz will get a ball. Or Nisa, I should say. We'll get a ball. Munawa joins the Magical Club. That one would have been a wide down leg side, but who cares about the wide when you can go for six? That ends up in the tent. And Maximo to finish the over. Another 29 runner. 117 for one after six. Hello to you and again. I saw your last comment. All I'm going to say is that's what you think. Have a look at that scorecard. Mentioned that they're very productive. They don't generally have batters that use up balls. I mean, occasionally, I think Nabi made a seven ball duck in UCL, but it's the exception, not the rule. And to be honest, I look at 11 guys in that lineup that can all clear the boundary. Well, that one is a fraction short, and once again, it is going to go over the rope. Maximo, Niaz into the 60s. That one kind of teased the fielder out there, Sufyan Ali. Kind of went quicker ball first up. Asad Mohammed getting a ball here. Over number seven. Starts with another Maximo. Seven's quicker again, down leg side. Escapes the fielder. That's going to be four more. He has to 67. He's not stopping anytime soon. Manua having a bit of a tough trot as well. Dives to his right. Can't quite make the stop. So you can see now. Tom Judd's having a bit of a word. Keep Shamshad leading the side though today. All right, comeback ball. Who can stop the bleeding here? Oh, that's a nice shot. Straight. Really like that option. And that's going to get the result as well. Maximo. Actually on 200 plus pace at the moment. He with Hamza, is, he could actually hit the ball multiple places for the same ball. 
makes him a pretty special player. Like I said, if you if you were to kind of blur his face and his shirt out, I could still tell if it's Hamza Nia's batting. It's just very unique in his approach. And there you go. There's another one. That's going to fly Maximo. 79. And this is now looking like an absolute monster. Don't poke the bears, they say. Stung after that loss. Now, this one's in the air. It actually should be taken. Can anyone reach it? They can. And, well, Aska will take the catch. It's a bit of a strange one here. I think it's a catch, but look, when he goes to throw it away, I don't know if we can watch this after he goes, after he actually catches it. To me, he catches it, but then look, it actually slips out of his hands. Maybe that was on purpose. So, I mean, it's a catch. I honestly think they will pay this a catch, and Niaz, he's walking anyway. I suppose he held that long enough that the catch is complete, and anything he does next is pretty much irrelevant. Rafa. Hustles to the crease at number four. What a good innings though for Holmes and he has. He goes for 79 off 22 balls. Going on over 350 strike rate in the score. 139 for two. Credit to Asad Muhammad who finally forces a false shot out of him. Now, Rafa, well, he almost goes first ball and said he's going to get a boundary. Well, he's a man that actually gave a, a chance first ball last time. We saw him out in... Match number 22 went on to a really good cameo on the board. He's got 35 off 14 earlier on. So, this score gets big. 143 for two after seven. And something that just keeps getting bigger is the ECC. Now, 32 nations involved. So, decision this year to go into two different divisions. Challenger division will include 11 sides. Two will get promoted to the Premier. Now, but the ECCX, or the, the Challenger division, as it's now known, has its own finals day, has its own trophy, has its own MVP. And teams in the Premier division, that's the top 21, according to the rankings, they will actually have to be on their toes because one team will get relegated for 2025. Right now, Nisa getting into his work. Asuka comes on and Asuka disappears. Maximo! hit from Nisa, it's right in his hitting zone, right in his slot. Asuka drives around the wicket there. Now he's going to drag this leg side again. That's going to be four more. He starts, says, all right, my time to shine. Kind of did this with, with Rafa yesterday when Rafa was kind of on a heater. And then when Rafa got out, Nisa went up a notch. That's one way to get your phone call interrupted. On for 200 here. According to the expected score. Now that's it. A, a rolling cut. He gets it wrong line wise. And these are big sixes. That's car park zone. Nisa reaches his 50, reaches it in 13 balls. And like I say, he's actually played second fiddle for a bit of that innings. But he still reaches his 50 so quickly. 13 balls for the milestone. And really, with him there, you can see how that expected score is so high. Not short. It's going to be called a wide. It might be interesting from side on. Remember, if it's if it's above the head, it's going to be a wide. That's going to say, well, come on, isn't that isn't that kind of between his shoulder and his head? It's hard to tell from that angle. Side on normally will tell us a story here. I mean, his head's about the umpire's head. Yeah, probably is a wide, you know. Back to the action. Next one is 
A bit of a miss hit, but he's up. We'll get the single. A good call by the umpires. Perhaps there's a big kind of contingent of umpires this time in France with 10 umpires or nine at least getting the opportunity to officiate in the European Cricket Series. Rafa gets the strike back. Again, a lot of bottom hand in this shot, but just a single. Vissal in the chat saying he's looking forward to us coming to Italy. Well, we won't be, won't be too long before we're there. Certainly looking forward to it. Asuka is another one who looks like he's heading down the magical route. 19 off this over plus this. Now backs away Nisa. Toys with Asuka there. He carves it away over backward point. Maximo. What a way to finish the eighth over. Drew Certainly on 200 pace plus. Then 168 for two off eight overs. The thing is, Drew, I don't think we've ever seen them actually score a 200. I think their highest score is 189 on the network back in ECL 23. A lot of the time they've been chasing. They actually did hold the record for the highest run rate in a completed innings. And that was a bit of an interesting story. That's in the game that we like to call 13 Minutes of Madness. About a second. So pretty well bowled by Jabbar. He's coming back. He bowled the first over. Went for exactly 20. Yeah, against Tunbridge Wells, the English champions in ECL 22. So I'm going back two, two years ago now. They were able to keep the English team to it was 86 or 87 off their 10 overs. And then Hamza Diaz and Nabi chased it in 3.1, including an 82 run power play. That was a record at the time. Full toss, and you're not going to get away with those. Maximo. As Nisa moves into the 60s, he's going back to that, that game of 13 minutes of madness. The run rate in that innings was 27.8. Believe it or not, even that's been since beaten. There's back, I care. The Stethel chase of 94 in three overs. So that's over 31 and over the record now for run rate in a completed innings. And these records are getting scary, aren't they? This is sliced inside out by Rafa. Holding up in the air and caught. Nice catch. Really good catch out there. Rafa almost gets the journey. You can see the contact wasn't 100% clean. Asuka takes the catch. Rafa jogs off. Again, he doesn't waste too much time. He'll go six off four. Just the one boundary in there. You can see that would have been six, but Asuka robs Rafa of a Maximo. Cameron Amadzai loves to come out in this situation. Score 176 for three. Jamarali with his first wicket. Khan oh, travels and tours. Staying with the umpires. He should be umpire international level. Well, many of these umpires will get that opportunity this season. I will say the umpires, they really do get tested a lot because of the amount of games and obviously the amount of action that happens in a T10. It's a bit different to longer forms of the game. Ewan has a great question, which I will answer. To, my, to the best of my knowledge, as we say hello to Kevin as well, we'll be able to give you some inside scoop as well. Yeah, Nisa with a rare miss to finish the night. So, Drew just tip below the 20 and over for the first time in a while. Still in a really good position, 177 for three after nine. So, just going to see if there's any more up-to-date, up-to-date info regarding those English ECST teams. I'm trying to give you the most up-to-date that I've got. 
So, this is the last that I heard. There will be Wimbledon, of course, the hosts. Hornchurch, the reigning ECL champions. Tunbridge Wells, the 2022 ECL representatives and the 2021 English champions. And then Spencer CC are confirmed they are Wimbledon's rivals in the area. And Twickenham, the invitation's gone out to them. I'm not sure if they're 100% in yet. Anyway, this is lifted up. Cameron Amadzai is going to... Oh, it's unlucky. It's, it's such a great effort. It's going to be six. It'll be a maximo, but honestly, Sufian Ali does everything right, and he just prays at this foot. Comes down inside the line, but it doesn't. It's on or over. See it here. Unlucky. As he sees his toes on the line, he says, oh, well, step out now. Meanwhile, Cameron is going to get more runs. And so, oh, 200 might still be on, you know. And he's trying to swing this away to leg. It's a thick edge. And just might be waiting to see how far this is carried and where it's bounced. It has gone all the way. Maximal. So back to back sixes. They're 189 level with their high square over on the network. But they might have to stay in it for a while. This is Sky, the keeper. He goes left, he goes right, and he'll take the catch. Bashir looked organized under that high ball, had to track it, see how much it was swirling around. He's just uh, looking to the sky saying, what did I do to deserve that? He knew straight away that was his. Good technique there. So just get right under it there, almost take it lying down or bending back as a keeper. So, Cameron, he's back a couple of sixes, but he'll go for 13, and it's 189 for four. Well, here's Abdurrahman Amidzai. We did see him batting a little bit earlier on. Yeah, so that English ECN tournament, he's really looking forward to it. Cheeky bat swap there from Bisa saying, go on, have this one, it's working for me. Amidzai on the lefty, it's a very handy left arm pacer. Yeah, well, he gets it, and he'll get six, I think. Again, I'm going to have to check this, but to me, it looked like it went over the line. You're saying it's four. Well, I guess we agree to disagree on the first view. Let's have a look at the second view. Get this one. Four. Well, roll it four. Maybe it is four. Yeah, well done. Well, never doubted the fielder, really. I think I have to get my eyes checked. That'll be four runs. 193. Need seven off two for the magical 200. Oh, pretty well bowled. Hold up. Thought about stopping it and realised it was only a single and he, he let it go to the outfield. Oh, the scene is set then. Nisa, 65 off 18. Hasn't had a lot of the strike while he's been here. Dave saying this is... Nisar's 10th, 50 and 14 innings, a model of consistency. But a Maximo for the 200 then. Hussain, trying to stay in the dirty 30s, doesn't want a journey into the naughty 40s. Last ball coming up. And Nisa will get it and it's going to be dropped for six. Well, kind of sums it up, doesn't it really? Amjad Sandu made a pretty good play on that, but it will be a Maximo to finish. Nisa, another really good knock from him. He'll finish on 71, not out. And one of the things on my, my uh, final Frontiers list, or my bucket list, was to one day see a 200 chase. See that bit of animation going on at the moment. Did well, I mean, didn't have a lot of room to work with. Gets a hand on it. Probably would have settled just to keep it inside the field to play. But it does go to the magical 200 on the back of that Maximo and all smiles for Dreux, even though, like I said, still with kind of Nabi, the sleeping giant in the side, not really firing, but they had 79 from Hamzanias in there, 71 on out for Nisa. As we go back and look at the highlights, well, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of action. Nabi 
We've got one of the basics here. We've got the foot in, which was the main thing. So he wasn't run out. But he wouldn't actually last too long once again. As that one just got a little touch in apparently around the corner. But he got his middle stump tilted back by Yusuf Zai, who came pretty good in the third after his teammates had gone for overs of 20 and 19. Just holding it to nine, and spin came on, and that didn't really work out too well with 29 coming off this over. But Jerk, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of attack. You're going to get... You're going to get a guy swinging the bat. And that's exactly how it panned out. And then before you knew it, they were at kind of magical pace. Accelerated through that second half. Nisa got inventive. Kenny toys with the bowlers, toys with, with the field settings, doesn't he? They were 88 in the first half. They scored 112 in the second half on the way to the 200. Hamza Niaz, he looked on for the ton, didn't he, at one point. And for Sassel, well, they knew they were going to be up against it. That was a, a pure shot straight down the ground by Hamza. Hassan Mohammed, well, he did his best to try and keep things quiet eventually. He got a false shot out of Hans and Eaz, and that was well held out there. It was a little bit of a creative way to throw the ball away. But they're not worried about wickets. They know they're not running out of batters in this form of the game. It's very rare that they do, and you know, Rafa got caught in the boundary. That was one Maximo that was robbed, but a couple of others couldn't quite be kept in. That was a great effort from Sufyan Ali. Actually, the keeper, Bashir, would get Cameron Amadzai, but again, not before he'd contributed a handy 13 to the total. Amadzai got the lucky bat and got the result. He's that pitch just inside with the benefit of the replay. And then with the score at 194, Nisa teased the fielder. But he pleases the dress supporters as they bring up the magical 200 on the network for the first time. Pretty healthy looking scorecard for Drew with 79 at the top for Niaz. Nisa probably would have outscored him if you'd given him a little bit longer. He finished with 71 not out. 16 for Derby still hasn't given us that big innings that I feel is going to come at some point in this tournament. Rafa with six. Just quickly, Amadzai, Cameron with 13. And after Rahman came out, his first hit in the series, hit one boundary on the way. 10 wides, about par for the course. About 20 runs and over the rate. They end up with exactly 200. As far as the bowlers went, well, no one really had the answers for an extended period. That's pretty clear. A lot of magical overs in there. Wickets to Jabbar Ali as well as Zahir Hussain. He's on Yusuf Zai with one. Asad Muhammad with one. But you can see Jabbar Ali kind of kept it quiet-ish. He delivered the ninth over that went for only nine. Yusuf Zai had an over that went for only nine. But count the magical overs. One, two, three, four, five, six overs went magical. There was also a 19 in there. So just not able to keep the, the drill bats quiet for long enough. Anyway, we'll take a break and we'll be back after this. In fact, Rico Fool will be back live at the ground to take you through the run chase. And it's a big one. 201, can this be history made? We've already seen the unexpected become a reality today. I'll be back in the studio tomorrow to take you through days six and seven. But for now, Vinny Sandu here, Mr. Maximo for ECN. Back soon here on ECN with more European Cricket Series.
This European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello and welcome back. Thank you very much to Vinny Sandu in HQ who uh, talked us through the first match. And what a good one it was. And for the first time on the European Cricket Network, Drew is getting past the 200 mark. And that means that this is the bonus point equation. They've got to get just to 141 to pick up a point here at Sarcel. Sarcel, of course, went down to Paris Zalmi in the earlier match. And uh, well, they won't like the fact that they'll go down in two matches on the spin. So that means simply this. They've got to get to 201. And one thing that we heard Vinny Sandu talking about the other day is saying that he would love to see a 200 chase. Well, will it happen here in France at the Drua Cricket Ground? Well, Drua, remember, they were on the wrong end of a one-run chase, putting 161 on the ball. Balbinians chased it. And uh, they did it in style, didn't they? Needing 27 off the last. So Madra will not be wanting to make the same mistake here and looking to bring up the victory. And that man could be pretty key there. Uh, Tabish Barty, you can see that some of the players keeping those fingers nice and warm until they need to expose their fingers because it is a little bit nippy, it has to be said. Temperatures just around about double figures here. And with that wind that's blowing, it is chilly. All right, ready to go. It will be Abdurrahman Ahmadzai to start with the ball. And it gets worked away, but slight miscue from the batter. No run. Akib Shamshad, he was one batter that never really got going in the loss to Paris Zalmi. They lost only by two runs and a match that they feel they should have won. And when they look back at it, they know they, they definitely should have won it. So we're going to miss this time from Shamshad. Shamshad is a guy, though, that if he clicks, he goes big. And he's got uh, Zahir Hussain at the other end, who, well, he did click. And he did score a half century himself in that uh, match number 23. We've had uh, some high-scoring matches here today. I'll go through those with you in a moment. All right, well, that's the one straight down the ground, and that will be six runs. Saiz Carrera. So Samshad gets going, and there's Marzi. He's on the prowl for another catch. I think he's Marzi. Hello, and welcome back to everybody in the chat. I'm sure you all enjoyed listening to the sounds of Vinnie Santo. And uh, good to have you all back ready for this run chase. So six runs off the third delivery. A bit of an inside edge, and well, trying to stop this with a slide, but I don't think he's going to... Does he get enough on it? Oh, it just holds up. So they'll get a couple. I'm not sure if uh, Mohammed Shazab did get any of this at all. Well, let's see if he can catch up with it. And I don't know, does he get a toe onto it? Maybe. He does the splits, doesn't he? Trying to stop it. He'll come back for two. Ahmadzai. Left arm. That's good areas from him. Batter going nowhere this time. Nice to see that uh, Wahid Abdul is on the field. Remember last time he bowled one over. Wasn't his best in the, the defeat? And then he had some treatment the old magic spray went out there looked like it was like a side strain and he never bowled again and because he never bowled the second over they went to Nisar and Nisar of course was the one who was clobbered for 28 off the last over okay that's it and well there's the man we're talking about the the shoe phone specialist it gets through him he's not able to stop it it's going to be four runs so Abdul get through the headband bandit it's going to be four runs it's the end of the over so they start with 12 and of course they need more than 12 but I suppose I mean realistically they've got to believe they will go for this but the 141 becomes pretty key for them 
23 matches since it's gone aboard. I said I'd go through the scores that we've had here today. So we've been going at around about the 126 as the par score. But so far today, these are the scores. So uh, Balbinian's batting first against Paris Army, 140 to 73. Dr against Balbinians, 161 to 163. And uh, Paris Army against Sarcel, Zalmi, 143 to 141. And this one so far, as we see a wide. This one so far, 200. That's right, 200 to whatever Sarcel's put up here. So this is Wahid Abdul. Uh, he starts with a wide. Remember when he did bowl that uh, in that first match? When he was walking back, I said he looked very, very stiff, very rigid. Uh, let's see if whatever hit the niggle worse, he's got over it. Uh, that's a good delivery. Well, looks like... He has. Yeah, that's better. He's looking more himself. Sorts out the, the headband. Yeah, good movement there as well. That's a really good delivery. That's where you'd expect him to be. So, Wahid Abdul. Bowling to Hussein. And Hussein just not getting to the pitch of the ball. He's got to show the same sort of signs that he showed in the half century earlier. Still doing some stretching there. So there's obviously a few issues there. He's been working too hard in his restaurant. That's what it is. Look, I know all about it. And obviously having a, having a restaurant myself for so many years and also playing cricket, it's not easy, you know. And late nights, hit down the ground nice and straight. That's going to be four runs. There's no way that uh, Nisar is going to stop that. It's clubbed nice, straight and hard. Well, it's like a straight pull. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard work working in the, the hostelry of trade. Whether you're uh, working in the kitchen or you know, the bar staff or a waiter. It's a long hours, hard work, takes a lot out of you. And then if the next day you're getting up to play cricket, yeah. A good slower delivery. Just rolls the fingers on that one. It's another another swing and a miss. So fair play to him. And also, well, he's partner in the business. Uh, Amar Zahir was behind the stumps. Uh, can I just say, they do do fantastic food. So if, you, if you're tuning in and you know the area, or if you're ever planning to come to Drew, you have to go to Cheesy Us. Excellent food and great hospitality as well. And chance and can't get there. Just dropping before the fielder. And I wonder if this is a chance or not. When I first looked at it, I didn't think he... Nah, just, just dropping before him. The best he could have try to have done theirs maybe save the boundary and if he did it would have been a good save still though when you're needing 20 and over this is you've got to say very good over in, in terms of that all right catching opportunity same man who couldn't stop it now gets a chance to take the catch and he will hold on to the catch nicely done so a wicket there for abdul yes uh come on amadzai holds on to it and <laughs> Abdul enjoying a little celebration with Ahmad Zai. He does well, actually. He has to come a long way across to take the catch. And he does hold on to it. So there's going to be no special antics this time from Hussein. He's going to be out for eight of just six deliveries. Ahmad Zai comes across. Well, after dusting himself off trying to stop a boundary, he gets back up. And he takes the catch to remove Hussein. So one of the dangerous batters back. Bukas Bashir, uh, we saw him score a fine half century in a losing course in the very first match when they played Mitri. Uh, is he able to find that form again here? 
He's going to have the man who just took the catch. I'm to start, who starts down the leg side. And that's just going to be worked away nicely. So Akib Shamshad has hit uh, already a four and a six. And gets an, adds another four to that. So, Drew, what about that? 200 on the board, a team that have done many good things on the European Green Network. They also joined the 200 club with the score exactly 200. When that was happening, I was uh, obviously listening into the commentary and also uh, talking to some of the, the players and spectators around the ground and making my way back here. I could hear Drew, they wanted the 200. You could hear them. And when those wickets were falling, a couple of wickets fell there. They they thought they may not get there. But uh, one thing they were saying, come on, we want six. We want a 200. And when it came to that last ball, we want six. And when it was hit, there was uh, a little bit of tension when they thought maybe that Sandu was going to take the catch. But it wasn't to be. It ends up being six. So they're part of the Elite 200 Club. So stopped there by... Zahir, he catches a bit of this on his foot as well. Okay, sliced up. A bit of luck here for the batter. That's going to go probably clean over for six. Yeah, it is. But he's not impressed. Says, don't like that, don't like that. That's not fair, that. That's not fair. Didn't play for that shot, Gov, you know. He didn't play for that shot. Bit of luck, yeah. It's a little bit of sweat there, but it does go all the way. And six runs. Clearly over that boundary. Oh, well, this one could be five wides. It will be five wires. Well, come on, Amadzai gets a little bit heated. He said, Yard, are you going to do that to me? I'm going to bang it in. I'm going to make it a bit spicy for you. But, um, well, the spice backfires because he bangs it in so hard that it goes over the batter and almost over the keeper who gets a hand onto it here, but he can't stop it. So that's going to be a minimal five wides. They'll take whatever they can get, especially fives. And that one's been dragged. Yeah, we'll go to the boundary as well. So that's four more. And this over has gone magical. Self-inflicted, really, by Cameron Amadzai. There's still a couple of deliveries to go. Remember, they need to be going at 20s. Mm, this one's just a wild swing. Shamshad. I think if I was Shamshad here, um, I'm playing my normal game, but at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, I'll play my normal game, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to give my wicket away unnecessarily. I want to try and get to a good score as well because I think you see this as an opportunity to try and... Well, that's going to be four leg bites as well. That will be the end of the over. It will go uh, 24. Right, those four won't go down to the bowler, but it's an expensive over. In fact, that over doubles their score, basically. And the score moves to 45. So let's just have a look, like for like, the pl power play scores well, there you go only three runs in it but then look at some of those towers not just once but two times 29 uh, 26 a 25 and a 23 so yeah five of the seven to come were all magical and big magical overs uh, so they really did get the acceleration in good towards the end with, of course, Hamza Niyar, 79 of 22. And Mohamed Nisar, 71 of 19. Uh, that's just an easy shot, isn't it? It's not a good delivery. Bole, bole, bole. Ginna, sona. Shaka, lagya. Straying on the legs. It just gets helped 
on its way. Tabish Barty mentioned this before. It is a struggle that he sometimes has. <laughs> See if he gets it right now. The left armour. And he does outside the off, but that's a good look to hit. He gets a lot lucky here because this one plugs. And oh, that's not good running. Nabi doesn't pick this up properly. The batter should have got two here. They decide to just take the single and relax when really, if they were watching and went for it, they would have got the, got the couple. Some dark clouds coming over again, folks, which is never good. But, uh, certainly all of a sudden around the ground it's a, a lot darker it always feels darker as well when of course you've got these tall trees that go all the way around us we sort of closed in we're almost like it's almost like we're in the middle of this forest and it's a massive clearance and that's where we are you'll see that when you see the the view from ahead it's a full toss that gets worked away and the umpire just having a chat there with Barty probably saying hey you came right in front of me there Rockers Bashir would love to get in the runs here as well. A good partnership here would, would, would do them well. It's on the legs again, and that will just be easily flicked away again. So put them up in the air like you just don't care, Rumps. If that's six more. Barty, once again, doesn't get it right. Strays on the legs. So he, you see there, he does like to come from very wide. Often, I often wonder, and don't think Barty does this a lot. I'd love to see him come left arm over and just try something different and just see how that works for him. And now short and that will get peppered. That is a biggie. Bolle, 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 kiwagi, honey, I'll give what they, and there we go. People getting into their cars and saying, we're out of here because this is a dangerous place to be. Yep, there we go. There's somebody get in the motor and say, all right, we're out of here. Because that's coming too close for comfort. Whacked away. It's another magical. Hey, remember we said they have to go at magicals? Well, this is the second magical on the spin. And this time, the spin the issue. They just haven't been able to get the extra one away. And that last over went magical with two balls to go. But uh, only went. In the end for 24, courtesy of the four buys. This one, with the ball to go, it finishes on 20. So, they're there or they're about. They're just lacking just the little extra push that would help to bring that rate down a tad. But Sarcells, 65 for one. They've got to keep going and believing that they can make this happen, though. Because by having that belief, they will get also to that uh, the 141 that they need to get to. They don't want to lose out and get nothing from from this match. And I suppose they would have been disappointed, of course, that they didn't get the win over Zalmi. Oh, well, we know who this is because this guy has fooled a number of people, including myself, when he comes on the ball. Comes out of his hand and you think, here we go. Going to be a Gundy ball. It's that uh, the slow ball of his that uh, really dips viciously, Usman Khan, but this time the batter doesn't get fooled as uh, Sam Shad smashes it away for a big six. Usman back to the drawing board. Into the pads. And we'll get the run. That's a slightly quicker one from Usman. Now, new batter for him to bowl to, and I reckon he'll try the same thing again, as in that uh, the loopy, slower delivery, why not? There you go, and this time he gets it right, it's much better it's better directed so, Akib Chamshad misses out on it Sarcel, they've done the calculations. Din bola, chukke chai de. Oh, it's that slower one. And look at this one. It's just hardly gets to the batter. He plays far too early. And 
Thing is, though, you've got to think about where the keeper is. Zaheer's not standing up. He's standing fair way back. So you've got to use your feet. Standing in the crease, you're not going to get there. You've got to use your feet and try and get to the pitch. And gone. And there you go. It's as easy as that. And not a good dismissal, really. A keep some shot does what we've seen him do probably, I would say, on three occasions that we've seen him bat, giving the team a start and then getting himself out. So Usman Khan, after being hit for a big six, after that he's followed it up with uh, four dots, one of them being a wicket. There was a leg bind there as well. So a keep the captain, he'd be disappointed to get out that way. There's just no footwork. And... Uh, when you see that dismissal, it's almost like a, a schoolboy error. It gives an opportunity uh, to somebody else, and it's a Zulkamein um, Munawa. Munawa, we know he can hit the ball pretty well. I was giving him a hard time in the last match for the lack of intent with his running. And, well, he almost loses his peg straight away. That's the end of the over. He started with a bang. But it ended up with a nada, 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 a lot of nada, nada, nadas there for Sassel. It's not the over they needed. And in fact, that over really does hurt them. I said that they lost two opportunities earlier of making those magical overs bigger. Now, well, that over only goes for seven runs. The sixth go to the bowler on one leg by. 72 for two. So... It's an opportunity for me to say hello. You just had a look there at a number of events that we've got coming up. Make a note of all of those events. We've got a, a huge year ahead. This 2024 season on the European Creek Network is going to be huge. And we love the fact that they're all going to be with us there all the way along. I hope you've enjoyed your Peacock Friday. And I hope you enjoy the start of your weekend. And remember, stay with us here on the European Creek Network because the action will continue. And uh, we'll be here bringing you five matches per day all through the weekend as this European Cricket Series starts to hot up. And uh, this is a nice big hit from from Shamshad. Well, I've obviously got me batters wrong here. My apologies. It was actually Wakas Bashir that lost his wicket to the bowling of Usman Khan. So... Apologies for that, folks. Giving you the wrong batter out. Okay. That one's up in the air. And that one goes away. Well, actually, it, was, it is Munua. Maybe maybe I'm not. I don't know. What's going in here? Well, this is Munua. So I'm not wrong about Munua hitting the ball. And he gets another boundary. But it is Akib Shamshad that's still there. The captain. So the, the guy who got out was Bashir. But Munawa is the batter. And he's... Well, he will be out now. There's a good catch held. Nicely held as well. Uh, catching has at times been pretty useful. That, I believe, is Ahmad Zai, who holds on to a really good catch. So, Munawa, after hitting a four and a six... We'll go for 10. Same sort of thing I think he did in that earlier match. It's a good catch. Makes it look easy, doesn't it? So Munawa now makes his way back. So 10 for 3. Good catch held there. Almadai was having a good time out there in the field, isn't he? And Shazab. Takes the catch, so yeah, Akib Shamchad still there. It was, of course, Wakas Bashir that was cleaned up comprehensively by Usman Khan. That was down the leg side, will be a wide. Shazab back to the drawing board to the left hander. That's well hit, four runs. Could slog sweep, plants the foot down the ground and plays that away. So many important days on this day in history. I like in this one. And uh, born on this day, back on 
1933. No longer, sadly, with us. <laughs> Authentic, genuine leave to end the over. Well, <laughs> we don't often see too many of these, especially when you're <laughs> chasing 200 and one. But, well, that's uh, that Sandu for you. Uh, leaves that one alone, 88 for three. Yeah, so on this day back in 1933, cricket's first and only superstar umpire was born. Yeah, and of course, we're talking about Dickie Bird. And when he first took up umpiring, it was uh, yeah, just a modest first-class career with Yorkshire and Leicestershire. And, uh, but eventually, of course, he became uh, hugely popular and uh, would eventually write the best-selling sports autobiography in uh, the British history. And uh, he did it after 66 tests that he performed in. And it was an emotional farewell for him in Lords in 1996. But what a guy he was. And what a shot this is as well. There's the captain, Shamshat, who is still there. I was giving him out bold, but... He's still there. Of course, it was Wakas Bashir that went. So Samshad's still there. And looking to get a big score on the board. Let's see if he can. Also on this day, back in 2009, two days after obtaining a one-day international status, Afghanistan won their first match in the former by beating Scotland in the World Cup qualifiers in the fifth place playoff. And, uh, well, another Nabi, Mohammed Nabi and Samuel Shanwari made half centuries and the captain, Hamid Hassan, took three for 33 as they cruised home to victory by 89 runs. And then, of course, back in 2010, they beat UAE to qualify for the World T20 uh, World Cup in the West Indies. And uh, they're getting better and better ever since Guzman checks the field Shamshad and Sandy oh, nice looking shot that's a very very good shot and once again I've said this before about Amjad Sandu. he's a classy little player he's probably played a lot of cricket and some of the shots that he plays are what you'd expect to see in maybe the one-day game. And on an outfield like this, if you, if you do place it and time it right, you will get good reward. And that's a good shot. So they just want to tighten up that area to him. That means another one comes across on the offside. They're basically challenging him now to play the swivel. And he will take on the challenge and beat the fielder. So, they're liking this. <laughs> I'm liking this. So he says he plays his shot and then right at the end, he goes over to Usman in a friendly way. And he says, there you go. You sure you want to move him? And what are you going to do here now? And uh, just like you do, a little bit of banter with the bowler. Uh, Usman Khan now has moved that man a bit finer. Oh, he misses out on this. I think he may have got a little bit of something on that. So, yeah, just catches a, him on, on the leg. All right, the ball to go. shot really good shot he's hit that so hard well that's the bat <laughs> that was destroyed earlier and <laughs> that was a well that was a side as well but this one well it goes through that banner uh, hit that so well and the fielder does try and make a stop on it but no chance on it it is the end of the over 109 for three this is what's coming up next match number 25 the last of this day five uh, Paris Army who finally got a win under their belt against a team that you're seeing out there at the moment. So I say, oh, uh, seeing if they can, well, do it again. And if they are to do it again, that will mean that they get a win, not just over, over Sarcel, who are uh, 
well fancy team but over drew as well drew have already had one shock defeat today could this be another just dipping for the fielder who then reacts very well to make the start that's Amadzai out there again isn't he been good that part of the field so we got 31 of 17 balls for a point here for Sarcel. They've got the wickets in hand and they've got a set batter out there. They should do that. So Zeb just checking his field. The wicket keeper just making sure that all the lines are well covered. It's a little bit too high. Gets caught in two minds here. I think uh, I'm just Sandu. I think he wants to go for the, the pull shot. And then he decides he just maybe go for the little tickle. Look, I think he would have been better off sticking with his original idea. And this one will bounce just once to the side of the cube. Yeah, it's going to be six runs. Good hit. Yeah, don't change your mind. And go for your shots. And I'm just Sandu does. So that's a good, good shot. Nicely played. Bowler has a think about where he needs to be for the next one. As he played, wants to take it on and we'll get there. Certainly been plenty of magical overs in this contest. The last one from Usman also going magical. Shahzeb now taking the pace off. He's been bowl bowling pretty well. And Sandu just having a little word there with Shamshad. I'm not sure what he's telling him. And Shamshad goes high. All right, Amadzai. Oh, well, Amadzai is leaving this to. Well, let's see, here comes the throw in the end. So Amadzai. Thought for a moment he was thinking about leaving it to Nisar, who was coming across as well. Just while he's in the air, both look at each other. And then Amazai decides he will go himself. And it's just too far in front of him. I think this is the one if he's got to change, have the fingers pointing upwards. Then there's the throw. And, well, if it was a direct hit, they could have got to it. Or well, the keeper could have got to it and get it onto the stump. It would have been close. But a bit of a chance there for Shamshad. And Kenny dropped on 43. I ended that over from Shazeb. And Ahmadzai, who's caught very well, has already got two catches to his name. Not able to hold on to that one. 120 now on the board for three wickets. So 12 balls to go. And they're still looking for the 141 and so they definitely want 21 which yeah look with these two batters in that are well set you should get Barty is gonna bowl his second his first wasn't the best it did go magical 20 came from it some chat has faced him once already yeah, hit that out on the offside, so take the single. So now this will be interesting with Barty bowling to the left-hander because let's see if he does change it or if he will still be looking to dart it. Yeah, he's going to change. He's going to come now left arm over the wicket. Just checking his field. Oh, wild swing. Wild swing. Balti gets one through. Just keeps checking his field, doesn't he? Just wants to move. Yeah, I can see what he's doing here. He knows that that uh, Amjad Sandu does like to play that little dab. So he wants to block that shot. So he's got basically a wide short third man and a backward point so Amchad then takes him on the leg side 
takes a single. And they need a few boundaries here to ensure that they get to that 141 at the moment. It's 19 of nine balls. With the firepower Sarsel have, they should get there. And the, uh, right now, when, when the team scored 200 against you, you would take the point. And nothing from that one either, so it's another dot. Barty might, might have been expensive in his first, but hasn't he come back well here? Just the two runs from it so far. Well... Just get scuffed. It'll just be a single. So, tremendous over. Bombardi. They're going to have to do it the hard way, Sarcel, if they're going to get this point. They're going to have to do bulk of the work in the last over. And probably will be bold, I'm guessing, by Abdul. Well, I, I don't think they'll give it to Nisar. Let's just put it that way. And there's that... Uh, Quick, fast, short delivery. He bowls a good bouncer. Quality over. That's just class, isn't it? Absolute class. It's literally gone. Single dot, single dot, single dot. Three of the over. And after the first one went magical, only three of that one. So East Bell goes for 23. And it's one, two, three for three. So needing 18 of six to get a point here. Sarcel. That over really does hurt them, both the batters. And the thing is, the reason that over is so good is he's bowled it to two batters that are well set. Shamshad on 47, Sandu on 24, both hitting the ball really well. And the other thing an over like that does is that it takes the momentum away. So they've got to get it back. They're not going back to Abdul. They're going to go back to Ahmad Zai. Who bowls it exactly where the batters like it. He's down the leg side. And Akeem Shamshad gets hold of it and he brings up his half century. So after making starts in many matches and not going and going all the way and getting to a good score, this time he does. So he's on his 50. 53 of 25. Well batted. Ball Badanya. Up near Akeem Shamshad. No. Up near half century. Now 12 of 5 for a point. 12 of 5 for a point. Ahmad Zai retrieves the ball. Shamshad gets beaten outside the off. That's been the areas where he has lost out. Anything that's been adding or down the leg side, he's got on to. These are the ones really, especially with the no real third man. You've got like a gully stroke third man, a fly slip, I'd call him. A very wide, uh, she's got a backward point. Just try and get the, try and get the little dab in, try and play the upper cut, or try and guide in that big area between that short man in that catching position and backward point on the boundary. So that's another dot. It's getting tense here now. Four balls. Three left now, 12 required. Okay, well that is going to be a teaser, but it will go all the way. And that is going to be six more. So, two balls to try and get six runs off. To get a point. So, leaving it late. Two balls to get a six of the captain. Akib Samshad looking to try and get his team something. Sarsel, they fell just short of trying to get the win against Parazami by two runs. Are they going to fall short again? Well, they shouldn't. Oh, he spoils it. He spoils a wide. Oh, that's just... Oh, that's so poor, really, from Shamshan. I mean, fair play is a slow ball, but you just take yourself away from it. He spoils the wide. So now he needs to get six of the last ball. Captain, it could all be in vain unless he hits this ball for a six. Uh, it could be a wide. He might get another chance. 
Ooh. Not being called. Not being called. Let's see this again. Let's see it again. Let's see how close this is. Oh, that's for me, that's a wide. I mean, that's going. Oh, well, that's it. That's going to be the, the end of the innings. The umpire doesn't call it. We've seen so many of these called. And that one there, I think, probably is a wide. Doesn't get called. It means that that's the end of the innings. So Sarcel will finish on 135. And all of that work by Akeem Samshad, the captain, who gets to a half century. It will be for nothing because they won't pick up any point in this match. They fall short of the 141 they required. And Drew, after losing their first match in this match, day five, 161 to 163. Well, Balmineans chased the runs and left Drew in shock. They came back with a bang, put 200 on the board, and then they have uh, stopped Sarcel getting to the 141. That would have seen them steal a point away from Drew. So Drew pick up all the points in this one. So ourself, it'll be a disappointing day for them. They lose both their matches. And on both occasions, they lose out on the run chase. On one occasion, they lose out getting the win by just two runs. And this time around, well, they lose out getting a point by, in the end, works out six runs. But this is the way it started. You'd expect to see good hitting from Shamshad, and it was. He ends up getting a half century. Hussein, though, never really found his way in this one. And then he would hit out an Ahmadzai. Well, this time around, he wasn't able to stop it, but he dusted himself down after seeing the ball going through him and takes a good catch. So nicely done there. That was Kamran Ahmadzai. And then this was a little bit of luck, a little bit of good fortune as... Samchad started to build a little bit of a partnership. And that was a really nice shot. Him and Wakaz Bashir looked like they were going to go on to put good partnership on the board. But Bashir, after getting to 19, he got outdone by Usman. Those slower deliveries, Bashir just couldn't put them away. Never used his feet, really, even though the wicketkeeper was standing back. Munawar came out. He hit two boundaries. Then he had to depart. And uh, then we saw, uh, once again, Amjad Sandhu, who seems to be uh, the, the man who steadies things down a little bit. Also played some really nice shots, 1-6 and 4-4s. Uh, four but right there towards the end, just when they needed those extra runs, they let themselves down. But it has to be said that it was that one over from Barty, really, over number nine, which only goes just for three runs, which, uh, which stops them. And still, though, right there towards the end, with three balls to go, 12 needed. And the thing for was there that Akeem Samchad getting pad onto a ball that would have been a wide. And that meant six was needed at the last ball. They don't get it. And they don't get the wide that they're after. I think it's a 50-50 umpire's call. I'm tired. Doesn't feel that the whole of the ball has uh, missed the line. And therefore, a dot ball call. And that's the end of it. It's done and dusted. And this was it here. So that was the one that stopped the ball going for the wide. You can see the wicketkeeper looking at that. I think the wicketkeeper thinks it's a wide as well because he's running to the stumps uh, thinking that the play is going to go on and maybe he can get uh, a stumping in. So well done to Drew. You'd expect a top team like Drew to come back and find hard after suffering that kind of a loss when they, having put 160 on the board, were beaten. So Drew, being Drew, said, right, if 160 is not enough, we'll put 200 on the board. 200 was enough. Akeem Shamshad, 59 of 30. Uh, he'll be disappointed, though, with the fact that he wasn't able to get his team a point because all of that effort is basically for nothing at the end of it. Amjad Sandu, 24 of 12. He played his part, didn't he, in just keeping the scoreboard ticking and making sure that Akeem Shamshad got most of the, of the strikes. So I think Sarcel, they'll be disappointed. They came into the day with a good record, with a 2 and 1. But they go back with a 50-50 record, having winning, having lost both their matches here today. And uh, they'll know that, all right, they get well beaten in this one. But they know they lose the opportunity to pick up a point. And then in the match against Parazami, they gave away what they know should have been a successful run chase when they were chasing 144, losing that one 
by two runs. I'm going to leave you with the mid-match summary. Drew 200 for four. Sarsel 135 for three. Good effort from them, but they fall six short of picking up a point. We're going to take a short break here now of uh, just under 20 minutes time and then come back with the final match of the day. It's the second time that we're going to see Drew. They are two and one. It's also the second time we're going to see uh, the, the third time, I should say, we're going to see Paris Zalmi as well. They also are 2-1 two, two and one here. And let's see how this one goes, because both teams will be looking to come back with a bang. So, Drew, they're 1-1, one 1-1, and one, 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 lost one, winning the last one comfortably. Zalmi, they lost their first and won the second one against Sarcel. So, both teams have had a good win against Sarcel. question is, which one? will leave the happier. I tell you what, if uh, Paris Zalmi can get a win over Drew, they'll be over the moon. So join me, Rico Fall and the rest of the gang here, the rest of the European Cricket Network crew, when we come back in about 17 minutes. Ciao, hasta pronto.
European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello cricket lovers and welcome to the final match of match day five on this Peacock Friday. Drew are going to be in action once more against Paris Army. Paris Army, remember, they won their first match just uh, a few matches ago against Sarcelles. So that was a good win from them. So they'll be happy going into this one in a positive move. Drew, well, after settling uh, a little bit of a setback themselves, they came back strong in the last match, scoring 200. And they're looking to finish on a high. Let's see what happens at the coin toss when Numan and Nabi are with Charles Croucher, the tournament referee. Paris Zalmi to call. Yep. Tails is the call. And it's ahead. No surprises there at all. Nabi winning the toss and deciding they will have a bat first. The one thing that he's hoping is that he can find some form with the bat. Of course, he's got a wealth of talented players in his lineup. Niaz has been fantastic once again, again and so has the likes of Nisar. Both of them scoring 70s in that 200 score they put against Sarcel. So they will be going well again. But Nabi, yeah, he'd love to get in the runs as well. Then he's got the likes of uh, Rafa there as well. And maybe somebody like, I think, uh, Cameron Ahmadzai could be the key player in this one. Look out for Amazai with the ball. I love the effort that he puts in and he certainly does get a good reward as well. And Barsi will be pretty key for them as well. Parasalmi, they came into the day with no wins, but they get the win that they were after in their second match. Now playing their third, the same as Drew. They're looking to see if they can do it again. It's going to be unlikely because I think most people will be feeling that Drew will be big favourites in this one. But I think their captain, uh, Numan Amjad, has certainly found his form. He was great with the bat. He has now scored two half centuries in this series as well. And maybe somebody like Suleiman Khan or even Karim Shazad could provide him with good support again. I've liked the bowling of Safi Faisal. I think he's a good bowler. He certainly will entertain us again. And then what about uh, Rajalula? I think he was really good last time round as well. Whatever it is, though, they know that the bowlers are going to have to be at their best because Drew, they're scoring big runs. Having scored 160 and losing, well, they came back even stronger and scored 200. This time around, who knows where they can go to. But the one thing that Parazami have to do is if they get a chance, they've got to take it. And they need a little bit of the rub off the green as well. So final match coming up. Remember, we entertain your random questions here as well. So join me back in the cube for the start of the first ball. Yes, and lovely to have you. And a big shout out to everybody today that's been tuning in wherever you are tuning in from around the world. It's been an absolute pleasure and a big thank you to everybody that's been on the chat as well, keeping it entertaining. And also to all the moderators who do their bit to keep it uh, clean, positive and professional. Thank you for all of your work. You know who you are. And a hello to Nick, Steve Cook and Dave. And of course, Dave, it's missing you not being here, but of course, understand you're having to go back. I hope you're in the warmth and still enjoying the cricket. We've had a fantastic day here today. Runs galore, and we drew winning the toss and batting first again here. I get the feeling they're looking to pile on some more runs here uh, against uh, Parasami. Parasami, who themselves did pick up their first win in, uh, I think, quite a surprise when they beat Sarcel, electing to bat first. It was a positive move from them, and I'm liking that from their captain, Numan Amjad, who said we'll bat first, and then also went on and scored a fine half century. He's second of this series. You can see that what the win predictor is saying here, that it will be a big win for Drew at 90 to 10%. I can understand that, but, uh, hey, Surprises can happen, and I think Parazami already proved that. And Drew, well, they already experienced it themselves when uh, Balbinians got to the 162 required to beat them in match number 22. And if you want to watch another match again, or if you want to show your friends and share with your friends what the beauty of the European Cricket Network is all about, well, just ask them to go back and watch match number 22. Anyway, we're ready to start. The umpires are ready. Umpire Shashir and Arumugum are out there. And the first one up in the air could be a catching opportunity straight away. It will be. 
we will have a royal duck as uh, Hamza Naiz will go straight away. And how about that? The guy that was smashing the ball all over the place last time. The player of the match with 79 out of 22 helping Drua to get the 200 will go very first ball for a royal duck. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Goes for the shot to get it over the infield. Doesn't get it right. He's going to go. And, well, there's the Royal Duck. And Hamza, unfortunately, will get the... <laughs> Thing is, if you're not going to score any runs, get out of the way quickly. And that's what he does. Well, his failure will mean that one of the other batters will get an opportunity. So Hamza, he departs. Very first ball, it's a royal duck. Very simple, easy catch taken by Raza. That means that oh, Gujar, he just, he's got better during the day, hasn't he? He's, I remember his very first over in their first match against the Balbinians was not a good one. But how he has got good here now. Well, just as I say that, the very first ball that he bowls to Nisar is a big six. Well, remember, you've got Rido Niaz, well, Mohamed Nizar, he's been in good form as well. Remember, he scored a fine 70. And Fielder has to tread very carefully to try and get this ball. He's going into the jungle. Okay. Time for Nisar then. This guy has just been on a different level lately, hasn't he, Nisar? Big hit, six runs. The first runs as well. And that ball will take maybe a bit of time to come back. It does eventually come back. Nabi is once again the non-striker. And I'm at Nabi, isn't he? Desperate to get some runs. Goes wide, goes in the same area. Six more. Will that field of mile as well have just stayed where he came from? Because this one, maybe not as far, goes in the same area as... Uh, it's a good shot for Mohamed Nissa. Just loves batting, doesn't he, this guy? He's like a machine. They should be calling him Al Makina. Because he's a, a run scoring machine. Okay, well, nobody out there. So whether it's going to be in the field of play or not, it's always going to be six runs. And nobody's going to stop it. So six more. So after a royal start with Royal Duck, it's now gone shaka, shaka, shaka. As we've seen three big sixes on the spin. Okay, Guja. Two too wide, then one too far down the leg side. Maybe he can get the perfect Yorker it to Nisa. Field made few changes here, but really. You're setting a field here to a bad ball by sending another one over on the leg side. That's what I feel. I think you're better off protecting the off. And even though you put a fielder out there, he's not going to stop it. See what I mean? It makes no difference. If you're going to bowl a bad ball, good bad is going to put it away, whatever. You're better off as the captain saying to the bowler, look, I don't want you bowling on the leg side. I want you bowling out on the offside. Get the ball on the offside. I'll set the field for the offside. And if they try and play you over there and get it through. Fair play. And if they get it wrong, at least we pick up the wicket. Okay, three sixes and a four. The over goes magical. It started royal, and now it's called magical. And this one gets played down to the fielder. And Numan Amjad, the captain, does the fielding. 23 off the first. 23 for one. I suppose the question here is, is do you give 23 runs away? to get the wicket of Hamza Niaz. I'll leave you to answer that while we have a look at some of the places that we will be visiting. And wow, look, there's a new graphic. That looks a bit new. Uh, having seen the old one, it uh, stands out. So here we are in France. We've got Italy, Estonia, England, Cyprus, Czechia, Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, Italy, Austria, Croatia. And then it will be the European Cricket Championship starting on the 23rd of September. Following that will be Malta, Spain, and then we finish with the women's the European Cricket Championships back again. 
at uh, the home of European cricket at the Katama Oval. A humongous season coming up. And to add to that, we will also have some T20 action, both men's and women's. And also, there'll be some night series as well. That one will be a wide. As uh, Safi Faisal comes on to bowl over number two. Once again, though, Numan Amjad not backing himself to bowl at the top of the order. I think he's the best bowler. He's a wicket-taking bowler. And he, I don't understand why he doesn't want to use himself first. Good shot. Really good shot. Intelligent cricket from uh, Nisa. Just jumps across. And he knows where it's going to be. And that's the beauty of this shot from Nisa. He knows where the left armour is going to try and get the ball. Gets across early. Keeps his head nice and still. Plays it away. Showtime now here at the Drew Cricket Ground. Ville de Drew, bring it on. Aren't we having a lovely day? And it uh, looks like Drew are potentially looking to get another high score on the ball despite losing a wicket early. But all the runs coming from one man at the moment is the Nisastro. And this time he plays his out in the offside. So Nabi will finally get a hit. So Ahmad Nabi has scored, scores in the 40. I think the first time that we saw Drew, not the very first match, I think in the second match, as, as I look at my notes, yeah, scored 44 of 18 balls against President 11 in that win. But uh, since then, he's uh, got to double figures and then getting out. Well, one thing that Nabi needs to do for me, and I know that uh, Vinny's had chats with Nabi and sort of I've had a chat with him now and again, but I think he just needs to play the ball on merit. If it's on the offside, then play it on the offside. Don't try to muscle a ball, a good ball on the offside to the leg side. And uh, that's a good shot. That's what Narby needs to do. So that one is in that area to hit. So hit in that area. Stay still. He's a powerful guy. And once he finds his form again and he finds his rhythm, and it will come. I mean, you know, everybody goes through periods like this. You know, all batters do. And if you just have a look at the moment, the guy at the other end with him, and Nisar. Nisar is just flying. He's in the kind of form. He's in the form of his life. But... It won't always continue. He'll have a little period of blip, whether it's, you know, two or three innings, or it could be more than that. A bit like maybe Nabi at times, you know. But when you come good, you come good, and it all happens again. But the main thing to remember all the way through that is that you don't try and change what you do. Uh, you stick to the, the basics and the principles. And straight down the ground, it'll just bounce short of the fielder, who does well here. We'll have a look at this one more time. And just to make sure that he's not in contact with the ball here, that Numan, when he makes the touch. And I don't think he is. There you go. That's the picture. Brilliantly captured once again by Spring Media. Let's give them a shout out as well. They've been absolutely brilliant. The likes of Chris Tapps, Martins, and Arthur has been absolutely fantastic, guys. Doing a wonderful job. Shout out today also to Vinny Sandu, who's has stepped in and done a couple of innings for me as well. Oh, that's too high. That'll be a no. -y. That's going to be a no ball, surely. Haven't seen anything from the umpire, but let's have a look at this on the camera, on the replay. I am, I'm telling you, this is too high. I'm telling you, it's too high. Yeah, that's a no. -y. There's no doubt about it. No ball. And a free hit coming up. There's the signal. No ball. Free hit. Thank you very much. And that's why Spring Media is so good. They spot anything and everything and whenever we need we need an answer to something they give us the answer so well done again to spring media all right free hit coming up and mohammed nisa is going to be looking to gobble this up will he get funky will he get funky nah he just stands delivers catch taken don't get excited won't be out and nobody does actually <laughs> There's only one man who I see at short third who's got his hands in his head because he probably said, yeah, remember we had the classic one earlier when there was an edge and caught behind and the wicket keepers celebrating while the batters are running. And, uh, and then the next ball got smashed by 
the batter for six. And that was uh, also Sarcel. And when Sarcel looked back at some of uh, that loss that they had, there's so many things that they did badly. Anyway, here's the way the tables are looking. So Zalmi did, did get the first win, but they're still at the foot of the table. Drew, a win here and a good win here. Could see them go top. If they get all the points here again, they go to the top of the standings. Shot. That one will stay hit, and that goes over the less play cricket banner, stronger together. And there's going to be six runs. Powerful hit from Narby. Don't want to be bowling it in that area to him. Good job. Gets the ball back again, and. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. This, I think, is going to be a seven. How do you get seven in cricket? This is how. It's a seven up, and it gets absolutely muscled over the boundary for Narby. You know, when you're not in the best of form, little things like this help. Full toss. Wallop for six. Seven up. No ball. Free hit coming up, the license to go the full Monty. Nami's moved on to 19. 50 on the board already. So, good job. We're just having a slight delay here now because I reckon the fielder, I'm not sure who this is. Uh, I, I reckon it's uh, uh, Rujo Ula. He's got an issue. He's holding his arm. Now, I'm not sure what's happened or what's developed. Remember, he's got to be listed as one of the bowlers. He was the pick of the bowlers. Well, hang on a minute. I want to go back to him in a minute. Oh, shot. Oh, six. Narby right out of the middle. That disappears. I wonder if he ever shot at that guy. I mean, that was Roger Ruler. Well, as he nicked Narby's shirt, he had Narby on the back of his shirt. This is the real Narby. The real Narby. Please stand up. Boom. Shaka lug yeah. That is the real Narby. Well, that's how you get 13 from one ball in cricket. Well, there he is. He's hurt himself. I don't know if we can see the back of him. I mean, if he turns round, we probably will. Well, he's got Narby on the back of his shirt. I don't know what he's doing with Narby in the back of his shirt. There's Koresh Rajula. But he's hurt himself. I don't know what he's done. Maybe he's been stung by a bee or something. Uh, we wait for that ball to come back because it went a long way. Yeah, going to have to keep in mind that I... Paris, Zalmi, I don't think they have a 12th man listed. So if he is going to come off, and if he's in that much pain, I don't really know what he can do. He, he's holding his wrist. So they're going to have to keep an eye on Rajula. Good comeback. Well, good job. Good job. He's gone for. 42 already, 19 of this over. And one thing that, uh, this is the mistakes, similar sort of mistakes that uh, Parazami are making here that they made against Balbinions in the first match. I just don't think they're getting the bowling right. They're going back to bowlers who probably shouldn't, they shouldn't. That is just huge. That is huge. That is gone as high as it has long. Six runs. That has gone so high. And Gujar looks like he might be celebrating, or probably not celebrating, but bringing up a 50 of his own. That has been blasted high. So Nabi just getting it where he likes at the moment. You've got to be trying to go outside the off to him. Get him trying to cut a ball. Uh, not there. All right, high in the air. So high. Numan Amjad coming underneath it, and he holds on to a very good catch, and Narby will go. And uh, gets this one wrong, Narby. He goes high again. Watch the technique of Narby here. It needs to be, he goes high up in the air when really those hands should be coming across the body. He should be hitting that onto the leg side. That ball should be flying over cow corner or square leg. He's gone for it straight down the ground and uh, offers a catch. Narby, though, he will go for 31 quick runs, 31 of just uh, nine deliveries. Well, it was 31 a minute ago. Now it's changed. I don't know what's going on here. And 28 is now listed. It keeps on changing. Let's go back to it again, shall we? 
All right, there he goes. He's come back up again. So I was right, 31. 31 off nine balls. Good catch by Newman Amjad. Because that's another one. Though it's not where Nabi wanted it, it still went a long, long, long way up in the air. So, Gujar, I suppose, I said before, would you give 23 to get the wicket of Hamza Nias? Okay, maybe. And in this over so far, he's, what's he gone for? 25 for the ball to go. Would you give 25 runs to get the wicket of Nabi? Firmly hit, and on the offside, that's going to be four, and that will bring up a 50. A 50 that maybe Drew supporters will applaud, but not Paris Zalmi. Good job, will go for 52 of his two overs, but he will take two wickets, and the wicket of Niaz and also Nabi. And just have a look at where they are here, 66 for two. 29, that one goes for, and his first one went for 23. Safi Faisal's over went for 14. Okay, what do they go to here still not seeing Numan Amjad so I think they're deciding let's try and take the pace off maybe that's going to be the answer so Kamal Patel gets given the ball and looks like the keeper if he wants to stand up he's going to have a lid now he decides it's okay I won't stand up so here we go Hits it towards Newman. Can just be a single. All right, miscue. Another catching opportunity. Fielder gets under it and takes a good catch. So Patel comes on and he removes Mohamed Rafa. Rafa not quite having it his way, is he? We know he's an exciting player to watch. He scores runs quickly, but this time round, he's only going to last two balls. It'll be a four off the first, and now Rafa gives his wicket away as well. So you see Mohamed Nissar is running out of partners. Rafa hasn't been able to put a big score on the board here today. He made 35 quick runs of 14 in the 161. Uh, he's going to get out of the way pretty quickly good catch so Raza he has caught well today Raza he's got his own technique but it works for him and Patel well done to him gets the wicket 67 for 3 and uh, Nisar has a chat with the new batter that comes out an opportunity here for Dawood Ahmed Zai, who comes out before the likes of someone like uh, Cameron Ahmed Zai. So, places out, gets it past the infielder. Wait, 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 is the call. Doesn't want to take and chance the two. Tell. Good start from him. Now, this will be the real test, though. There's, he now bowls to Mohamed Nisar. Wouldn't they love to get the wicket of Nisar? It's pushed wide. I don't think that's a wide, though. It doesn't get past the line. We see what the umpire thinks here. Should be just a, a buy signal. Come on, umps. Give us a signal. Thank you very much. There we go. Yeah, that's fine with me. That's very similar to the sort of delivery that was bowled last up in that last match. That Akeem Shamshar just left. This one gets played away. Let's just have a quick look at the height of this. I think it's okay. I think it's just below the waist. And inside his crease, let's see. Yeah, it's okay. 
with the quicker one bowl there by Patel. Reaching for it, Fielder is there, and oh, he drops it. Una, dos, tres, and down. Igdotin, Talege, oh, Palea, Palea, Gia, 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 Gia. The opportunity, and that's the one that you've got to try and take. Nisar is the key player, he gets dropped on 29. He gets a number of chances, but Dawood Amadzai can't hold on to it. And that was the big one. Just make a note of that. 29, Nisar gets dropped on. End of the over. A very good over for Patel. Takes one for five. Should have been two. Should have been two for four. Should have been two for four. Well done, Patel. Just slows things down a little bit. 71 now for three. And now it will be Numan Hamjad who's going to have a ball. So I just wonder, that because taking the pace off was successful, whether it would have been an opportunity for another slower bowler. High in the air. All right, drops one. Can he get another? Can he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. And, well... The catch has been taken, and what a catch this is. And, well, the man, the star from Nomeo and Juliet, comes along and takes a great catch. What a catch this is. What a moment. Oh, this is absolutely tremendous. Now, I don't reckon there's a lot of people that are not thinking he's catching this ball. That is super duper. What a catch. Absolutely brilliant. Ishan Javid has just taken a fantastic catch. And what an important catch that is. Mohamed Nisar, after being dropped on 29, well, he only gets the one life. Javi just takes an incredible catch. That is sensational. Well, make a note of that, because you'll be seeing that on the social media. I can tell you, Will, you will. Numan Amjad comes on, and from his very first ball, he takes the catch. And that is just incredible. What a catch. I mean, it's just superb. He's got no right to be catching this. So there he is. Well, you're probably used to seeing this man <laughs> in as garden ornaments all over the place. The man from the star from Nomeo and Juliet comes along and takes a cat. And that is just unbelievable. What a catch. What a moment. The European Cricket Network making players dreams come true. He'll be showing that to his friends and his family for years to come. I'm telling you that. Oh, that's a spicy delivery. That really is. Well, he never wanted to lead the wicket keeper, not to the slower bowlers. Maybe he wants it to the quicker bowlers. This one talks. It really does. Okay, Usman Khan is the new batter. Well, that was quick. Well, all sorts of things happening out there at the moment. So, Nisar removed after a wonder catch. A lucky 13th ball for him. And, uh, Javid, what a catch. What a moment. What a highlight. And it's the captain again, Amjad. Now, how many times? I bet you the chat without even looking. This one gets played away. That will go to the boundary. But without even looking, I bet you the chat is already saying, your best bowlers have to open up. And he is one of your best bowlers. He does need to open up. Because when you're playing top teams, if you can get the top batters out early, you give yourself a chance. If not, well, they get off to a flying start. So even if they have a little stumble along the way, they still get to a competitive score. Amjad. Well, ball, Amazai. It's a little bit predictable, isn't he? He's not really watching the ball. He's already decided the shot he's going to play before the ball comes to him. And he plays and misses it. Top over. Two top overs. Patel, he only conceded five. Should have had another wicket. But at least that one, that drop doesn't cost him. 
Uh, gets hold of this and oh, just out of reach of Gujarat, who almost, if he gets a hand to this, could have pulled off something amazing. Don't think he's that close to it. And also, I think if he does catch it, is he going to be able to stop in time? I don't think he would have. He would have had to release it. So, Ahmadzai, living dangerously, swinging and missing, a bit like a rusty gate, but he does get hold of a few. And, uh, at the moment, that's 10 or 5 deliveries for him. I'm just looking to finish the over well. And he will. Good areas. Dot ball. 80 for 4. Plenty of cricket coming up over the weekend as well. And this is what's happening tomorrow. We start with the Knight Riders taking on President 11. That'll be a good match. President 11 are also in action against the uh, Balbinians. Haven't they had a good day today, Balbinians? And uh, we got uh, the Paris University Club in action as well. So plenty of good cricket tomorrow. And tomorrow, well, I'm going to be off for the day. So Vinny Sandu will be talking you through the matches remotely from HQ. I know you all liked your little burst of Mr. Maximo today. We'll have Maximo with you tomorrow for Saturday. In the air and good ground fielding. Keeps it to a single. There's Patel. No surprise, really, does come back. Launched big. That one is going to probably go over the fence, is it? Just hits the base of it. So big six from Ahmed Zai. And one thing you can't be bowling to Ahmed Zai, if you have a look at the ones that he has swung and missed at, you know where you need to be bowling to him. Yeah, he's the sort of batter you're sort of saying, all right, show me if you can cut a ball. Because I think if you're putting it at his body, and if you want to know if he can play the, the pull or the hook shot, I think he's already answered that. High. Big time high. Who's going to get there? And nobody. Nobody. I think this is a bottle job from Gujar. If I'm honest, this is Gujar's catch. He bottles it. And I think then as a result, Tawud Ahmadzai, who has taken a good catch, has to try and get there. This is Gujar's catch for me. But Gujar doesn't fancy it. He puts the brakes on. And then that means that, yeah, you can see Tawud, he just can't get there. So, yeah, you've got to want it. Firmly hit out on the offside. They don't take the run. That's a good call, actually, from Ahmad Zai. Good stop. That's been absolutely crunched. As uh, Safi Faisal makes the stop. Launched. Going all the way. Bolle, bolle, bolle. Brakina Saraki. Why? Gehenial. Gehrande. Zays Mass. And uh, clubbing time. Drew, even with the big boys back in the shed, they're still scoring at a very healthy rate. 95 for four with the ball to go in this over. And this one will go to the field. Oh, Gujar will make a meal of it. Will they take the two? Yeah, they will. And I think this one hits the deck and deviates. Gujar sticks out a hand. Makes a stop, but can't stop the two. 97. Four wickets down. At the end of six overs. Expected score. Oh, 193. At the moment. And that thing is, I think that's... Mm, I can see where they're coming from. If they get there, i got to admit, I'll be a little bit surprised. Uh, even though Amadzai is hitting the ball pretty well at the moment, they have lost some of the, the, the key cogs in the side. Even though you still do have the likes of uh, coming Amadzai still to come out there. Barty can hit the ball big as well, can't he? Shot. That's a really good shot. No doubt about it. Uh, Usman Khan hits his first boundary. And this is a delight. We've seen some terrific shots of all kinds of caliber. But when it comes to the cut shot, none are better than this. That is just beautiful.
Really good shot. Just gets into the perfect position and plays it beautifully. Watch this. Yeah, they don't come any better than that. Great shot. Similar sort of delivery, but this time, ooh, bowler don't like it. I must admit, I'm not that much of a fan of this as well. Let's have a look. Numan Amjad is pleading with the umpire. Let's see this. Yeah, that's not wide for me. Now, it, the umpire may say he can't see it. Yeah, he can go on his, he get on his walkie-talkie. When I say can't see it, sometimes the bowler tends to follow through and sort of obscures the line a little bit. So just use your walkie-talkie. It's in the air. It's trying to get it in between the two fielders. Good work there, done. There's one fielder backs up the other. It's thrown in by Faisal. Amadai, I'd like to see the back of him at the moment. He's has swung and missed at a few, but he's connected with a few big bombs as well, hasn't he? Just like this, because that is in his slot. And he's trying his best to get one over the fence. He keeps landing just short, but well, pretty soon he will. And I'll tell you something, if he gets it over this fence, it's a big hit. Absolute monster shot well that's a biz away super six and I think it does it does get over that fence only just but is able to be retrieved uh, I'm Judd what next short again but this time it's more straight at the body hit it hard but to the fielder Raza Hassan who's been good all the way through in the field makes the stop. Captain thinking, what next? Who's bowling next? Who would I go to? How do I keep this score to, well, around about a 130, 140? Well, that's just class. A really classy shot once again here from Usman Khan. Isn't he a clever player, Usman? And once again, he just waits for this, plays it beautifully. Obviously, he's shown his ability to the ball as well. Very clever bowler with that slower delivery. His variations of pace. And uh, these two putting together a pretty decent partnership at the moment. Usman and Ahmed Zai. Well, he doesn't know too much about this. He's not where he wants this to go. But that is going to be a genuine Baximo. Six runs. He's looking to play this down the leg side. But he gets lucky. And I reckon that gets a big chunk of the, the back of the bat. And goes all the way to six. And that is a 120 on the board already at the end of the seventh over. 18 balls still to come. And Drew, they are eyeing up that 190 again, aren't they? And can these two take him to it? And uh, back on this day in 1987, greatness was firmly thrust upon Sri Lanka wicketkeeper opener Brendan Kurupu. Uh, but only for a day or two, as he became the as he became only the third person to score a double century on Test debut against New Zealand and against the likes of the Richard Hadley and uh, and all in Colombia that was Grupu did it the hard way too he's 700 the 777 minute innings is the slowest double hundred in first class history Brendan Grupu back on this day in 1987 also mentioned today it is National Garlic Day do you like your garlic I must admit, I like me garlic. As I'm off tomorrow, I can really get dirty with garlic today. Nobody to complain. And, uh, yeah, I tell you what. French onion soup would be nice with a bit of extra garlic. And, of course, a bit of extra chilli. I think he wears this. There's Usman Khan. He goes for a similar shot as before. And the last time he got the back of the bat, went for six. But not this time. This time he gets it on the arm. 
Silliman Khan. Here's the bowler. Yeah, garlic, onion soup, nice bit of French bread. Hey, have you seen the post on the social media? And uh, if you haven't, go on to the, the social media, European Cricket Network. And, of course, we are in France. France is known for its baguettes. And, uh, well, let's just say that some of the batters have been uh, uh, doing the business, using their favourite baguette. Uh, maybe we need to do one with onions as well, I reckon. Maybe the bowlers one could be the onions. Yeah, a big shout-out to Dan Oros, the ECN uh, photographer and also, I suppose, a videographer now as well. And, uh, putting some fantastic stuff together on social media. This one will go all the way. Seis Gerridas! Absolutely mullered. Amadzai smashes another one out of there. Well, he's the left-hander. If they keep feeding him like this, he's uh, man, looking to get a, a cheeky 50. Yeah, garlic. Uh, Egyptians worship garlic as a god and even used it as currency. Uh, garlic also supposedly gave strength to Greek athletes and warriors. Uh, warded off the evil eye and not to mention warded off the vampires as well. Thank you, Dracula, for that. It's also Sylvester the Cat's birthday. He first was introduced to the world back in 1945. Six more. Uh, this ball ain't coming back. This is not coming back. This is knocking the conkers off the trees. Is knocking the conkers off the trees. But as long as it leaves the squirrels alone, it's not a problem. Alle, adegla, shakata maar dita. Oh, kitte ya shorty jai. Meri ya do din photo vi khit de. Smile, please. Click, click, click. Lovely shot, lovely pose. And uh, wow, Abdurrahman Ahmadzai is turning on the style here. 45 of 15. Slow, hit firmly, and should be fielded, will be fielded. Kamal Patel does the work. And uh, Ahmadzai disappointed he's not able to put that slow ball away from Zulman Khan. Just checking with the umpire how many to come. Slower ball again. And again, success. I just think that they just lost the plot here a little bit with Patel Bold. A very good over. Only three runs came from it. Remember that? And then straight after that, they they went back to pace. I just think you've got to find another slower bowler in there somewhere. There's got to be one. And issue that they have here at the moment is that uh, Rujaula, who did bowl earlier in the win against uh, Sarcel, he took three wickets. Three for 26. He's holding his arm. And he's obviously not in a position to bowl. We noticed that earlier. So he's done something. I don't know what it is. So he can't bowl. They're trying to hide him in the field. I'm guessing because there is no 12. So they've got to find a, another bowler from somewhere. 137 for four. They'll go back for now to Safi Faisal. Who will start with a wide? He looks at the umpire. It's almost like a bowler thinks, oh, am I going to get away with it? Looks at the umpire. Let's see what we think here. It's always difficult with a bowler, a lefty that's going across. And, yeah, you see that for us, it's hard to tell. I'm, I'm, I'd be guessing if I say I think it's fine. The umpire is in the right place to see it. He didn't like it, though, does he, Faisal? Shot, and that's a very good catch. Very good catch. Hits it well, because it's a good, clean pickup. But Nguyen Amjad, I have to say, he's on a different level with his catching here today. He has taken some tremendous catches. This has been hit pretty well. Gives himself some good room. Doesn't try to hit it too hard, does Usman Khan. He thinks all he needs to do is get the timing on it. The only thing he doesn't account for is Numan Amjad to come across and take a very good catch. 
Fine 18 made from his money. Played some nice shots along the way there as well. But once again, it's Amjad. Takes the catch. And will remove Usman. And he gives Faisal a wicket. A wicket that he deserves as well. Safi Faisal. Now bowling to the new bat. And uh, just from the build off the man who faces that first ball, I can tell you it's Kamran Amadzai. Already, I think you're in a territory where if you're expecting Prozami to get to, it's going to take something incredible. It's going to take another super effort from their captain. Remember, they have managed to put a good score on the ball when they batted first. That's how the only match that, not that they've won, the only match that they've got any points from is when they have batted first. And that was against Sarcel when they got 143. And batting second just hasn't worked for them. So already, I'm a little bit concerned just how many, how many they may get to and trying to get well, even a point here against Drew. But if today has taught us anything, is that you never ride a team off. We saw that yesterday as well in that game. That was won by President Levin. This one will go all the way. So six runs, powerful hit from Kamran Ahmadzai, who is a powerful man. Uh, smashes this away. So in the 140s, just want to have a look if that 193 expected score has changed at all it's just stayed on 193 let's see what it's saying it's still is that stuck is that stuck on 193 somebody give somebody somebody give you a screen and not have a look at the clock by the way he's got to get a couple of balls in here right got to get this back to the bowler really quickly really quickly clock is ticking get it oh stop talking give it back time time tick tock tick tock tick tock oh, they don't know do they somebody better tell them Oh, well, they, it could be a penalty here. Could be a penalty here. Clock is ticking. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Be interesting if there's anything to add. If you go by the clock the way it is. Well, hang on a minute. Now, that wicket has been taken. Now, this will be interesting. I'll be very intrigued to see what happens here. Now, the time did run out. But now that wicket gets taken there. So you'll get, a wick, you'll get a minute added on. So that wicket just there, I reckon, saves them. That wicket probably saves them five runs. Because I reckon that there's no... Now, the, the thing is, though, the time did sort of run out before that ball. So I'll be interested to see what happens here. I reckon, I reckon it's still going to be five, you know. Because... I mean, they're looking at each other. There will be five. Keep an eye on the umpire. Let's keep an eye on the umpire. See if, if we see a signal from the umpire. We may have already seen that signal. But, yeah, I think it's already been signaled. There's going to be five penalty runs going on here for slow over rate. Up in the air. Should be another wicket. It will be another wicket. So, catch gets taken. I'm just going to go to my graphics here and see if... Well, I haven't seen anything added on yet. Nothing's been added on yet here. And so I'm waiting to see if they do add anything on here. I could see on the corner of my eye from the, the tournament referees that they were looking... They were signaling it to the umpires. I didn't see it myself because for me the question was... I know that the time ran out before that last ball of that ninth over was bowled. But then there was a wicket. So when there's a wicket, when there's a wicket, the minute goes on. But the time had ran out before the wicket. So I think you'd have to say, you'd have to say there that the time had run out. So I know that, that Marzi is the our project manager today. He's here with me. So... Marzi can hear me as I'm talking. So what I was seeing there is with the ball to go, the clock ran out. So that would be 
obviously a five run penalty but then the wicket was taken last ball so that's a minute added on so what's the say to play there is it five or isn't it Marzi Farzi is saying it's five there you go everybody so it is five you probably see that's probably been added on now and yeah it has been added on so five penalty runs being the thing is though I have to say they didn't rush to get that ball in they could have got the ball in they just took an age. You heard me trying to help them. I did try, everybody. I was saying, jaldi, 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 go on. Nobody listened. In the meanwhile, this one will be helped away to the boundary. And that's going to be leg buys, I think. I think it comes off the arm. The umpire's not signaling anything yet. We're waiting. We're waiting. Scorers are waiting. Give us a signal. Four runs given as off the bat. No, well, I didn't see off the bat. I thought it was... I thought it was off the arm myself. The batter's not going to complain. The batter said we'll take it. Plenty of talking points at the end here. Still a couple of balls to go. And they're running. And they'll take another... This one, let's see, should be a leg by, I think. Not getting any signal. So. Another one that has to go to the batter, I suppose. Batters ain't going to mind. Why is that score stuck on 193? What's the matter with it? It can't still stay at 193. It can't be 193. It won't be 193. The catch gets dropped. Get the throw in. And in comes the throw. Batter might be run out here. It gets in. What's wrong with it? Oi, move, 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 move. My expected score still says 193. And uh, I'm going to get a bit of tape and just put it that part of my screen so I can't see that 193. I kept looking at that. I started to make reference of the 193 when I became aware of the time issues. The 193 doesn't change. Somebody put some change. Anybody got any change? Can somebody put some euros in that little meter there so that clock can start working properly? And uh, it won't be 193. I suppose it's a, you've got to say it's a bit of a, a good comeback at the halfway point. It looked like they would probably get to, I don't know, a kind of a 170, 180 score. There's still a wickets in hand. It finishes on 158. Let's take a look at the highlights. And 158, thanks to five penalty runs as well. And uh, the start was disaster because Hamza Niaz would go for a... A royal duck, and then there was uh, a little partnership put together between Ahmed Nabi and Nisar. And Nabi found his hitting power and hit the ball pretty well and pretty far. This one clears Numan Amjad. There's nothing he can do about that one. But then this one, I think, is the sky. The, the ball before he smashed big, went a long way. Really good catch. Numan Amjad, his catching has been absolutely fantastic all through the day and that was a nice one as well taken by another guy who's caught well Raza that one uno dos tres pero no puede eh? no puede that would armor die couldn't hold on to it this is an up and under and it was a great catch well there he is the man who, who who's escaped from somebody's garden where he was doing gnome duty comes across and takes a wonderful catch uh, what a great catch that is and what a lovely moment that is for our friend Javid. Ishan Javid takes one of the catches off the day. Then that one was the pose off the day, really, from Ahmed Zai. Didn't he hit the ball pretty well? Smashed it around to all parts of the ground, but he would finish 47. It doesn't quite get to a half century that he probably thinks that he deserved. And that's a nice catch there taken as well by Khan. And smiles there, but those smiles turn into a little bit of well, annoyance, I suppose, when they did give up those five penalty runs. It was an interesting one because I saw it unfolding in front of me with the ball to go. And as he starts to run up for that last ball, the clock runs out. So technically then the time runs out. But then there's a wicket. So they get a minute. So the question is, does that minute apply for that ball or after that ball? That's the question. It's probably going to be a, a talking point. And I was asking Marzi about it, and Marzi looked at me and nodded and said it's on. And just like that, it did appear 
on the scorecard as well. So the five penalty points did go on. And as a result of that, they finished on 158. A good knock there. Uh, as I said, from Amadai. He looked a bit shaky, went out there, but he scored 47. 30 from Mohamed Nissa, and Nabi gets 31 as well. With bowling figures, uh, Gujar, a half century for him, but he does pick up two wickets for 52. Two for 24 from Safi Faisal, the pick of the bowlers. And I have to say, Numan Amjad, you've got to start opening with the ball. You're the main strike bowler. you got to open with the ball and see if you can get some of those early wickets earlier. So it's not quite as huge a score as it once seemed. 193, and the computer was sure it was going to be 193, even with the ball to go, but it wasn't. 158 it was, and it's going to be 159 is going to be the chase. It's the last match of the day. Keep your random questions coming in. We'll be back pretty soon in under 10 minutes' time for the last innings of the day. As the pronto.
This European Cricket Network event is proudly brought to you by HCL Software and Paramatch. Hello viewers and welcome back to the final innings of the day. And once again, well it's been a pattern of the day, it's going to be a high run chase. 158 is the score that was put on the board, which means that uh, we have a target of 159. That means that, uh, once again, we've seen this before, that the Nelson becomes the score to get to if Parazami are to get a point. And uh, though we have seen some high scores today, I think it's quite uh, unlikely that Parazami will get to the 159 in the seven overs. If they can, they take all the points away. I think this is more Drew trying to restrict Parazami to a score under the 111. And if they can do that, then they will get four points. They go to the top of the standing. So they're looking to finish on a high and on their home ground at the end of this day five be at the top remember the top five go through well that's not a fast motion that you're looking at it is actually live you see that is <laughs> a little bit of stretching about it's going to be come on patel who's facing the first ball Let's see how he fears So first ball coming up. And a bit of a leave. So good start from Ahmadzai. He's been good, hasn't he? I like Ahmadzai. Abduram Ahmadzai. He's shown what he can do with the bat as well. A nice knock out there. Well bowled, full, no run once again. Few people like me probably wondering why we don't again see Numan Amjad opening. He's the batter in form. And if you're wanting to get this win, we're going at uh, this sort of 16 and over rate, then you've got to have your best better out there, the most aggressive. This one does get played to the boundary, just tickles it away on the leg side. That's Patel. And, uh, hello to everyone that's joining me back. And as to Christopher Ward, Steve Cook, and even Mr. Maximo has uh, been chiming in. And really saying you can't unlock the horn. So once the horn sounds, that's it. Whether whether there's uh, a wicket or not, and uh, that will be the debate. This is up in the air. It will clear the fielders. It will bounce and not plug and get over the rope. And Nabi chases after it, but chasing in vain. Cuatro Mas. Patel. He's off and running now. Hits it on the up. And that's a really nice shot. Gets all of the weight into it. Powerfully struck. It's pretty close to Nabi. But Nabi wants it. Well, Nabi's going <laughs> certainly getting his steps in today, isn't he? He's going backwards and forwards to the boundary. Fetching it. He's probably thinking, I'm sure the captain shouldn't be doing this. Somebody else should be doing it. I should be somewhere where I'm not running them backwards and forwards all the time. They might be thinking about perhaps next time thinking about putting himself in that short third position or somewhere, or maybe on the 45. Okay, number tight. Can he finish the over well? This is straight down the ground. This one will just bounce to the left of me, and that will be six runs. So he can't finish the over well. How many did they need? Around 16. All right, that'll do nicely because that puts them in top. That uh, is 18 off the first over. He hit a few nice shots himself. And did Ahmadzai on his way to that 47. And uh, he gives up 18 in the first. So 18 without loss. And Ahmadzai gets taken to town in the first one. Doesn't quite go magical though. 24 matches since a golden ball. And one thing that I've been saying all the way through here, the last matches of the day 
have always been the close ones, haven't they? Yeah, we saw a pretty close one yesterday with a, a 131 chase by Royal 94. The day before, we saw Sarcel win by five runs, 120, 21 to 116. It was close. And the day before that, and 94 to 92. And uh, so, last matches of the day can be closed. Well, he's back, everybody. He's done away with the the hairband. They decided he'll have the full headgear on. There's Wahid Abdul. Shot down the ground, and that will go all the way for six. So it's a nice shot there from Safi Faisal. Gets his first boundary as well. Yeah, I was having a, a quick chat with Wahid Abdul, and just wondering what he'd done to himself. I thought maybe you know. Bowling too fast, he's pulled the muscle, diving on the ground, trying to save a boundary. And he said, no, I went to the gym and overdid it. <laughs> so he doesn't get too much sympathy from his teammates or from me, to be honest. But uh, all right, at the moment, he's, oh, well, maybe that's the reason he's walking like that. He's, he's, he's overdone the, uh, the bench press. The, you know what it's there, the lats are hurting, the chest is hurting. All right. Abdul. Faisal's taking a bit of a liking to him at the moment. Six and four, he's hungry for more. Well, if you're hungry for more, well, why don't you go to Cheesy Us? Yeah, they'll feed you all right. Of course, Abdul and the wicket keeper, Zahir, I met them. Uh, working hard at uh, Cheesy Us, the new establishment opened here in Drew. And uh, had a very nice meal in there. And I know that some of the ECN crew have ventured there of late as well. Once the, I spread the word, they've enjoyed themselves. Cheesy Us. I like a bit of cheese. I've got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm worse than, than uh, Ratatouille. Yeah, the little mice, mouse. Okay, doesn't quite get it. Catching opportunity. Safe hands out there. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, Hamadzai. Come on, Hamadzai. Takes a catch. And uh, Wahid Abdul does pick up a wicket. We see the end of Kumar Patel. 18 he'll go for. And nice to see them being aggressive, though, and playing their shots. And uh, Numan Amjad will now make his way out there. Nice catch there by Kumran. Yeah, I do like my cheese. There's no doubt about it. It's probably my, I would say that the worst, my worst, the worst thing for me, my downfall is bread and cheese. Give me some nice bread, especially if it's warm and cheese. So, so being here in France, I got no chance of being good. Uh, warm croissants, the the French baguette, and then of course France is known for 1,600 varieties of cheese. So. You know, uh, there's no chance I'm going to get through anywhere near something like 10% of them in my the two weeks that I'm here. But I certainly will try. Some are a bit pongy, I have to say, that I'll stay away from. But others are very nice. And they do some nice cheese here at the ground. There's always, as you'd expect, loads of uh, French sticks around with lots of cheese on offer. All right, there's the end of the second over. It's 30 for one, and you can see what Drew are trying to do, get four points here, go to the top of the standings, they'll knock Paris University Club off the top, but Paris University Club will be here tomorrow to see if they can once again resume top spot. And, well, Zalmi, they pick up their first points after playing uh, four matches, after losing three on the spin and getting no points from all three, but they still are behind the Super Kings, same number of points, but net run rate. And so they've got to try and get close to this. Otherwise, the net run rate takes even a bigger dent. Now this one's going to get in the gap. That'll do nicely. Four more. There's uh, Barty. Comes to bowl the third. It's nice to see that Zalmi are are being brave, they are throwing the bat at it. They've got nothing to lose, really. No, 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 no. 
Nay, 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 nay. Here's the shot, and it's a good shot, good call from Faisal. Party just takes his time. I think he just thinks, hang on, I'll try this. So stops himself, goes back. And gets through the infield, and it's going to be four on. It's got no protection out there on the leg side boundary. We're still inside the power play, of course. This is the third over, so until this is over, the change can't be made. It looks like Barty's wanting now to bring... He had two men straight, but now the man who was on the long off boundary comes inside, so mid-off is in, and third goes back. <laughs> That's a good blast. That's a really nice shot. And Numan Amjad, who's in good form with the bat. Probably why I was a little bit surprised we don't see him come out as the opener. Scored 62 of 20 in a player match performance. Getting his team his first win. Uh, getting the score to 143 and defending it. Beating the Sarcells by two runs. Sarcell will be wondering how they lost that match and you heard me telling you how they lost it they didn't take the singles and there was one occasion when a run was turned down in the ninth over and then after that there was four dots on the spin and the batter who would have gone on strike if the run was taken smashed the first ball of the last over for a huge six and it just didn't make any sense and they'll have to go back and do their homework Sarcel, of course in their second match, they were blown away by Drew, who posted 200. So we have seen a 200 score put up. So yesterday was the day for the bowlers, really, where we saw four bowlers pick up four wickets. We also saw Zahiri take a hat-trick. Today seems to be the day of the batters. And we've seen 70s and 50s. We've seen good shots like this. And uh, we've also seen... Some great catching as well, but we also see the 200 go up. Nice shot, gets into position early. And like in this one, Safi Fazi, he just seems to be graining confidence with every match that he plays with bat and with ball. So that's a decent power play, 49 for one. And they are behind, they're behind the right, then, but they're keeping it to 15s. They're keeping it to 15. Now just have a look at that. I mean, have a look at the way. The rest of the innings are. Isn't, how symmetrical is that? It's almost identical, isn't it? That, uh, the way that it finishes. That next seven overs. Almost identical. All right. Batter seems to have busted his bat. He's going to have a choice of three to go for here. And not, not too fussy. I'll add that one, says Numan Amjad. Let's see if it works for him. The last time we saw a bat change, it was from Nabi in their last match. It didn't go well. The first ball he hit with, he got out. That last over, game for 19 from Bati. Gone. And he has just been so good, hasn't he? Usman Khan, who else? He has just been so good. I reckon this is where, when Usman Khan is coming on the ball, and you know him, I think they're thinking, all right, what's it going to be? So Numan Amjad, he didn't need a bat, really. He could have taken the bat away because he gets nothing on this. Straight through. Stumps knocked over. As most good coaches will go, say, and bowl it. So you're hitting the top of the bales. And that's exactly what uh, Usman does. Just simple. He's a good player. He's a classy player. And I thought he was on... For getting a good score here as well. Play some lovely shots. So he goes. Nabi just having a little cheeky chat with the new batter. Krum Chazad who's coming in. And uh, <laughs> Safi Faisal says, Oi, don't try to get into the, into the head of my friend. Leave him alone. Whatever you're saying, forget it. Don't listen to him. Eddie Nason. Nason to open the game. Kid Eddie Gun Nason. Nabi's probably saying, Go on, I dare you to hit the first ball for a six. I dare you to hit the first ball for a six. Usman Khan takes the stumps of Numan 
I'm Judd, so there's going to be no heroics from him this time. 14 of 7 he goes as he gets cleaned up there by Usman. Yeah, I think uh, when you got Usman coming in, you're probably thinking, right, what's he going to do? Is he going to bowl that slow ball? You might be expecting the slow ball, and he whips in a beauty like that, and you get properly done. Okay, so Krum Shazad who Nabi tries to get into his mind. Faisal says, forget what he says. Let's see how it goes. And he gets lucky. Gets lucky, he gets beaten by the flight. It is that slower ball. And he manages to get a bit of bat onto it, which he had to, otherwise the stumps were going down. And Krum Shazad hoiks it over the keeper into the gap. The chase is on, fueling it up there. Mohamed Rafane Kafije is getting the choka lag here. It's going to be four runs. Quicker one. No, nope. still slow and belted. That's gone over cow corner. The catch will be taken by Kamran Ahmed Zai. He's already taken one good catch, but the one he took earlier counted this one. He's gone way beyond the boundary rope. Still holds on to it. So nicely caught. Gives it back to the bowler. Try again. And, well, this time, what's the spin? The short third has been dropped back. And he's able to stop the ball going to the boundary. So Krum Shazad, after hitting four and a six. Just a single. All right, let's see if... Sefi Faisal can keep going. Keeping it at the 15 mark, though. Credit to Zalmi so far. Keeping it at the 15 mark. And if you can keep going at that, and you get to the last, the last two overs or so, needing 30-something, you take it. Of course you would. It stays a little bit lower. That's well played. That's the same sort of delivery I think that gets. Oh, he's running into trouble. Has to get sent back, and... Has to dive to get back. Darren hit is in trouble. Krum Shazad probably isn't as quick and nimble as what Faisal is. So he says, nay, 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 man, ni aria. Tu rea ki te dori And Faisal is saying, yaar, tu e te photo ka chon aya ki khel na aya. And he said, maa ta pura naat ke baapas a gaya, tu ta khara rea gaya. Yeah, if he hits, he's gone. No doubt about it. Short, played into the deck. Nabi gets down, gets dirty, makes the stop. End of the over. That one from Usman Gates with 13, starting with a wicket, then two boundaries, and then three singles. 62. For two or four. So... They're there about, aren't they? Just dropped slightly in that over. But other than that, they've been there or there about. And now they're going to have to deal with the the pace and the extra effort from Kamran Ahmadzai. <laughs> Not so what's being said out there, but seemed to be a fair bit of support for Ahmad Zai coming on to bowl. Shaba, Shaba. There's never two there. Nee, 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 says Faisal. Remember, it's the last innings of the day. Any random questions there, anybody? Fire them in. Anything that you're wanting to know about here in France? Oh, that's, that's quick. That is quick. Now, is there any bad on this? No, it's buys. That's a quick delivery. And, uh, well, I'm as a here. He can't stop this one. It flies through, but... Just watch this one take off. 
really good delivery in. Yeah, you can see. But, uh, I'm a die not happy that that doesn't get stopped. And yeah, I'm a to hear just apologising, say, "Yep, you're right. I should have had it." Chance and taken. Very good catch. Well, there you go. As Wahid Abdul shows that coming to the gym does pay off. It might be pain, but if there's no pain, there's no gain. Well, he's got through the pain, and now he takes a really good catch. Well, there you go. That's the way to do it. So <laughs> it's a good catch. He's a, he's a big man. He's a big unit. For him to get down, he has to do well. He looks as shocked as everybody else that he's taken that catch. It's the end of a, a gutsy little innings there from Safi Faisal, 18 of eight. Caught well by Abdul. So Wahid Abdul takes the catch. Now Ahmed Zai gets the wicket. The new batter has to sprint out there to make sure he gets out there and ready to bat within the 60 seconds that he has. And it will be Dawood Abunzai. So the, the battle of the two Ahmadzads now. So one Ahmadzai to another. And thick edge. And that's flying to the man at third who can't stop it. More displeasure from the bowler towards the, the fielder. This is Tabish Barty who... Uh, let's just say he didn't really want to get off the ground here. So Dawood gets it away. Nicely struck. And, uh, I, food talk. One thing that I've been told is he's talking to some of the locals here. And then Drew. That's hit pretty well down the ground. That's going to be six runs. Manos. Arriba, arriba, arriba. Porque eso es seis carreras. Well, this one has been hit beautifully out of the middle. And, well, that is sweet. I've got to say that is sweeter than a bite of cream brulee. That leads us nicely on to a bit of food chat. The sweet vanilla custard contrasted with an almost bitter flavor of the brulee topping. The crunch of the caramelized sugar and the smooth creamy texture of the custard underneath. Yup, that's right. Creme brulee. And, uh, and uh, well, it's probably not a... Well, it is always a dessert day. It's 77 for three after five overs. But I think you always have to talk a little bit about something that's nice and warm. So... Can forget about your, your chicken noodle soup. There's another dish that makes a strong claim to the perfect cold weather dish on a day like today. Potifur, meaning pot on fire, is a warm, simple and flavorful slow-cooked meal. Considered a national dish of France, Potifur has uh, no distinctive recipe and many regions in France have their own version of it. That'd be nice. It's cold, you know gets cold here it's pretty dark as well i have to say and i yesterday was a day that we had a fair bit of blue skies and sunshine but today the sun has barely shown itself it's been cloud all the way through it's been pretty cold and right this moment it's uh, let's just say it's a little on the the dark side as barty returns to the action A nice looking shot, there is a fielder placed out there. Barty's a funny sort of bowler. He can get, be expensive sometimes, but then like in the in the earlier contest, he then comes back with a really good tidy over. That's what good bowlers do. Short this time, crunched into the deck, trying to get it past the fielder, no mistakes. A good pick up and an easy, gentle throw back from Mohamed Nisar. Who, well, showing how cold he is after fielding the ball, he's going <sighs> into the palms of his hands to warm him up. 
be a good day for the hand warmers that uh, that Vinny. Borders right, this one's into the cube, onto the top of it, and over it goes, and into the conquer trees. Lovely shot, and that saw this one coming, and it uh, luckily it doesn't go all the way, bounce off the cube, because it would have ended up into the no-go zone. Powerful strike from Amadzai, and there it goes. And, yeah, over me onto the top. No danger of the equipment being knocked out there. Slower delivery. And it tickled away. And this outfield, just to remind you, had a nice fresh cut this morning. So even on a day like today, it's going to be nice and quick. So four more. And keeping it there or thereabout, you know, they, the over that's taken the the match out of their reach or the win out of their reach it ain't happened yet 111 gets them a point remember but that is that is a done that is a given it's the the win they're still after it's played away fielder keeps his eye on it bowls it back in that's uh abraham ahmed zai the over comes to an end. Barty doesn't get it his own way. He'll go for 33. That over going for 13 in the end. 14 actually with that single. And the score 91 for three. Six overs completed. Th what I liked about this inning so far, right? No bad has gone beat as yet. But when you look at that scorecard, when you have a look at the, the balls faced. Uh, you know, 18 of 7, 18 of 8, 14 of 7, 15 of 7, 22 of 7. They're learning, Paris Army. They're learning. They're not chewing up deliveries. They're playing their shots. They're going for it. If you're getting out, you're getting out. Another batter then comes in and takes over. All right. Here he comes again. Usman Khan, Mr. Bombay Mix. Starts with a slower one. Has got the field to put back taken and that's the zone where Barty was earlier Barty and didn't want to throw himself around so he gets replaced by somebody else and the stop has been made okay Dawood Amadzai he's going well Karim Shazad 15 off 7 well add another 6 to it as this gets crunched there's another one that will well Go through the fence, Marzi. Get in there, Marzi. Watch out for the wolves, Marzi. Watch out for the wolves. Marzi going into the danger zone. And there he is, the other side of the fence. Watch out, Marzi. Watch out. There's danger sign. Watch out, watch out. Behind you, Marzi. Behind you. And yeah, Marzi. Watch out behind you, Marzi. Coming. Ooh. I tell you what, Marzi. He won't be wanting to go in there tonight. We will find out why these signs are there. I've got to ask some of the locals anyway. But uh, locals have been telling me about the good food. But they're not telling me what's lurking the other side of these fences. Gets a dot ball in there, not a wide. Uh, one thing, though, I haven't spoken about really. And it's the, it's the one thing that everybody says you've got to try out here. Uh, and that is the Wolf Bouillon. Goes for it again, and this one won't be six, but it still will be a boundary, will it? Yeah, it beats Abdul to it. Well, this time Abdul, I did say to Abdul, less less working on the weights, more on the treadmill, because you've got to be able to chase those. Oh, I'm only kidding, that was always going to beat him. Yeah, it's uh, possibly, a, there is no not a possibly better way to prepare beef than marinated in red wine. And... Uh, this is, comes from the Burgundy region of France. Dot ball, slow ball this time. And uh, basically, the disc combines a nice fatty cut of beef with dry pignon noir, uh, red, plenty of fresh vegetables, and uh, it uh, to creates a very hearty and indulgent stew. The stew of stew, as they say. People late. All right, chance and no problems at all from the man who earlier was keeping his hands nice and warm by going. <laughs> and you can see that it works because no issues there from Nisar. 
who takes the catch, uh, Kruma Shazad, once again, all right, doesn't go on to make a huge score, but scores quickly, 25 of 12. So staying in it, this is what's coming up tomorrow. It's time to see another few episodes of the Paris Knight Riders. They will be in action uh, during three matches. Babylonians are going to be back in action as well. They play three matches tomorrow as well. And then the other two teams will be President 11 and the Paris University Club. It's going to be an action-packed day tomorrow. You know, Vinny Sandu will be talking you through the action tomorrow while I take uh, the day off. And uh, it is International Garlic Day, so I've got, got a good excuse. Now stop there, stop there. You're a cricketer, Ravi. We don't go running across the side screen. He pulls the brakes on just in time, does Ravi Panchal. Oh, we saw you there, Ravi. Ravi, oh, almost showed us he's not a cricketer. And, uh, yeah, there's Ravi. They did a fantastic job here, along with the likes of Nilkash Patel. And uh, Sam is on day off today. I hope uh, the governor had a good day off. Marzi stepped into his shoes brilliantly today. And uh, Joe Foster here as well. All doing a fantastic job. And of course, a big shout out to Charles Croucher, the tournament referee, and also Chris Tabs, Martins, and Arthur's from Spring Productions. We've got a great crew here doing a wonderful job. As we see the wicket going down here. So let's have a look at this again. So another wicket goes down. He's not a happy chappy though, is he? Because Amadzai gets run out. And he's the man that you want out there. So just a little bit of in out, shake it all about. Then they're getting into each other's way. Yeah, he pushed him down. <laughs> he says, you go down so I can make it in. Uh, whose feet are that? Uh, here we go. So just see this again. And, oh, it's all happening. Then that one gets played away. It's all happening here at the moment. There's <laughs> Cuatro Carreras. And, oh, that was a good one. I was too busy talking about Marzi. Oh, I missed the action there. So run out. Amadzai, 23 of 9. <laughs> they didn't want him to be gone, did they? He was keeping things going. And Chase is on. Fielder gets down. They'll come back for two. Keep on fighting. 23 for nine run out. <laughs> that was that was not a good. That was not good. And they get into each other's way. And I like the way someone goes and says, "Man, he done a two jars to let a badger, the badger, badger, badger." Just puts him on the ground. No coming back from that for Armandzai. Good shot in the gap. And you can see Zalmi just pushing on and pushing on. The rate has gone magical now, though. Remember, they kept it at 15 for a while. It then got to about 16 at the magical mark. Now, that's why they want a good over here. Come on, Hamadzai. Khan and Hassan are the baddest. Well... Called a wide, I think. I'd like to see it again. I think probably is a correct call. It gets a bit of movement away here as well. Yeah, that's fair enough. You could argue it maybe catches a bit of the line. Now, I don't know if moving away is the answer here, Simon Khan, because I think Ahmadzai, if he sees that again, might just go for the pegs. And he does go for the pegs and almost loses his leg stump. Stand still and bat, Salman. Stand still and bat. He's out there with Raza. Suleiman Khan. And Hassan Zubatis. Short probably is going to test the wide boundary. Wide is called for over the head. And yeah, good shot. He doesn't shy away from banging it in, does uh, Cameron Ahmadzai. And with the, those, that big strong build and those big shoulders, when he does hit the deck, it flies. High in the air. If the fielder gets here, it'd be a great catch. And he does get there. He does everything. He does what I don't, 
He does what I think he's not going to do by getting there. And then he doesn't take the catch. I think that's probably Safi. He does all the hard bits. He gets to it. But then, I don't know if he gets anything on it. Maybe just a, a fingertip on it. It's actually Amadzai. Can't believe that he puts it down. It's the end of the eighth over. 115 for five. So they have picked up a point here, Zami. Remember the first three matches, Zami couldn't do that. So they will go ahead of the Super Kings. Okay, the wicket keeper just needs some attention. So Zahir has his laces tied. And uh, have you dropped a catch? Abdurrahman Ahmadzai gets the ball. 44 in 12. 44 in 12. Zalmi have got the point, And now they've got nothing to lose. You might as well have a go. Uh, waste a wide really and now he's got to run in comes the throw and they might as well come back so sells the dummy <laughs> and they'll take two should have left it though really I suppose leave it alone you get leave it alone and you get the wide and you get the extra ball that's a result I suppose for Drew. Mm. Actually gets himself probably in the right area, it does. Suleiman Khan. But trying to hit it too hard. I think if he, if he makes contact here and it's nice and straight, he gets the boundary. Just a quick check of the field. A long off and a long on, pretty straight. Mid wicket and square leg going deployed on the boundary and an offside field. A third man is up. All right, this is the third man area, but he gets it over him. Or mid wicket area, I should say, and cleanly hit six runs. Going for it. As I say, Paris Zalmi have got nothing to lose. Now, Drew, they'll be a little bit worried. Remember, they had one run chase that went not their way. They lost out to the Babylon Neons, having scored 161. Straight down the ground, it won't go to hand, it should be stopped. Oh, they leave it to each other, and only just, that's very good reactions actually from Hamza Niaz, because I thought for a moment here that Nisar does the dummy, and I don't think Niaz was expecting to be called upon. Uh, that's really good work from him to save that boundary. We're going to miss. That's what you can't afford, though. You can't afford dot. Also, you had to take two there. That's two runs. So, missed opportunity. Take two there. Different batter on strike. And who knows? And as it is, it's Raza Hassan who swings and misses his first ball. Bat him to this one, but it'll just be a single. Nabi. Holds on to it. He's not keen on throwing it away. It's the end of the over. Okay. So, well bowled, I suppose. You've got to say, just the one boundary in there. Ten runs it goes for. 125. So, we need something special. We're going to need supersonic. If Paris Zalmi are to get the win here. It's been a good fight, though, from Zalmi. They've shown today great improvement. Coming in today with two big losses when teams scored 177 against them. That was the Paris University Club and Zalmi made 93. President 11 scored 182 against them. They made 111. And then this morning they were blown away well, by Balbi Neons, 140 to 73. They were bowled out with and losing by 67 runs. And bowled out with uh, it was uh, seven balls to go. But they came back well, got a win. Over Sarcells, batting first, changing what they did, 
and it worked. Numan Amjad, 62-20. And then in this one, they certainly haven't uh, let themselves down. Abdul to bowl the last. And that's been smashed. That's been smashed. There's a good strike there from Suleiman Khan. And it's little things again, just, you know, going back to that last over when the ball is stopped on the boundary. You've got to go for two runs there. And that means that Suleiman would have gone back on strike. They don't go for two, just one. And then the next two balls go dot and single. Then again, they take the single of the last. Suleiman's a set batter. He needs to be on strike every ball. All right, he gets given the strike. Uh, but it means that there's a couple of balls there, probably, what's that, two or three balls there where he should have been on strike. And that can make all the difference in tight matches. 27 or 4. Abdul will know that one good ball that doesn't go to the boundary seals the match for Drew. And that's not it. That will be four. But they can't do it with just fours. That's Nilkesh Patel. Hello, Nilkesh. Of course, Nilkesh, a very famous umpire. We've seen him at the Cardamo Oval. And the Nukas has become multi-skilled now. Tournament referee, scorer, uh, going for it, and it'll be stopped. Batters should be taking two, they won't. Again, it probably doesn't matter, I suppose, on this occasion. But that's two there. Okay. Couple of balls to go. Wahid Abdul. He looks, doesn't he look like the... Uh, Looks a little bit like uh, yeah, a pirate. Pirates of the Caribbean. What do you reckon? I don't even have a close up on Wahid Abdul. Yeah, there you go. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> He's still complaining about his side, isn't he? Well, Jim Ti Thora Kam Kare Ahmed Jada Jim Ti Jada Na Kare Kar. Tino Pata Akhela Na Hui Hunda Kama Te Bhi Jada Hunda Kana Pi Na Hui Banona. Cheesy ass the bitch. Now anyway, here he comes. Up in the air, that will go all the way. Bolly, bolly, bolly. Kidna zona. Shaka. Lucky. Shaba, shaba. That's a delightful shot. Okay. And that will be it. And a good, positive finish. From Parizami, 15 runs is the difference in the end. So, finish on 143 for five. Great effort. It really is a good effort. They stayed in touch all the way through, didn't they? Stayed in touch all the way through. Ahmadzai, he puts a good spell of bowling. In. That uh, over number nine was a key one, only 10 of that. And uh, before that, over number seven also was nicely done so they just stayed in it they just kept it nice and tight drew they knew that one good over could seal the victory for them and that's what they do so well done to drew they do win two of uh, the three matches they played here though they did start off with a surprise loss to balminians the players exchange handshakes as we go to the highlights and plenty of action in this one the two openers uh, Kamal Patel and Safi Faisal, they play some nice shots between them. What I liked here from Zami, and this is something that Zami needs to stick with, it's very important that they stick with this, is they went out there and they played their shots. They weren't worried about losing their wickets, and when you can play that way, then everybody sort of has the confidence to do that. Uh, then you will get to scores. That was a great start there from Usman Khan. We know he's a great player. That was Nabi trying to get into the head of the new batter, Karim Shazad. And I like the way that Safi Faisal was saying, okay, he said, oh yeah, what are you got? Naman, got Naman, Nasun, Nasun. And it's a good job that at least uh, he listened to, to him and didn't let Ma Nabi get into his head. But uh, he did, didn't listen to him when he came to the running, though. That was a good catch from the man who went to the gym, from our pirate. That's yeah, nicely done. And that one went all the way. That one gets hit all the way as well. 
And that was Marzi going into that no go area. That's the danger zone. This one's high in the air. And there's another wicket. And defensively played. And this was well, this was this is the one he's <laughs> Oh well, that was the one that I loved. He's like knocks him over, bat down and everything. Said, I'm not going down, you're going down. And there's the throw, knocks him some over and look at <laughs> Solomon Khan saying, why me? Why me? And uh, that catch went down, but not to worry. It didn't cost them too much in the end. But on another day, it could. That was a good stop, but they only run the one. And that meant that the key batter doesn't go back on strike. And if they could get back on strike, who knows? So Solomon Khan, if you could back back on strike. Well, there's uh, Jack Sparrow there, but he's got his cap on now. So you can't really see the Jack Sparrow look. But, yeah, well done to Drew. And it was a big day here for them today, playing three matches. Not easy playing three matches. Also, to Paris Zalmi, three matches in a day is not easy. Paris Zalmi would be happy with what they've done as well. Remember, in the first three matches, they picked nothing up. No points at all. In the next three, they do at least get four points. So, well done to them. And that's a good effort there as well. 143 chasing 159 for victory. Uh, have a look at that scorecard there. But... Key thing there is that nobody was worried about uh, getting out. They went out there, they attacked, they attacked, attacked from batter number one to batter number uh, all the way there through to batter number one to number eight. Everybody kept trying, and I like that. They didn't give it up. Uh, 29 from Suleiman Khan. I just think, though, if they could have negotiated the strike slightly better, when you think about it, we're talking about 15 runs. If they could have negotiated the strike better, t ran twos, Instead of taking the singles, then him on strike, who knows? Who knows? Because all it would have meant is those those deliveries go to the boundary and he could have had a shock win there. With the bowlers, uh, two wickets there for Usman Khan. He's always always good, isn't he? Uh, Cameron Amantai, I like the effort that he puts in when he's on the field, one for 24. Tabish Barty didn't have the best of days here today. And uh, Waheed Abdul, well, his fitness is a concern. He did pick up one wicket, but he's going for a few as well. But he's got to work on... Obviously, those little issues that he has with his fitness. So, we just have a look at the match summary there of this match. And uh, I'll get ready then to greet you for the final time in the comedy box. And thank you all for tuning in around the world, wherever you've been tuning in from. It's been a wonderful day of acting here today. After seeing a few days where the bowlers have been on top, for example, like yesterday, where we saw four bowlers uh, take four for us. We also saw Zahiri take a hat trick. You knew the batters would come good at some point, and they came good here today. It was quite a surprising, really, because you thought the batters would come good on a day like yesterday that was nice and sunny. But in fact, they come good uh, on a day where it's a little bit hazy and overcast. We'd expect the bowlers to move the ball around a little bit. It's been a wonderful day. We've seen another fantastic run chase, haven't we? Where it was Drew who put 161 on the board, but Bami Neons get the win. What a crazy match that was. And then Drew, well, they thought if 160 is not enough, what are we going to do? We're going to score 200. And they scored 200 against ourselves and get that win as well. And then in that last match, we saw a fantastic game. Only 15 runs in it between Drew and Parazami. Well done to Parazami as well. Three matches that they played, they came to the start of this day without any wins and then they got totally hammered didn't they by Balbi Beyonds in the first match but they came back strong as well and got a win under their belt as well winning against Sarcel in a close match as well so it's been a very exciting day it's time for me just really to say my big thank yous to everybody and look forward to what's coming up tomorrow I won't be here I'm going to be eating garlic tonight so stay away from me that's why I'm not coming to the ground on International Garlic Day Vinny Sandu will be talking you through the matches Paris Night Riders have a big day they'll be playing three matches also three matches there for the paris university club so they're looking to have a good day not paris university club will be playing two matches but beans will have three matches big day for them and present 11 will be in action as well it's going to be a very exciting day well done to everybody here at the ground federation thank you very much for looking after us thank you very much for providing with the hot drinks that we need on a chilly day and some lovely food as well. Well done to the umpires, been absolutely brilliant. 
and also to the ECN crew. And of course, not to forget the likes of Arthur's, Chris Tapton Martins, Spring Media being absolutely fantastic. I can hear the music for the highlights starting. There's plenty of good highlights to look out for. Great shots. Great bowling, great catching. It's been a fantastic day. Remember, Vinny Sandu will be with you tomorrow. It's time for me to say goodbye. Be good, be kind, be safe, be happy. Namaste. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support for the European Cricket Network. Adios.